Welcome back to the 2023 World Series of Poker. It is time for the main event. It is time for day 1C. And what a final or feature table we have for you right now as none other than Daniel Negranu takes his seat in the greatest poker tournament of the year. My name is Brent Barinkema. Later tonight, I'll be joined by Ben Mincy. Oh, there he is. Mincy goes walking in at the buzzer. And Sean Deep is joining us a little bit later on in the show. Get ready for six hours of World Series Poker main event coverage. Negrano is going to be at the table for as long as he's going to last. He's not had a good start. Let's see if Negrano can run up a stack. He had a frustrating main event last year. He wants some redemption. We got Mincy in the booth. Get yourself a drink. Hit that like button if you're catching us on YouTube. It's, it, it, it has all the makings of an epic night. It's going to be an epic night. It's the World Series of Poker main event. Day 1C, Dan and is going to be in the building. And uh, what better time than to be on Poker Go? Loving the Poker Go coverage. Had a lot of fun with you and Sean calling that 5K final table. Correct. Congrats uh, on Sam's overall. Very, very excellent performance. And you know, now it's time for the World Series main event. We got one of the best, really, maybe people would say the best ambassador poker's ever had, one of them. Uh, Daniel Negrano, yeah, right. hopefully he has a more interesting now. feature table than I did last night. <laughs> yeah, you had a really quiet <laughs> feature <laughs> table. <laughs> there it is. Whenever Daniel talks, we'll try to be quiet. I know the chat loves that when Daniel gets talking. A big shout out here right off the bat, Shelby Wells, last year, the penultimate woman standing in the main event, a dealer from Southern Indiana. She is she, she was one of my favorite players in the main event last year. Showed a lot of poise, a lot of character. You know, ha didn't have things go well for her uh, in the later stages of the tournament, but still had a very, very impressive showing in this event. Uh, she is here at the feature table with Daniel Legrand, who tweeted about it earlier. You can find her at Lauren Shelby on Twitter. Give her a follow. Um, she finished 97th in last year's main event, cash for 73K. Um, originally from New Orleans, Louisiana. Okay, I don't know, okay. I mean, so I, I feel like she's your new favorite player. Yeah, she is. And, you know, I, look, I love seeing women do well in poker, too. Poker's all about everyone, you know, in all walks of life. And uh, I think it's great for sport when you know, women playing the main event. And there's a lot of very talented women in poker players. Absolutely right. Um, Swarman here with aces and the ace of hearts in a great situation to win some oh. chips off Wells. <laughs> and there's the offsuit four on the river. We might have a pot brewing here right away. Yeah, I think she's going to bet just get called here because this uh, I literally because have the four card straight game, he's, he's going to have to pay it off. You won't, you won't believe how it's going to do. Uh, do, too, do too, too much. Oh yeah, like he calls ace, 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 ace hearts. No good. No good here. No good. And Shelby <laughs> Wells, the pride of New Orleans. Let's throw a microphone on him. I looked down the first hand, it was aces, and I was just like, there's no way I win this hand. Right? Right. <laughs> there's no scenario. It was predetermined. Pre <laughs> that was fully predetermined. I looked at it. Yeah, aces are rocks. I'm just saying, there's no scenario. This works so Daniel's had a little rough go with the main so far. Yeah, he has a, down to 30K here, half starting stack. Definitely not the start he was hoping for. But yeah, over the course of the next few hours, we'll get to know the players at the feature table. Negrano, of course, the big draw. He was joking with his table earlier about trying to go bust so they wouldn't have to play on the feature table. Well, of course, that is not what his goal is in this event. It is a little different vibe. Like, I, I used to, back in the day, I was just a grinder, and I wouldn't get the feature tables. And now I've had it a couple times. It's a, it's a different thing. It's a... Uh, you know, it's a little bit of a different energy. I think they've done a good job with it this year where the play is not slowing down because before I've been at it where it's a little slower and it's like a little hotter with all the lamps and lights. But like, I, I'll be honest, I felt like I hated when I was carded last night. People were there watching me in the feature table. I'm trying to mix it up, play some hands, be entertaining. And, you know, I, I just feel like, you know, I know we have so many great Poker Grove subscribers and listeners. I don't want to put on a boring show for them, you know? <laughs> exactly. Uh, Got to give some love as well to Arnaud Matern here at the feature table. Arnaud, a longtime pro from France, has made ma many, many deep runs in big European events and burst out onto the scene way back in 2008 when he won EPT Prague. Arnaud is just such a good character, such a good guy. Um, also made the World Series of Boko Europe main event final table back in 2011. Finishing in 10th place. I've heard Prague, and I know you obviously have a lot of experience in Europe with uh, your, your history being from there. I've heard Prague's a spot. Pro EPT Prague, in my opinion, right with right up there with EPT Barcelona as my two most favorite events of the year. I've never, been, I've never been to Prague. I've always heard that. I've got that one on my bucket list. 
a whole lot more to do than just poker, let me tell you that. They usually have it in December, though, if I remember. I feel like that's pretty dang cold. <laughs> but it has Christmas vibes, you know. Okay. It's, it's, it's really nice. Saw Flo Rider performing yesterday. Some mold wine. Like, it was on the July 4th party. My, my former life, I love that. Grinding and being sexual. I don't know what the hell Daniel's talking about. No, no, everybody's talking about I told you Florida was better. Yeah. Just Florida. That's the new art. I was mad. I'll tell you this, Remco. I was trying to get over here for the start of this at seven, <laughs> and I tried to go against the stampede on oh, the way out of dinner break. Yeah. And I'm glad I'm still. I'm still glad I'm alive. Right. I'm talking. It was a stampede in the hallways. Like I hadn't seen. I mean, they thought this was going to be a very big day one. See, however big they thought it is, it's probably big. I got away from yeah, the mic. It's <laughs> absolutely <laughs> massive. The story yeah. twice. They're not playing ten handed though, right? No. Nope. Playing nine handed. Of course, Angelo here raising it up with ace nine suited. Shelby Wells calling on the button. By the way, if you're just joining us, we got Ben Pins in the booth with me. Probably one of the biggest poker fans. And he's back onto the scene. Bottom of the mic, I can't respond. Bit of a hiatus. Do you or do you not sell drugs for a living? Yeah, like, that's not where you go. That's the way you do it. You know this too because you're a boy. Good try, too. I enjoy the poker thing. I still love playing. I play at Harris New Orleans a few times a week. I live in uptown New Orleans. But it's a lot more fun when you have have game for you play. You know, oh, you, yeah. When you lose, you're like, you know what? I'm, I'm glad I get to play. But, <laughs> but I still enjoy playing. I play on South Fence. I play World Series Circuit. You know, I come out here every summer. Yeah, still, still a lot of fun. Ooh, two pair, big turn card here for Ace Nine. Angelo hitting, just turning aces and nines here on a super, super draw heavy board. Two hearts, two diamonds, a bunch of straight draws out there. Got to think. Angelo's gonna have to. It's 3,600 the pot. I mean, you gotta think he's probably at least 2K here. I'm doing what? Maybe it's choking on the edible. How draw, how draw heavy this board is. The powder. And when she inhaled too much. That's insane. He fired 26. So I was pretty, pretty good guess. I said 2400. But it's been clearly up to be having no ventilation. Hey, they, they closed down. 26. Kelly's just got a gut shot. It, like, it looks like Kelly's super connected with the red king and queen, but she really just has a gutter here. So, let's see. She's going to go, wow, she's going to – she peels 2,600 with a gut, gutter. But I guess she can wrap a lot of river cards here if a harder diamond comes, maybe the thought. Or she's just taking it to the streets, which I respect. Oh, 25. What was it, 26? Shelby Wells. In position here, going to the river card. Angeloff with two pair. Oh, wow. baby. Drills Broadway on the river. Just pops two aces with a four on the river and then just rips uh, Broadway straight here. Hits the gutter when somebody's got aces up. Wow. She's, maybe she's on a clean like living or something. I don't know. Going hot. Respect it. Angeloff, of course, not happy with the four card straight out there. Not necessarily thinking about King Queen, more so thinking about some summer. sort of Queen kind of combo mm -hmm. that could have gotten there on the river. Yeah. Action here on Wells, 8800 in the middle. Let's see what she comes I'm with. I'm thinking 5K is coming here. A little over half the pot. That's tough to Sometimes I don't want to say it's tell. Oh, she bet more. Wow, more than more than the pot here. 10K on the river. You do that. You do. You this is an interesting bet, Mark. She's thinking. Used, okay, I mean, she's thinking I mean, there's a chance he also could have a Queen here on four card straight board. Right. So you pot it, and you go big. Because you think you know they can't hold a queen. However, having said that, I mean, obviously it's a lot easier for us because I'm looking at our cards. But, like, you know, he just got off bases and nines here because she bought it. If she'd gone 4,500 or 5K, yeah. she'd have to pay shuffle, it. But, you know, that's the beauty of being an armchair quarterback. Right. If, you, if yeah. you shuffle like this and then you go like this, yeah. somebody could easily just go, oh, no, that's a check. Right? Thank you for letting me know. I, I could tell you, you obviously were just shuffling. Right. But, you, you know, you go like that, like someone Thank could you call you. Yep. Thank you. So, so, next time you have so it wasn't four. just me. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't just me. He saw it as well. But thank you. Because I, I looked and I was like, I was oh, biding my time to call like you on. Yeah, he was setting it up. <laughs> I was setting it up. I just wait till she's forced like to check. Every time I say something and say, oh, you're fine. This looks like a fun. Yeah, like, I know it's not a bunch of huge true, names or dangerous, but it friends. sounds like we've got a few. But the beauty of the World Series of Poker, I mean, just looking at the names and backgrounds we got at this table. We got, you know, you said Angelo's from France. I mean, I'm just guessing by, you know, obviously Daniel, the pride of Toronto, Canada. We got Shelby's from New Orleans, Southern Indiana, and then re returns from France, I'm sorry. But this Ange is what Angela, Angela from Bulgaria. Bulgaria, okay. But that's like the beauty. Like, there's really no other event like the World Series of Poker where you're getting people from all over the world at the at the same table. It's, uh, I know that that's kind of an obvious thing to say, but it, it's just really, really unique. And that's what I miss about, like, the old online poker days when you can play against the whole world. Absolutely.
Poker brings people together, what can you say? And it's always funny, too, to see how, like, where people are from, how it affects the way they play. You know, like all these Italian and all these Euros are just nuts. But then you'll see like conservative Canadians. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's almost like you could, I remember back in the day, you could just be like, oh, what country is he from? Call. <laughs> oh, he's from Russia? We're in there. That's funny. Definitely. Definitely fun to make reads based on. <laughs> oh, it's a game of incomplete information. And sometimes when you know where they're from, you get more information, you know? Absolutely right. All right, people in the chat, speaking of where people are from, let us know in the chat where you are watching from. It's going to be a, a six-hour night. We're going to try to get Negrano on this stream for as long as we can. I'm sure if he doesn't protest, we're going to let him here, let him play here all throughout the night. But this has the potential of being a good table. All players started with 60K in chips, two-hour levels, a little bit of a different flavor compared to the 5K final table Mincy and I did earlier with Sean Deep. That, of course, got pretty shallow there towards the end. Uh, Wells, however, here at this feature table, the only player up over 100K. She's going to fire her A7 here. Got to give her credit. She's going pretty hard here. Seems like she's yeah. uh, playing a lot of hands and running pretty well. She's got to got have a lot of confidence after that top 100 finish last year, though, because there, there really is nothing like going deep in the World Series main. And, you know, once you've done it once, man, that takes away the butterflies and a lot of that, and then you're just kind of playing. Exactly. Wells going up here against Andy Rosen. Check. Rosen from Birmingham, Seven. Michigan. Actually goes check, check. She's going to show down her ace seven and take this one down. Given that she had the ace of hearts, perhaps an argument to go for value there on the river with a seven. A little thin bet. Yeah, it would have been thin, though. All right. I mean, you can see in the hand, I guess the nine seven. He had a funny look, and then I was like, well, when he you said seven, I was expecting you to see seven. Oh, like Shelby's got all the moves now. Shelby's got all the moves. <laughs> I don't care. Really, this is fine. This is fine. I won't do that again either. I'll just No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> I had a seven too. Yeah. Seven. No, seven. And he shows his hand and be like, no, I said seven thousand. <laughs> I hesitated. Oh yeah, yeah. I did think you meant seven thousand. Could have been seven anything. Like twenty twenty five K pop. Could have been Paris seven, seven hundred to seven K. <laughs> 700, yeah. 700, 7K, or pair of 7. Three, seven. four, four. <laughs> You're getting the calm deal. Every time you bet 900, you like 9,000. Three hands in a row, you like 9,000. And then you shoot the cocky over the place. Oh, yeah. I mean, he doesn't know the president's life. <laughs> Negrano, of course, played a massive schedule leading up to the main event. I can only imagine there's going to be some fatigue he's carrying into this tournament, but still, this, of course, the main event, not only of the World Series Boga, but the main event of the year for many, many players. The Grano has made deep runs in this event before, most notably the year that Joe McKeon won the tournament. He came extremely close to making that final table, down to about half a starting stack right now. It's going to be interesting to see if the Grano finds a way to battle back into this event. Of course, Half a starting stack right now right. means 76 big blinds, so nothing really to worry about just yet as Can't Shelby Wells drags another pot. She is by far the most aggressive player at this table. We've seen five hands. She's won four of them. Yeah, she's playing very active. She's making some hands. She seems confident. Her body language is good at the table. You know, and I think that, that there's more to that, I think, than people think. The main event, though, you just mentioned Daniel not doing so well. It's just such a fascinating tournament. It's unlike any other tournament in the world because, you know, it's so natural when you're a poker player. You start with 60K, you get down to 30 or 40, and you, you feel deflated. But in this tournament, with the two-hour levels, I mean, you can't. You just, the biggest thing, you just got to stay in the camera on. And, you know, no matter what. And I know it's, like, frustrating, but the, the biggest thing, you can, worst mistake you can ever do in this thing is lose your, is lose your match. Yeah, absolutely. Our normal turn here finding a king 10 of diamonds. But turn known for a tight aggressive style, not one to panic, not one to play big pots. Uh, I've seen Matern grind a 10 to 20 big blind stack going deep in EPTs for many, many years. So don't expect him to give away any sort of chips at any point. The EPTs, uh, I, I, I haven't gotten ever to play them, but the level of competition over there is no joke. And uh, if you're able to compete on that level, I mean, you can pretty much compete anywhere. Absolutely. Yes, you're totally right. I think for many years, the EBT fields were way ahead of the fields here in the U.S. Yeah. Players that were successful there converted that fairly easily into some success in the World Series of Poker. 
I remember when the EPT thing started, everybody was talking about like li acting like it was heaven over there. And then within a couple of years, that uh, I don't want to say that it's still awesome. I'm sure to go over there and check out the cities. But if you're winning over there in poker, I mean, it, 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 it ain't it ain't as soft as some other spots you can find. That's for sure. Help you out. There you go. It's hard to get it over that little groove, I imagine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't stealing. Now, now it's up. Did you get? Are you playing? Did you play any poker this summer? No, actually, I've uh, I've been stuck here in the booth doing lots of commentary, which has been amazing. Uh, made lots of friends and enemies with our chatters on Poco on YouTube. So okay. hopefully there's still some love left for me as we have a couple of days left before we kick over the broadcast to the main professionals: Lama Karen, Norman Chatelain, Najat, Nick Shulman, just to name a few. But yeah, Donnie and I have been really focused on. When, so, so I know CBS Sports does uh, does the main, correct? So basically, the main event streaming for uh, like 150 hours between what we do for free and also what we do with our main set. And so you've seen the set; they're working on it today. Okay. The people that are watching right now, they all think that this is the broadcast. No, this is sort of the appetizer. We're using our horseshoe table to give you guys a taste of day one. In prior years, we didn't, we'd never basically streamed day one because we used that time to set up for the later days. But uh, because of this table, we now have room to show the action on day one. So one more full yep. day of day one coverage tomorrow. We're going to do three levels again. Phil Helmuth is going to be on the stream tomorrow. That's okay. going to be a lot of fun. Always. And starting with day two, Donnie and I will do one or two levels of lead-in coverage. And all of the rest of the night is going to be on the main set. And uh, yeah, it's going to be all the way throughout. It's going to be eight days of play to reach the final table, and then two days of final table coverage. So it's basically a two-week affair. Yeah, there's nothing. I say this all the time about the thing about poker. So I can't, like, look at my phone you know, anymore. you look at like the Masters in golf and the Super Bowl in NFL, yeah, you and you still could argue that the World Series main is bigger to poker than those events are to their sports. Because you know, all year long, you know, poker's it's blowing up. It's doing really well. But man, the main, they're so smart to schedule it right after the 4th of July too. There's kind of not as much going on in the sports world. And poker just gets its two weeks here uh, to shine. And man, I'm talking people all over the country that don't play poker hands are into this stuff watching on Poker Go. You know, it's just uh, everybody that literally doesn't even follow poker cares about the World Series main. It's just such a massive brand and it's such a cool thing to be a part of. Yeah, no blackouts available all over the world. And uh, yeah, we're making episodes from the main event. We, we won't include the horseshoe feed, by the way. That's all going to be focused on the main broadcast feed. That's going to be episodes on CBS Sports. And those will do those, so those start airing, I believe, in the fall. Okay. Yep. So, yeah, no November 9, like we used to have. We're going to go straight through. Players are going to get one day off if they make the final table. And then it's going to be nine, I believe, nine down to four, and then four down to a winner. Six thousand. Do you like the, that more than the November 9? Do you have any thoughts? Yeah, I like it way more because you get committed to narratives and storylines. It's going to be exciting to see who sort of develops the winning strategy, picks up on the reads, and can handle the fatigue of going deep in the main event, which is a whole lot different than getting three months or four months to study and recover and get ready. And then all of a sudden, everybody turns into GTO players when the final table comes around. Right now, it's a game of stamina. You, you ride that wave. You get one day to catch up on some sleep, fly your family in, and then it's game time. Play for two nights straight and perhaps, you know, collect a $10 million first prize. I agree. I think it's more organic. I just think it's the way it's supposed to be. I think the November 9th thing, I mean, I get the idea behind it, but I don't know. And it's just weird. Like, when you're in a poker tournament, like the main, I mean, there's really nothing else that's going to matter in your life till it's over. I mean, I guess to an extent. And, yep. you know, if you have to sit around, I mean, first of all, problem is sit around for three months waiting on it because you're guaranteed a million dollars. But just doesn't, I don't know, something that's never felt right about it to me. To be fair, none of the nights were loud enough. I watched it literally yesterday. You could hardly hear me. Shout out to Keegan bringing us more notes on the players at the featured table. Hopefully, we can work in some of those stories to our broadcast today. Yeah, already a very interesting one with Shelby Wells. Eight hundred. Eight hundred. Lines right now two hundred four hundred with the four hundred big blind anti. The ground is the shortest stack at the table, seventy three big blinds. Shelby Wells, three hundred and eleven big blinds. Love to see it. 
it's it, interesting strategy wise in the main at this point where there's a lot of merit like do you try to take the lead with a lot of three bets or do you just calling more in position and a lot of it depends on your table but it's like so early and you have so many chips it's I feel like there's a lot, you're playing a lot more post-flop, not getting into three and four betting boards as much early. Seven hundred. Rosen taking down the what's pays to be the aggressor, firing the six five spades on the ace off flop, taking the pot down. Here. Straight vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Negrano has... I see a camera. Negrano has said many times he is a introverted extrovert, mm -hmm. always needing that time off to recharge because once he's in this environment, everyone wants something from him. Ben, can you imagine being, you know, someone like Daniel Negrano and every single person who's standing on the rail right now wants something from him, an autograph, a photo, or perhaps just a smile, and then also having to play your best game because this is a huge spot in, in your year. Yeah, the thing is, I mean, I actually, I can't imagine it. I'm not saying I'm anything near Daniel Negreanu, but because Barstool, like, I get recognized a lot too. Not on his level, and it is a different thing because you feel like it's a weird thing in life because you always have to be on. Right. Because you're getting recognized, and it's a great, it's the biggest virtual problem ever. But, you know, everybody has different things <coughs> and stuff. And the thing with Daniel, he's such a great ambassador. He doesn't have to do all those vlogs. You know, he just loves the game, and he, he loves putting positive energy out and getting new fans into it. And it's very admirable. Is he dang sure doesn't need the money? He's done everything <laughs> you can do in poker in 25 years, and yet he still cares about giving so much back to the game. So, I mean, I, I just can't say enough good about it. Big bracket here flopping a set of threes on Jack Deuce 3. Not a whole lot to make money from in this spot. Angeloff with a gut shot. Perhaps he can get him to come along for at least one street. Yeah, he's, he's probably not going to get it. Well, maybe. Only uh, three gut shot outs to the nuts. Yeah, here. I just surprised with it being two spades. I didn't think he'd be old, but. King of spades on the turn. Nothing there for Angelov. Of course, if you're bracket, you're going to want to continue, keep charging for all those flush draws out there. 4,500. 4, he goes a little bigger here, 45 and 6,800. Yeah, take it down. Yep, bracket gets the rake in a pot. If you're just tuning in and you're catching us on YouTube tonight, please don't forget to smash that like button. Uh, we hit 5,000 likes last night. We have Negrano on the stream tonight. We should definitely be able to hit 5,000 likes. We're going to be part of the Army. Please make sure to also subscribe to our YouTube channel. We got streams, clips, highlights, shorts, all sorts of good stuff. We got a whole month of throwback content coming in August when poker is a bit on the on the DL, so to say. August is that month of recovery after WSOP. We got lots of old school action being released on our channel. So while you're at it, if you're enjoying the show, please yeah. like our video and subscribe yeah, to the channel. Yeah, if you're subscribed to the Poker Go YouTube, why don't you use that code M-I-N-T-Z-Y and get $20 off when you sign up too. There it is. And, I, and I, that ain't going to hurt nobody. Everybody wants $20 off. And I would consider it a solid personal favor to me. <laughs> Thanks, Mincy, for joining us here on the broadcast. This is, I gotta say, this is really fun. It's my first time. I've, I've done like a lot of play-by-play -play of football, but I've never done poker. And I'm, I gotta say, it's, 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 it's fun. It's good stuff. Yeah, poker is a is a fun game because we're just sort of waiting and waiting, and we have to have lots of patience. But all of a sudden, then when it does happen, usually some amazing fireworks. Swarming open here with two black eight. Yeah, and, yeah, Angel is definitely going to peel the ace nine off here out of the big blind. Or she is a small blind, I'm sorry. Shelby Wells, not a big fan of folding. We've seen her in so many pots already. Possible get like uh, some waters up here? Yeah, okay. Thanks, man. Swarming from Ormond Beach, Florida. Went to Central Florida University with a. Great poker scene in Florida. Yeah. Days. Yeah, it's, you know, it's not just South Florida either. There's poker all over that state.
interesting story on his life for Schwarman. He left law school to play poker professionally for 10 years, and then he left poker to build a business and is now proud to employ 200 people in the CBD and Delta 8 gummy manufacturing. Wow, that is excellent. The company that he owns is valued at $100 million, and he's used the money to build um, a youth center for kids. That's, wow. That is uh, very, very admirable, and you know that's uh, uh, that's incredible. It is incredible. Two hundred people and building youth centers for kids. It's always good to learn some of the storylines behind who these people are. Six nine. Meanwhile, I've arrived on the river here. Angelov only betting 600, not even getting that call. That Swarman throws his eights into the muck. Oh, we're going dead. <laughs> That's been interesting to see on the streams, just watching poker, is the evolution of the game and just how small people bet now. Yep. And, you know, it, you know, pre flop, it became a min raise thing, you know, I guess that was 10 years ago. But now on the flop, I mean, you used to see like small C bets on ace high flop because you could figure it out for so cheap. But I mean, now it feels like the hands start on the turn because people are bet. You know, people see bets so small in these flops that I mean, it just goes bet call all the time. And so it's like really, it's it's become that the turn play has become just so so important. Yeah, you really need a lot more post flop chops to make it work in today's game. Of course, the structure of the main event has gotten deeper and deeper over the years. Way back when, it was one-hour levels, uh, 10,000 chips. Right now, two-hour levels, 60,000 chips, and a lot of small increases. Yeah, I love that the tournament starts now with the big blind, Danny. That's something that's happening. All right, out on the field, day one, up. C of the main. That means the show has begun. Donnie Peters, uh, we we got we got commentary. The, the, show, the show started, so I think they need you in the back in the booth. Sorry, I'm busy today. No, you're yeah, going to yeah. prioritize the main over this one? I mean, it's a little bit more money than my day rate. I gotta do what I gotta do, right? <laughs> Unless you lose. I'm just throwing that out there. Not that you're going to lose. Possibility. It, it is it's a, a possibility. It is a possibility. I'm, possibility. I'm prepared. What's day one been like for you so far? Uh, slow grind, but we got a fun table. Okay. A lot of guys are chatting, you know. But it's it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. I mean, you know how it is. They're doing out another hand right now. I'm gonna send you back to the action and wish Remco the best of luck on his own or something. That's right. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Donnie. Wow, Donnie Peters leaving me hanging here. But at least I got Mints to back him up. By the way, send Donnie Peters some love. He's there grinding in the main event, his second straight year playing in the main event. This man has some real chops. He studies a lot. He's in that GTO Wizard lab to learn more about the game. Donnie will be back tomorrow. We'll hear the full recap of his main event as he's going to be back for commentary on day 1D. I felt like that was a roundabout way of saying Donnie wasn't doing very well. <laughs> you know, he, he uh, just there, there was some platitudes thrown in there. Donnie, Donnie is one of my oldest friends in poker, and the fact that he's playing the main event and I get to do commentary on it is uh, pretty surreal, to be honest. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a good game. Yeah. I'm happy for Donnie playing, too. He's had a great career. You know, he's always been so respected in the poker world. I mean, I'm, so I'm not just like 08 or 09. <laughs> uh, just, I've never really heard anybody say a negative thing about him. Let's, let's be very, very honest. The poker world. <laughs> that, that puts him in my mind. Yeah, exactly right. That is true. You ever saw the movie Hustling Club? Oh, you know, it's hot out here for a pimp when he's trying to get the money for the rent. These are all the same year. Like gas money spent cause a whole lot of mm -mm, jumping ship. I'm not saying it. <laughs> you better not. Because you know what the word is. I, just get a couple I know better. I'm assuming. It starts with a B and I'm not saying it. Thank you so much. Right? You can. I think you're allowed. Oh, okay. You know, you know it's, it's like a, cause a whole lot of mm -mm, jumping ship. Yeah. It's the B word. You know what the B word is? Yes, I know. She no, they figured it out. <laughs> she figured it out. I, I don't think I can say it. You're allowed. Bitches. Or you can say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I, I can say it. I'm pretty sure. What's I think the, you can say bitches. I, th I don't know what the rules now. I can't keep up with the rules. A lady a bitch. I, don't, I can't keep up with the rules. What's the rules? <laughs> Better say than sorry. That's the rules. Uh, everything changes. I think it would have been more subtle say. if you just said it. You can say it. You can say Huh? I can say bitches? Oh, no! <laughs> You're gonna get a penalty. <laughs>
Uh, I can't Grace. do that. Okay. Can't say I fault Daniel for being careful about some of the, the words he's uh, singing. You know, I can't oh, I can't man. say that I blame him on that. Yeah, you gotta you gotta stay up to date on uh, what can and can't be said. It's very very slippery slope. Like, oh, slippery slope indeed. Um, shout out to Brian Green, ten dollar donation on YouTube says here's a little something for the coffee fund. Thanks for all the great streams. Yeah, I gotta pass along a few bucks because Vince got me a coffee earlier today. We're saying man up because one of my oh, really? oh, man up. That's just one of the sexes. Except it's an off here for Shelby a boy against like Tavolaris with seven three suited. Shelby flopping eights and sixes right, here. She's just up. She's, stay hot. Shelby Wells keeps breaking into pots. Human she looks comfortable. Yeah, you know, someone is identifying as a no, she does. And like I said, I said it before, man. I think there's something about making a World Series main run, and you do it once, and you just kind of been used to the situation, and you feel comfortable at the table. And that's a bigger deal than people realize when it comes to main event. You'd be lying if you're saying there aren't some You got a mic. I think I'll take you. Yeah, I got a mic now. You guys are in trouble now. You can keep up. How do you think you can shoot down? That's really right. Is it 2 4? Mm hmm. All right, Daniel's hand here. Go. Limping is pimping. You know, it's hot out here for a pimp. For a limp. When he's trying to limp under the gun. It's probably an offensive limp. Oh, pimp is probably an offensive limp. Probably. Negrano on the short stack, limping jacks under the gun. Raised to 1600. Getting the action he wants. Rigolo, ISO, and uh, Ace-9 off. Money? I can't see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, uh, on the button. That's it? See if Daniel <laughs> no calls offense, or, uh, you know. or, or he raises <laughs> so here. So 16? Be, it's very, Daniel's taking an interesting line here with the under-the-gun jacks limp. I kind of kind of say I like it. It's getting, getting the action he's craving. I'm supposed to smile. Yeah, Macho Rigolo from France, 32 years old, software engineer. It's weird. Usually they're going for pictures of him. I was like, take a picture of She likes you. It's a shirt. In the mic. Why exactly this shirt? Uh, it's Negrano is going to make the call. Keep the pot small. Products, so small ball, of course. The name of the game for Negrano. Left, he gave me the shirt. I was like, just promise me if you get on the TV table, you'll wear <laughs> the shirt. 10-5 deuce like, rainbow oh, on this flop. Yeah, sure, really, really nice for Negrano. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like we race day, back yeah. to the hotel and yeah, get the shirt. <laughs> That's really so nice. He better see us. Yeah, if he doesn't see us, I'm going to be furious. He missed 20 back. minutes of the last oh, No, no, I would rather lose money than promise someone something not do it. Like she I said, I was going to do it. I should, yeah, I'll get a video and be like, look, man, I raced back there. I got your shirt. We'll vouch for you. Rigolo, perhaps, thinking I can represent this king. Negrano, at this point, seemingly trying to go for. Try to keep this pot as small as possible, get into the river. Both keeping the bluffs in his range and then also losing the minimum if he does happen to be up against the king. And Daniel knows this. People always try to rep kings more than any other card. I mean, it's a thing. People always bluff kings. I mean, that's it's like it's like a no thing. So he checked calls here and correct. 9,400 in spot. One black. We're going to see a river card here. Negron has to fade an ace. River is the six of diamonds. Check. Probably going to see it in ground check again, and he does. Rigger low here, left with ace high. It'd be real interesting if he fires about 6K or 6,500 here. Backdoor diamonds getting there. And the king on the board. He could put Daniel in a bad spot here if he fires pretty big. Because the grounder limped under the gun, perhaps Rigger low putting him on a small pair. That is 6,000. 6,000, he goes that. Negrano has a decision to make here. This, is, this, is, this isn't an easy one either, though, because, I mean, the backdoor diamond's getting there. He, re he raised preflop. He repped the king. Daniel was thinking the jack's call in the turn would hopefully slow him down. And they go check, check. And, you know, Rigolo, the black ace not off suit, <laughs> he's got one way to win the spot. So, he's firing. Yep. Given the way Negrano has played this hand and underrepresented the strength of his holding, probably has to make the call. The only thing, though, is Daniel's chip stack's a little lower here. And so, you know, if he has 60 or 70K, he's calling all night. But Daniel only has 29,000 before this hand. The six can call on the river. Ace queen with a diamond? Is that what I mean? Ace queen with a diamond? Okay, that's what I do. Do you value bet worse ever?
Figurano crossing some hands off the list here. I don't see a way out. How do I get away from this? How do I get away? How do I get away? Let's see. What's the escape route? <laughs> I guess you could have Ace Jack with the Jack of Diamonds, too. It's also possible. Ace Queen or Ace Jack with the Diamond. Versus. What the hell? For value. Did you just have it? Nah. Oh, good job, Daniel. We're at Rates. It's perfect. Jacks. Crucial pot there for Negrano. Makes the call with Jacks. Chips up to 40K. Huh? This is exactly the kind of start he wanted on this feature table. I've been watching for a while. I've got live like that. Interesting. Yeah, it's like Daniel taking a very long line right, to Jacks there and sense. getting the total max My value. Under rep by doing it, and, and you know, that whole hand, hand, if he'd open for you, I'll wait for you, bro. I would have just moved in on you. Every time I live, you'd be like, oh, you must have nothing. You did come looping then, dude. A couple times I did have nothing. But this time I. Yeah. I had something the other hand, but it wasn't good enough, I didn't think. I might have to break this just so it shifts the horses. When they made it 15? Oh, that time I had nothing. <laughs> what, uh, that time I really had nothing. <laughs> so what is it, my turn to live? Your turn to live. Okay. Yeah, to live. I'll do it, I'll do what I'm told. <laughs> dealer, dealer, <laughs> is, that, is that RTA? I'm using, the dealer told me to live. So if I live. <laughs> dealer GTO, the next step. I'll live. Raise to 1,000. <laughs> And they're getting involved here on back-to-back -back hands. Living again, this time with Ace-9 suited. Bracket raising to 1,000. Negrano is not going to hate that because it probably will eliminate this turning into a six-way pot. My turn with 6-4 of diamonds, perhaps finding it nice to perhaps create multi-way action. Yeah, I feel like people always play tighter when they're getting massages usually, but turn. Wow, about to prove me wrong. Going with the I don't know my turn, stepping on the gas here right after I explained to people that he is very tight and aggressive. 6-4 diamonds, however, good enough for him to make it 3,500 with. That's a wild spot to 3 that. He's in pretty early position, too. Yeah. Going to be very on a Daniel just went to jack some of the guns. He's pimping. Good in. Ooh, you too? I got something good, man. I had something good. You have something good? Yeah, oh, sorry, okay. Look, good. look at him I had smile, a little like, smile with the well, massage. Yeah, look at him smiling. Good. Oh, I know, right? I used to eat meat. <laughs> I used to eat six high, throws it down. I love so you it. You know, I, one of the reasons I stopped eating meat was after I'd eat filet mignon and potato, I'd feel terrible the next morning, right? I did feel terrible. I mean, I also drank like a couple of bottles of wine and vodka, but it couldn't have been that. You know, <laughs> it had to be the steak. It had to be the steak. I was like, I'm not, giving up, the, I'm not giving up the wine and the drinking, so I'm, I'll give up the steak. Uh, yeah. So you know it has nothing to do with it. With it actually did. I was I'm just sort of joking because I found even when I was, I, I had, it caused issues digestively with me. Yeah. It has to do with the country, right? The country? Is there a quality meat? of food in the States? Uh, I mean, just meat in general doesn't do the same ball me for a long period of time. Meat, meat's one of the few things in the States where you eat it. I'm sure. So I imagine. Can you my phone number on the table? I have some, some friends that don't eat meat when they're in the States. Right. Oh, really? Give me a little action. They eat the meat when they're in the States. Wow. What's the bet? I said I would give you action. I just got okay. Yeah, yeah. So you're limping. I'm just I'm I'm limping. I learned it from you in the last Okay, let's pimp. I saw you limp jacks. I said, okay. Yeah. My, limp, my own limping range is changed. Check. Limp pot here in the blinds. The ground versus Swarman. Check. 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 Ooh, Daniel likes straight on the river here. I'm trying to find one hand I can still beat. God, you could beat four or five offsuit. That's yeah. It's like all I, I'm trying to decide <laughs> if there's any suit. chance you this have like five, six. This is a big one. I could have so many ever. different hands. Six uh, deuce offsuit. Yeah, yeah. I could have the Robbie. You know what the Robbie is? I think you can have like Jack Four. Yeah. That's exactly the Robbie. I had the Jack Four. Oh <laughs> shit! <laughs> <laughs> I did not see that before I called it. You even had the blocker. Huh? I had the right block. The Jack Club. <laughs> Jack Club's blocker. I had to call. I had the Jack Club's blocker. That was one of my favorite lines. You called the all in. On that spot. The all in. I just yeah. randomly yeah, shot yeah, the yeah, one on the next pot. <laughs> Excellent table talk from Daniel so far. Making our jobs really easy because we all love just listening to Daniel talk. Yeah, yeah no, he, he, he does. And there's some talent to that when you're at these feature tables, like I said. It's, you know, you've got so many great Poker Grove listeners, subscribers. 
know, supporting this thing. You gotta, gotta, gotta give them a shout, you know? Gotta gotta give, give people a beer. I don't know. I don't know if you can win it twice. You know you get my vote. Praise to 1,000. Well, I appreciate it. You get my vote every year. Interesting yeah. open here by Rigolo with the uh, 18, 18. I don't, I don't well, get a vote. You know, kind of surprising to see a king who's suited open just because it's happening to me. That's it. With 17K. Cool. And usually you see people tighten up and they get a little lower. But, Lots of top pair. Okay. Nothing out there for bracket. Check. As Rigolo gets the check mark. It gives me time to say that this new app launched. I'm trying to be hip and cool. It's okay. called it's called Threads. Okay. Um, of course, we all know that you know, Twitter has changed a bit over the last year or so. But if you want to follow PokerGo on Threads, we have now have an account on there. It's uh, basically like Twitter, lots of talk and conversation. We're going to give you guys some behind the scenes on there as well. So if you are on Threads, which is new, launched today, Mincy is immediately downloading the app right now. Of course. You better hop you should, on You should there. do the same. I, I just, I just uh, made my account. So Remco Rinkema on Threads, PokerGo on Threads. I'm sure Mincy will be on there in uh, the next few minutes or so. But yeah, we're, uh, we're everywhere. Oh, yeah, we love to. I, who, who votes on that house? You won last year? Florence? The supervisor? I never Florence. voted for him. Come on, bro. Like, I know I I've given Daniel too many bad beats. I, can get <laughs> I don't even remember. I <laughs> no, the supervisors uh, for the tournament staff and our dealer supervisors vote for it. That's awesome. That was great. Thank you. One at one really good Dealer of the year here. Oh, yeah. Dealing oh, at the feature table. Yeah. Love to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's just his name is Daniel. <laughs> is that why you're going on about it? Glasses, big beard. Yeah, there's the best one. What's up, buddy? How are you, man? It's good to see you, dude. Still can't see because of his hand. It's not your fault. I put a, oh, the ground with sevens here on the button. I see some action here. Rigolo making it a thousand to go. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. It's like, yeah, fuck it, remember. <laughs> First hand Daniel loves post flop yeah, poker, so this is spot. Yeah, you could. There's merit to three bet the no button to get the lead with the middle pair, but uh, it's not surprised to see Daniel call. No yeah, absolutely. And of course, the World Series Poker Main Event is the ultimate sort of uh, flop a set World Championship. The stacks are so deep, you're going to see so many flops with pocket pairs. And Daniel also just, just post flop game is excellent. He's in position here, and he's happy to play post flop position anytime. Tyler, his what? Oh, nice. What do we just do from now on? Just gonna and now Daniel has the third best hand. Yeah, all of a sudden, Rigolo flops top pair. Arnold turn gets an eight, and the ground of seven is looking really small right now. The ground doesn't have a diamond to go along with it. I do not play poker anymore. Rigolo continues for 1,800. Action on the ground. Yeah, busy. That's That's the thing. Called, Some discipline there. Is, Let's it go. Yeah, it's just there. this board with the two diamonds, the 10 8. It's, I mean, you're just playing a guessing game. Yeah, like jack nine or diamonds, sevens, and not really having great equity against those hands either. So. Like so Tyler Benson, and then we had Pay attention to Arnold Maturn, one of the smoothest uh, chip like handlers in Most the business. Nice. It's just a nice structure, right? Because you get, you get a break after. He makes the call. We see the first spades on the turn. So it's just like, because they, they, uh, day one D plays tomorrow, then then we go again on Friday. Assume, assuming I make it past this this table, <laughs> and then Saturday. How did you get? <laughs> Sounds like someone has ex explained to their rail. No, it's honestly for the most part. What the plan easy. of attack is it's going to be just to over the course seat. of the next few days? Of course, the main event, uh, a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, just your own regs. Got some uh, French on French action here as Rigolo continues. Just, it was hilarious because everybody was asking at the beginning of the uh, 5600 is the bet. The beginning of it, like, all right, so Action what's everyone doing? Like, everyone's plays for yeah, everything. I'm like, curious, well, I don't. Turns are tough spot here. here. He, he's got middle pair. So it's me and eight pros. Awesome. We're going to bet in the flop and turn, showing strength. Turns out of position. I know. Same as Uncle Dumas. That's so great. I'm addicted. I have to text Wade back, or uh, I have to text Wade back, or he'll yell at me. What's up, boy?
turn really taking his time here. Huh? Let's go of the eight. Oh, it's all yeah, done. Man. Just look fold. Yeah, that was a spot where it's quite a guessing run. game, a little pair there, and you're also going to be facing another battle. It's a little more forever. fun than normal. Don't really yeah, know. it was fun like in the beginning. Could have a draw or you could have any beat, so uh, I like getting away from it all the time. It's yeah, this is one of those tournaments where you don't table. have to I mean, play just, like thin spots no a lot. You can just away. wait for better situations, and uh, that was one of those where you can just easily let, let it go. Just a reminder for everybody that if you want to use your cell phones, you have to step to the rail in order to do it. Okay. The phones can interfere with the electronics at the table, and then I get a director yelling at me, and then nobody's happy. <laughs> That's right. Raised. Raised to 1,000. Shelby Wells back to where she wants to be, raising it up, getting involved. If you're just joining us, my name is Remco Rinkema. Ben Mincy next to me here for the action. Six hours of WSP main event coverage. Hopefully six hours with Mr. Daniel Negrano. He is on the feature table. This is day 1C. Tomorrow on day 1D, we're going to have Phil Helmuth on the feature table. So Fresh off bracelet number 17. Yes, sir. Um, and I, I heard he's going to come in late like he always does no, dressed Bill? dressed as the world's greatest showman yeah, gonna be great. with Whatever. 18 models air, or se sorry 17 models all dressed as lions Daniel just call you the greatest showman, the greatest showman with the lions <laughs> hey the and helmet no dishes has hear become hear certainly a time honored tradition on the main event he always they comes in for those that didn't hear it before the broadcast this gentleman sells drugs and there's nothing wrong with that he sells drugs for a living manufacturing okay he makes the drugs helps other people sell the drugs and you guys do the drugs they're all legal <laughs> he's the guy all well, yeah, whatever legal in some places that's no fun yeah. what's wrong with oh, no, that's no fun the legal ones are no fun well, the legal part actually, of it never mind the legal ones can be fun <laughs> right, i should have said legal in most states i guess yeah i should have said legal in most yes. states Watch what you say, it's on stream. I used to play with drug dealers and stuff at the horseshoe, and now I'm sitting next to him. That's <laughs> great. What an exciting life. Oh, Aren't you right? happy you're here? And yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Uh, might as well just horseshoe. plug out post-brands yeah. while I'm in here. You got like. the Cubans, you got the Colombians, you know, you got this guy. <laughs> Equal playing field now. I'm sorry. Check out outpostbrands.com yeah. to support. Matthew Swarman. American made. There you go. He's uh, donating a lot of his profits to building youth centers for kids in Florida. So, want to give him some love for sure. Has it raised 1,000? CBD industry. Are you in right? Florida? Yep. Uh, Ormond Beach, just next to Daytona Beach. Oh, cool. I know where that is. Yeah. I live in Jacksonville here. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm right between you. I'm an hour north. Yeah. I was trying to explain to him how nice it is nine months a year. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's not a good time to be there. Well, if you don't like humidity. When I, when I left, it was 94% humidity, but it wasn't raining. Like, what? Are you ready? Ooh, nice. We got Angelov getting the chips out for the 10 old 10 9 of hearts 3 bet. Oh, Jesus. Actually, there are some psilocybin oh, analogs right. that it's might become a good as long nice, as you're nice not the analog guy. So that's uh -huh. like that. But nothing related to LSD. Mushroom stuff. Yeah, the mushrooms are where we're progressing. Right now we're progressing through like Kratom and mushrooms are our next two, uh, two big ones. What's the legality of that? It depends where, like, like in terms of like psilocybin, nowhere usually outside of Oregon. But in terms of like cordyceps, lion's mane, reishi, like many other functional mushrooms, that's pretty much good everywhere. And then there are the ones that are, people are trying to figure out if they're under the analog act. And then Kratom's actually a really good, Kratom's a really good one. It I don't substitute. Know green, yeah. Yeah. Acts on the same receptors as an opiate without getting people addicted and causing problems. So that's a good, you know, when you when you utilize correctly. I mean, anything you can take too much of and get in trouble. Sure. Yeah, I mean, he said cool cordyceps, as as and I've watched The Last of Us, so I'm getting a little worried here. I, I got nothing to say about anything. Charlotte, if you watched Last of Us, probably one of the best shows to come out in the last few years. But, uh, I've heard good things about it. Exciting table talk so far. We're going to try to just sit back and relax. I feel like uh, many, many states this, this table is going to do all its own bidding for us. Well, that's, We're so just going to wait to see until they get into some big competitions. I cannot legally do. I can cross state lines with. <laughs> Similar, but um, slightly different. Um, but this, flop, this is rare. We're four people like in a flop. Nobody flopped a dang thing here. Some sort of, uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, you almost feel like somebody has to hit something, and that is... You almost want to think this is going to check around to Angelov, and he might take a stab, but he doesn't. Queen hits the ace queen. 
I always, I just, I always thought the states either got it or they didn't. Oh, okay. Like with recreation. All of a sudden, Tavolaris. Tavolaris. I know with Michigan a pair so and a good kicker. Yeah, 90 percent chance to win. The only person still drawing. Ah, still 10-7. Wells has a gut shot. That's it. Because the medical marijuana companies are furious that CBD derivatives can, you know, offer people a high to a degree. Double and, R's, you know, bets, and uh, takes it down. Takes it down. But it's really too bad. Moving on to the next hand. Tons of like, veterans, disabled people, old people, cancer patients, things like that that, like, rely on it. So that hasn't been passed in Florida yet at all? Uh, no, I actually, we, my company. All right, I think it's about time we check in again on my favorite man in the field. He's also the only man in the field. Best dressed man. man. Best dressed man in all of poker. I think we got a Jeff Platt update coming up. Let's see who uh, Jeff found out there. Because, of course, this field is full of amazing characters in the main event. It's only on day 1C. Jeff, what do you got? All right, out here in the field, she hosts the Ace Holes podcast. She's, I don't know, fourth or fifth string host. At high noon, Nikki Luma, stand up for me, please, if you can. Thank you. All right, it's your second World Series of Poker main event. Give us a sense of what it's like to walk into this room to sit down yeah. at the greatest poker tournament in the world. Well, as a fifth string yeah. high noon host. So it is fifth string. Yeah, absolutely, okay. absolutely. Like, I think it was DePaulo like four times. <laughs> right yeah. Than you. Yeah, yeah um, it's, it's enlightening, it's inspiring, it's motivating. I'm um, surrounded by success of so many great players, um, and I'm just happy to be here. You had an absolutely wild hand earlier in this World Series of Poker. Maybe a Royal Flush was featured? Absolutely, yeah. I, As a cash game player, it hurts my heart that I got that <laughs> hand. It was the very first hand of the mystery bounty. So first event, first hand, everybody's got fresh stacks. And I got a Royal Flush over Quad Queens, oh my. which was insane. Still busted the tournament. Yeah. So don't get that hand early in a tournament. Right. You kind of wasted the Royal Flush. I wasted it. All right. Hopefully you get like a straight flush or quads here. I'm going to send you back to Thank the action you. so you don't miss a hand. You're still the most famous person here, Jeff. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. That does that does mean a lot to yeah. me. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's get this straight. Jeff's ego does not need stroking of any kind. This man is full of confidence already. That was Nikki Limo playing out on one of the outer tables. Jeff, she did some good stuff. She's hosted High Noon a couple times. Yep. Will, Will Jaffe. Uh, I've kind of just gotten you know follow her this summer. But very fun personality. Very interesting. Absolutely. Co-host of the Ace Hole podcast with Kaylee Kaminsky. We'll find that on you YouTube do? as well. We got an interesting hand that. developing here. Yeah, that's good, man. That's great. Came out here with this guy, huh? Yeah. Yeah, Angelov committing his ace king here. Bracket <laughs> murder. He's popping it up to 10,000 on this queen 5 10 board. I actually walked by one. Bracket also with a nice jack water here, too. <laughs> I was just like, wow, that's got a nice drop. Probably the end of his table. hand. I would think. <laughs> so he, made, he's he made it big here. So, yeah, table, yeah. he priced him out. So, he's wonderful. Yeah, if, this, if the raise was a bit smaller, Angelov with backdoor clubs and the gut shot to the nuts potentially, you know, would be able to continue, but 10,000, not really. If you want water, buddy, you want something? She's got the, all the, the I got coffee, a, so did you. You do coffee, like a soda. Plain, plain green tea? Coffee, so did you. Coffee, yeah. soda. Thank you. No? Nobody? Oh, shit. I, I, remember I know that one. Atlantic City, she's got coffee, soda, juice, Candy, coffee, peanut. Soda. Thank you. Coffee, soda juice, coffee soda. Somebody made a remix of that. There was a, there was candy in there too at the Borgata, right? Uh, well, no, that was talking oh. about the oh. um, little candy in there. In the Borgata, she used to candy, 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 cigarettes, coffee, soda. beer. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Shrunk, Poker Road, R.I.P. Way back in the day, coffee soda, soda juice. Banana. The remix gives me chills thinking back of that era. Coffee. Joe Seabock, Joe Stapleton. Agua, Ford Harrington. If you're in the chat right now, you're you go way back and remember that. You ready? Please let me know. Forty two hundred. Uh, Bracken, meanwhile, limping in. Wells attacking, making the twelve hundred. Rigolo, <laughs> clearly picking up on the fact that Wells is trying to take over this table. Helps a little bit as well that he's finds Ace King off. Kind of big on sizing here. 3K more. I mean, I don't think it would have mattered. They said, I don't think they said, oh, can continue here. Even if they're a small grab. Takes it down. You're big blind, Florida. You're big blind. Or Escobar. Yeah, than yeah, I can call you Escobar. You're big blind, Escobar. <laughs> I thought he was going to say Pablo. Pablo, it's your big blind. Oh, no. 
brutal. <laughs> we got Pablo Escobar here. Again, in the middle. We go and pay all my taxes. You're killing me. Oh my God, the whole deal. Well, you don't have to pay taxes for it. You're <laughs> no state income. Yeah, the, fed, the feds still get their forty. Thank you, little zebras. Yeah. And you thought the shirt was going to be your big ass I, 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 <laughs> I didn't mention my company. I've said I'll post brands like one time. That's the first time. Rest you made it there one time. Yeah, actually the Uber's canceled on there. Yeah. Yeah. Angelov staying active with Ace Queen Walk. offsuit. Oh, no, I just don't know the Uber. Yeah, they don't care if you drug the Uber. Yeah. Is that yeah, 1K? 1K, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, sure. One of my favorite situations in all of poker, when two of the same hands go at it, just so you can see who has the more creativity, perhaps able to use their positions to the advantage. Schwarman versus Angelo. I had a hand last night where I three bet ace queen. I've actually streamed on stream. I think I was the first person on Twitch to ever stream on stream. Yeah, exactly. I was on the laptop. And I was at a hotel. I said, whatever, I'm in a tournament. Just go to the bathroom. I put it up here. I streamed while I was streaming. But I didn't show any stream while streaming. Legit. I don't know if you're allowed to do that, but they made a rule after. But I didn't show the stream. You could hear it, though. Good, good smell. You could probably hear it. Rigolo raising it up with nines. He now is the short stack. Hasn't had anything going for him despite picking up a series of good hands. Wow, look at this. Rosen fighting back with queen five suited. On the button, though. In the, in the main event, this stuff's tough. Like, I don't, you know, like, <laughs> maybe you get put in weird spots. I mean, Joey Ingram would say this is out of line. Yeah, Rosen has a pair of backdoor spades. But also the ace high, does he, does he check the five back for value because he has a piece of it or you just go ahead? I think you got to go ahead and rep the ace here. So like and, you, and, and you can do it by going smaller. So if he does that, he has 2,200 into... 7,000. Yeah, into 7,000. One of them switched. Phil Riggler's pain here. He's got 21,000 chips. You know, a lot of this has to do with stack sizing, but like he's in a weird spot to do any peeling and continuing because of how small. Yep, because the stack. He has 40. He has 40k there. He's peeling 2k more, but you got 20k. You got protect what you got. You know, props to Rosen for that pot. He played the hand very well. Shout out to Marinessa44 with the five dollar donation. It says, let's go, Daniel and Velma. Oh, and Doug. There we go. Multiple horses in the main event, as always. Uh, by the way, if you're just tuning in, let us know who you're rooting for. Are you Team Negroni? Perhaps someone else you are rooting for? I appreciate it. And I trust you to pay your money. He's good for it. <laughs> say, when, when, when you said Shelby Wells was born in New Orleans, I gotta say that. That got me on our team. Yeah, you're, you're a fan instantly. Yeah, I live in uptown New Orleans. You gotta support that. Every now and then I hit it, but I usually can. Well, could you live in Vegas? Uh, I don't think so, but maybe, you know, if I did like the, the summer thing, thing <laughs> right. you know, I think you're going to go to or, you know, I think you could make it like a more normal life, but it, doing the poker thing in summer is not. You wouldn't survive? I think I could. I, I just, I think, I wouldn't live in a casino hotel for 12 months a year. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I think I could. I think there's so much going on here. You know, it's just getting bigger and bigger. Just won the Stanley Cup and, you know, the Raiders and now rumors, you know, see if the A's come, but. Certainly no lack of entertainment. Yeah, I think we're only about 10 years away from having baseball, soccer, basketball. It's all coming to Vegas. Meanwhile, that is nobody, has anything. nobody has anything in this one. That's the beauty of having position. Nobody has anything. Just check and bet. you feel rusty when you haven't dealt in a while, or is it like riding a bike? Um, not too much. Um, some of the mixed game stuff can be a little... Got to figure it out again. But other than that, one of the best dealers in the game. Right. Swapping out every 30 minutes, a new dealer comes in. Thank you. <laughs> yep. 
Sure, that'd be great. If you're enjoying the coverage today, we hopefully have about six hours of Daniel Negreanu tonight on the feature table. Please just hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. We're trying to break the record from last night, get up over 5,000 for You're making me feel good event. about playing on the feature table last night. Five yeah, we did nice. well. We got a lot of Mincy fans in the mix. Brent Hanks told me that all your Stooley friends were probably drunk eating hot dogs, so we missed out on a large contingent as well. So you got to make a deep run to give them a chance to really watch. Yeah, it. the Vegas, the late night thing too. You know, all this kind of stuff. But no, I, look, like I said, you know, it may sound like I'm sucking up to y'all, but I, I, this poker go operation, something. Oh, that's a lot of entertaining content. I like the streaming, the, the personalities. It's definitely had worse summer jobs, I can tell you that. There you go. Grace. Glad to hear it. Shelby Wells opening the ace 10 of clubs here. Let's see if she gets some action. She's made it a thousand. Daniel on the button, A6 suited. Certainly expect him to come along and at least play a flop here in position. Bob, Bob the Builder with a $2 donation saying, let's go dealer. Kenny R with a $10 donation says, limpin' is pimpin', let's go Danny boy. Dave Coles with a $20 donation. We're being raised really steeply here in the chat. Dave says, get it, grateful for all your work. I saw you briefly at WSB a few weeks back in Vegas. You're the man. I think he's talking about you. Oh, I appreciate it. we got a very interesting hand here. So Daniel, who doesn't usually three bet, actually three bets the button here. Take the lead today, six of diamonds. And now they both flop aces. All hard slow, which could slow it down. But this, is a, this is an interesting hand. Daniel goes super small in the flop, firing 1,500. He bets. About 22% of the pot. Oh, right. So you got to think uh, Shelby's going to come along here. Or they're going to see the turn card and let the hands go. All right, good luck. Wow, turn card is the fourth heart, the king of hearts. What's today? Not a great card for either player. Okay, good. I'll see you. This hand now more likely to go to showdown. I'll, I'll be doing nothing tomorrow. Yeah, Daniel has to hate this card. I mean, he, because he, he, you know, not having a heart in his hand. Check, check. check, check. River card is the queen of clubs. Straight for straight for Shelby Wells, but four hearts. You probably can't bet it, but she ain't gonna be going anywhere if she checks. Perhaps we can uh, lead small to avoid a big bluff. Or perhaps Negrano, you know, just trying to get the showdown no matter what. God, that's greedy. That's so greedy, Shelby. My goodness, so greedy. I don't think I beat anything, even though have something. No, you have a 10 probably. I think you have like a 10 do you have? Hold on. <laughs> it's a 10, right? You have a straight. That's fine. You're entitled to having a straight. I'm just trying to figure out which 10 it was. Was it? Oh, you had like 10 jack of spades maybe? I don't know. I'll just fold. Ten You're is too good, good dude. Ace 10. Oh, you had me. <laughs> You're too good. <laughs> it's scary how many you pull some of those out. I figured she had a 10. I mean, made sense. I almost went bonkers. I didn't have a heart. <laughs> but I had an ace, too. You beat me fair and square. <laughs> Gotta love it when Negranu gets the hand reading mode. Yeah, and I gotta say, another thing, I know I'm brown nosing Daniel here a lot, and I'll probably hear about it. Huh? But that shows the beauty of being friendly and table talk at the tape. He just got her to, sh to show yeah, that yeah, yeah. tin. Yep. Like, if he hadn't been talking and he was in like stone cold killer mode and wasn't friendly, he ain't getting that information. So, there you go. We know. Great read there, finding Grano saving himself a thousand chips. But it was the first time we saw him three bet after limping a lot of hands. Definitely trying to mix it up here as Tabularis finds pocket nines. And we, you know, we've seen Shelby Wells be pretty active, so you know he probably thought good spot to get the lead on the button if she's been playing a lot of hands. Can't see who raised. Oh man, yeah. close. You got it. You got your favorite spot here. Daniel with oh. red nines. Tabularis with black nines. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that neither player is going to flop a set. Ten six three. Um, pretty profound call there by your. 
Of course, no sets for either player, but only one overcard to the nines. Let's see how this is going to go. Okay. Neither player has any incentive to turn this into a bluff. The grounder does have backdoor diamonds going for him. That is Grounder bets 2100. Tavolaris makes the call with his pair of nines. Turn eliminates any chances of this hand going one way or the other. These players now have the same hand at showdown. Let's see if the Grano is going to try to take another stab here. But of course, nines, you got to be happy to get the showdown. Yeah, they, well, that, that, that board pair of tens here means I, I can't see any chance that neither one's going to be folding. Yeah, nine's of course not a bluffing hand in this scenario. Sort of take Tavalores. We may uh, see him go for value here. Tens and nines. I mean, diamonds did get there too, but you know that ten seems to be a four pair of tens. Pretty innocent. Check, check. check. Both check. players no showing good. nines. No Chop it up. You don't believe me? <laughs> Chop it up. Let's <laughs> go. <laughs> <laughs> I did not put you on nines, I had nines. <laughs> Fair. Let us know in the chat how your summer is going. Have you played any WSP events? Perhaps some online success? We'd love to hear about it. If you're catching us on YouTube, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. We're still trying to get to half a million YouTube subscribers this summer. I know I was very ambitious throwing the number out there at the start, but hey, it's the main event. Who knows? Either way, we're, we're grateful and happy well, you all are watching. My jacket on. One more day like, of day one coverage tomorrow that. before we go into like the day two coverage, and that's when I don't know how you guys are we fire up the big right. shots. It's hot, but like I just feel cozy in my hoodie. I always play poker in my hoodie. Yeah, that makes sense, yeah. My back would be so Double R's raising up to a thousand. Thousand. Runner makes the call with six, seven of clubs. Wells defending her big blind call with King Deuce. Jack, nine, six on the flop, one club. Negrano with a pair. Backdoor straight flush draw. Got a call like I see it. <laughs> That's a pretty ambitious straight flush draw. Negrano, of course, picking up on that as well. Throwing out a bet. Today for day two, today reshuffle. Pablo Lares works in online marketing from Athens, Greece. Has 175K in live tournament results. Spend any time in Greece? I have. Okay. I've been to Athens and I've been to uh, Crete, Holy wonderful island of Crete. I've been to uh, Santorini as well. Oh, wow. I've been fortunate and enough to travel around good. a bit. They're all Huge wonderful place. Very hot. Very, very hot in the summer. Got to just stay on the beach, hide in the shadows, or underwater. Well, I think people, a lot of times, it's like when you travel, right? So you fly in. Like, yeah, like if you save a job, you know, instead of coming for day one A, then you have to stay an extra four days. And there's also satellite winners who play throughout the you know, two days. I don't know. But yeah, it's pretty crazy how, how significant it is. A, a versus A. It is a headache. For yeah, it would be D, nice for D them. Last year it was 10 handed a whole day. That was why I didn't play D this year. Mm -hmm. D last year was 10 handed yeah, the whole day. day. It's going to be like that tomorrow. It is. They're going to do it. It has yeah. to be. It's going to be huge. I didn't want to play it this year. I actually had a top pro, like I'm telling you, he's like one of the best in the world, say to me, he plays one deep because it's 10 handed. You know why? It was crazy. And he said because he has a better chance of having a bad player. Yeah. It's like, wow, I never thought of it that way. But, but you get a little uncomfortable. I'm like, no, a lot uncomfortable. Yeah. It's I like awful. my room. Yeah. I'm 6'4", man. I don't want to be. I he's 6'3", six, like six, 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 four also. I had no idea that I figured this day you had a, a day break and then another day break. Yeah, that's why I like, I like, I like, I like that reason too. Uh, day off, day off. Okay. Day, off. day one, day off. Day two, day off. Day three. Yeah. 
play D, play D, play two, and then they three, right? So I'm really enjoying this, yeah. Uh, so much. It's so much, you know. We've been, and please quit, the table for just, an hour. just quit. There's no point. It's silly. The French, French action you don't need continues. that tip, right? If you do it. <laughs> All the tips are hard if you're on the river. Continue. Of course. Yeah. If you have tobacco, tobacco's 100 times worse than that. So just quit both. I, I, I eat it for cannabis. Yeah, or yeah, maybe yeah. we sell tons of vapes, but it's for cannabis, not. Yeah, vaping cannabis. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a misunderstanding. You go to England, the doctors issue you a vape pen to get you off cigarettes. That makes sense. The National Health Care System in England issues you vape pens. It's a misunderstanding. People think vapes like so terrible. It's not great, but it's a hundred times better than cigarettes than combustible tobacco. We're learning a lot tonight. Sorry. Just I actually have some comments on that. Oh, I'm okay. saying, you can quit that too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Kind of, kind of would let the nicotine vape creep into my life a little bit, and I uh, cold turkey a couple weeks ago, and I'm feeling a lot better. Wow. I wasn't day, but I wasn't like every day, but I was noticing it was, it was becoming more of a part of my life than I wanted it to be, and I'm on about day 11 or 12 without it. Oh wow. I gotta say my life's a whole lot better, you know. I'm running miles, feeling good. You know? Perfect. Yeah, Perfect. yeah. It's not it's definitely not a good habit. Love hearing that. Um, a turn, meanwhile, betting 6,500 on the river here, Rigolo has that pair of queens. Can't see him folding here. Pretty well disguised pair of queens. Yeah, it is. Good bluff catcher. Yeah. Rigolo makes the call. Matern is going to show down just ace high. Rigolo can break this one in. Much needed pot for him. He now back up to 30K. And I, like I know you mentioned main. turn plays a little tighter on the main. UPT. That was actually, I know it looked bad because the bluff didn't work, but I actually like the spot because uh, his opponent only had 18,000 chips. And so by betting 6,500 there, oh, yeah. I mean, you're, you're making him have a queen to call. You're putting him know. in a bad spot. So I actually, even though it didn't work, no, no, I see the much. logic. I, to thank you. That I forgot, last night Donnie added a Mincy emoji to our chat. If you, are, if you are a subscriber to our YouTube community, you can use the Mincy emoji. There it is. What is the Mincy emoji? It's you in the sunglasses. All right. Cool. If you're not a subscriber yet, use the Mitzi code while you're at it. 20 bucks off. Can't beat it. Raise. Negrano, Jack Nine of Spades, raising it up. Right, it's going to call here with the king and the queen off suit in position. So we're at it for multi way pot here. Angelo off picking up two black fives. Calls. <laughs> Shelby, Shelby Wells doing what Shelby Wells does, getting involved. I thought that would have been, yeah, that would have been a really funny spot if she squeezed the King 10 and bombed the ball out of the luck there. And now Tom Lurs picks up Ace 8, a hard boy. We got a, you know, like a little lottery flop here. We got five people in this thing pre flop. Let's see who gets hit. Ace 8, 9 on the flop here, two diamonds. Two pair for Tom Lurs. Uh, definitely has the biggest flop here. But very draw heavy, five people in the pot. The Granu, a pair, and a bunch of back doors. Might even see him continue here, despite the fact that we're so multi way. That's a big top one. Not than four people. Jacks. Just has checked around, oh, and it's not the best news for. Tavoris. Oh wow, a set now for the pair of fives of Angelov. And Tavoloris' ace eight is shrinking quickly. And Bracken has enough flush draw now too. Exactly, this is gonna be some fireworks potentially, or at least there's gonna go some money into the middle. So he goes pretty big with aces and eights trying to protect his hand. He fires 4,000 to 5,600, so. You know, I can't blame him, the board's so draw heavy, but little does he know that this five hit Mr. Angeloff pretty dang hard. But of course, the three diamonds being out there makes Angeloff a lot less likely to raise. This is, after all, the main event. We 
go to the river. It is a three of hearts. I mean, Tavalar is probably still feeling pretty confident about his ace eight here. Interesting spot here. Does he go? Does he go for value with aces and eights, or does he check the call because he don't want to bet and get raised on this board? So he does, he goes main event route. You see a lot of you know you see a lot of checks here. I think Angelov's going to go. If there's thirteen thousand six hundred here, I'm predicting you see about a five k bet for some thin value here. Try to get paid off because he's got to know he's good when he checks off. Yeah, I believe it is uh, illegal in Nevada to check behind with a set, so he has to bet here at least something. I think he's a little small. I see but my guess is five. Looks like 8,000, 9,000 even. He goes bigger and shows you what I know. Uh, I think. Oh, Tevlor says, says 62,500, but he still makes a disappoint fold. Very, very good fold there. That was an excellent fold. Oh, no, he called. I'm sorry. I think he called. Yeah, he tossed in the green chip there. I didn't see the green chip. He's going to get some change, but still, it's a very costly hand for him. I thought he folded, but he was just mucking his beat. It, it was one of those toss in the chip, toss in the cards. Yeah. I saw one chip. Awesome. I apologize. Rookie play, play by play mistakes. Don't I, don't, I don't think that was a bad call. Though. Don't worry, Mincy. I get stuff wrong all the time, but at least the chat never falls me for it. The I'm chat, sure the chat always has my back. Most forgiving people. Exactly right. Love you all. Love you all. Shout out to everyone watching right now. It's been a blast so far at the World Series of Boger. Our second stream of the night. I'm about to crack my Celsius, as you all know. 200 milligrams of caffeine to get my night going. We're going to be here until 1 a.m. Pacific time, 4 a.m. Eastern. I kind of remember that. I believe that's 10 a.m. on Central European time, if any of you French fans are watching. Two French players here at the feature table. Negrano raising it up with ace wow. suited. Wow, he seemed to turn, mucking ace jack off here to Daniel's open. That yeah, turn doesn't want to tangle with Negrano. Negrano has been limping a lot, now all of a sudden he raises. Got to give him credit for a narrow range. I'll also say this, I know that looks nitty on the stream, but ace jack off suit plays, I mean, it's not a, it's not a hand that plays very well. You're doing a lot, you're guessing if you're good on ace highs a lot, you don't know. I don't know, I feel like it's a hand that gets you a lot of trouble. I mean, from watching high stakes poker back in the day, they always said he's got the ace to jack and he ain't holding back. This time, Maturno decides to throw him in the muck. A pretty uh, crappy flop here for everyone. Yeah, Daniel keeps the lead here will win, but it's hard to bet the 10 6 deuce, two clubs, and two people with a red ace nine. Looks like he's going to do it, though. He's going to get two quick folds because he's a kid poker. Negrano takes this one down. Still below the starting stack. Every player started with 60K. Yeah, I got you. Small chips. Someone just said that one of the announcers <laughs> is terrible. We're just going to leave that in the middle. We're just going <laughs> to pretend that, you know, it could be either one of us. Who knows? I mean, people are entitled to their opinions. See, Nick! I love you, man. Not, not sleeves, I see. <laughs> Can't create a space for Negrano. He keeps getting playable hands here. We keep getting treated to lots of Negrano plays. Perhaps we can. We got the limp. He's bringing the limp oh, back. Oh, he's bringing the limp back, yep. Already some speculation in the chat on how long the massage is going to take for Arnaud Matern. Knowing him, it might be for the remainder of the day. There might be some strategy to it. Who knows? Like I said, I mean, I always think people that get massages are playing tighter. We saw him get a 6-4 suited and 3-bet through earlier. The, uh, just to balance the ranges, Sean Moore says, one of the announcers is fantastic. So one of us is terrible, one of us is fantastic. I, I, you certainly have a lot more experience. So. No, no, equal credit to both of us. <laughs> We're just balancing it a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a game of flavors. I'm never in a league, so I just check in the dark. So only in look. Daniel, this is an interesting hand. Coming to Daniel Limp, King Queen of Spades, and the turn ISO raise Queen Jack clubs. So Daniel actually, a little to his knowledge right now, has been dominated on the 884 flop. But this could be a spot where it's good to get the rate, it'll be the lead, uh, get the lead pre-flop because if he bets decently bigger, I don't see how Daniel can go continue. Yep, that's exactly what happens. Yeah. 
I do like how Daniel's varying his play here, though. I mean, we've seen limps, the king, queen of spades, two jacks, three bets today, six of diamonds. It's kind of hard to get a read on what he's doing, to be honest. Another blind battle here between Swarman and Negrano. Wow. I mean, it's only a very tiny bet, but you beat him the pot, uh, Swarman. You beat him the pot with Jack High, and then he gets Jack. Of course. Daniel, Jack High. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it was good. I was going down Jack High in that spot. Okay. So. I believe you. <laughs> Hence the shutdown. <laughs> yeah, I was actually mad when I rooted really the Jack. I was like, oh, that would have been cool if I called <laughs> Jack High. I had every intention of calling the Jack High. <laughs> I've won. Ever? Got I won the table? earlier. Queen Jack. That's it. <laughs> like statistically, I should just luck into some hands. Negrano's World Series vocal resume, of course, missing a main event title. Finished second in the 09 World Series Boca Europe main events and 11th in 2015, the year that Joe McKeon won the tournament. The main event, of course, impossible to win nowadays, but back in the day, Negranu had a few chances in this event as well. He made a few deep runs, fell just short of the final table. Angelov and Bracket added again here. Bracket's going to come along here with his pair of tens, ace kicker. Curious here on the turn, three clubs now. Does this slow Angel off down with five, five of clubs? Because if he bets it in here, if he bets again here, it's going to put Bracket in a little tough spot here. And he fires again. He, nice barrel. Yep. It looks like it's going to work. Very good bet there by Angeloff. Yeah, Angeloff picks it up here. Bracket has to fold this 10 there. And Wall Street Dealer outsider with the $5 donation report. says, like we need a fast banana from Mincy ASAP. If you'll sign up with my sign up code, I'll, I'll yeah, give you a It's a stretch. <laughs> he does look like it. A little, yeah. His yeah. eyes, the eyes. I didn't notice it from here. Shelby Ooh. Wells finds pocket kinks. Waste no time raising it up here to a thousand. Nice dismal flow pulled by Tavaloris uh, dumping the Queen Jack.
Gonna turn into the big line. Gonna defend here with Jack 10 offsuit. Shelby probably happy to get at least one customer. Jack 5 6, potential trouble for Matern. It's a good turn. Wells continuing here for 1500. No spades from Matern. But he is going to come along, of course, with his top pair. Nine on the turn, doesn't change the thing. Did he check all turn? Yeah, he did. Wells, once again, reaching. Bets 3,500. I like the size of the check back over. Matern going to call once more. If Shelby fires again on the river on a unconnected card, which this is not, so my theory out the window here. Curious, is she going to go thin value? She does have the king of fades, but she goes check here. And yeah. She's going to turn over a winner. Goes check check. She shows kings and rakes in the pot. And it looks as though we have another update here from Jeff Platt out in the field. Jeff, what do you got for us? All right, she finished fourth in the Seniors Championship. Let's chat with Shannon Fahey for a sec. Stand up for me, please, right this way. First of all, tell me about that run in that tournament to finish in fourth for a cool 270K. Oh, that was a fun tournament. <laughs> yeah, I bet. That was a fun tournament. I um, went deep on day 1A and busted after dinner and said I have to take another shot at it. Came back and um, just kind of played an even game. It was middle chip stack, like most of the bag middle most of the days, and had a really great run the last two days. And now it's the World Series of Poker main event, your first yes. main event. What's it been like so far? Um, I've been playing very nitty. <laughs> so, <laughs> Early day one? Yes. Um, it's been fun, though. I kind of feel like it's a free roll because it's pre-tax yeah. money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's a great way to look at it. I'm going to send you back to the action so Thank you don't you miss so any much. Thank you very much. Nice meeting you, Shannon. Guys, back to you. Shout out to Shannon Faye, fourth in the, the bargain, Seniors Championship for $269,000. Played a very strong game here. I, I, for you, for I those got that called remember. the drug dealer on national <laughs> TV like three times. I don't know what else I can do. But yeah, the seniors event uh, on the stream was hilarious. We had so many massive pots. Dan Highmiller spicing it up. <laughs> if you missed that, it's available on Poker Go on YouTube for free. And uh, Graham Bennett, coming with some heat, sending the $5 Aussie donation, saying, Dnex did win the World Series of Poker APAC main event in Melbourne. How could I have forgotten about Negreanu's most recent bracelet win? Of course, the Australia World Series of Poker Series. RIP, that's no longer a thing, sadly. But I do miss the action in Australia. Aussie Millions has not been on the schedule for the last few years. Because it's COVID. Yeah, I hope I hope it's going to come back at some point. That's the one that's been on my bucket list because it's always during the Australian Open in tennis too, and that's a January okay, summer over there, yep. right? Yeah, yeah. I went to Aussie Millions for I think four or five years in a row. Fantastic. Always went to the tennis. Saw Leighton Hewitt play. Oh wow, it was a pretty cool experience. Yeah. Highly recommend huh? if like they ever bring it back. I don't care. Eight hundred. That was your guess. Where, where's your favorite place you've been to see play poker? Or you don't get a hundred guesses. Oh, I, I want to say <laughs> Australia, probably. Melbourne is probably my number one place. And then. Uh, well, you can't. You already had, you already shot your load. Prague is way up there. Barcelona, London. You, you can't know. <laughs> I've been to Johannesburg, which in and of itself wasn't that exciting, but I got to go to Cape Town on the same trip. One of the coolest places I've ever been to. Shout out to the World Poker Tour for bringing me to Cape Town back in, I want to say, 2014. Heck yeah, that's amazing. It's been, it's been one heck of a ride. It sounds like it. The one that is on my list is random is I want to go to Vietnam. Oh, yeah. I want to go play on that. I think that would be good. Just to sell some action and play the Triton series. Yeah. <laughs> but it's still a lot of action. But, uh... Meanwhile, Rosen here, 65%, or sorry, 80% equity with 6-5, has a pair, an open and a straight draw. Shelby Wells, though, she has the aggression. 3,700 is the bet. Oh, 
That'll be what uh, takes it down. Got got him off uh, bottom pair in the open and straight draw there. Nice bet. Donnie Peters, meanwhile, playing the main event today. And that means we have to have another expert here in the booth, Mr. Sean D, back from dinner. Yeah, had a great dinner um, with some people, and now I'm here to uh, watch some great poker. Did you have some plain lettuce with some water? I had, we went to Binion Steakhouse, so I had Brussels sprouts, steak, and uh, some bacon. Uh, fuck, fuck with the nice. a little bit. Nutritious. I think I'm making like a gang. Sean D, ball. back in the booth. If you're just tuning Different in, my name is Ren Barinkama. Ben Mintz here as well. We got Daniel Negrano on our feature table, and Sean Deep is here to tell us how terrible everyone's playing because that was sort of the theme on our last stream. Yeah, I mean, I call it like I see it. You know, I'm not going to hold any punches back. I love it. Big fan. Getting some numbers here from our insiders. Over 3,000 players on day 1C so far. That's perfect. I've been predicting over 10,000, and usually day 1D is combined with 1A, B, and C. No, I actually so didn't I think we're going to definitely clear 10K. Hopefully, just day sees two it. And then orders more levels. from me. <laughs> yeah, day 1D last year had a 4,370 players. We manufactured for. There's some other really good ones too, but it's going to be a fun set. sweat. Bad board for both hands and both What's ranges. The, well, good for the, the button range, not so good for the big line range. Did you use Delta 8 at all, or did you go straight to 9? Uh, I prefer the 9, you prefer nine. but yeah. it's, it's gotten so saturated that last month they just started closing some down. Really? Yeah, it's, it's insane. It's in like, two little towns of like 16,000 people up in seven. It's, I mean, I, I, mean, it's I good. enjoy it, but it's... It's good margins, though, and I wish it, I wish they would change that. People are greedy in the industry, but, like, you're seeing stuff that costs me $3, winds up retailing at 60 and I'm like, what the hell? The price, like, prices are dropping to the floor, yeah. at least to the bottom right now for... Well, for the, the first time ever, too, you're seeing CBDB... So, Angelo up here is just betting because, you know, to nine. opponent check, the three that pot, so he has some like check folds on that board, and, you know, he really isn't betting his hand, just kind of the board deck shit. Just understanding the science and creating... Yeah, Angelo has been... I was wondering how... Probably one of the more clever players we've seen so far, Mintz. Taking stabs in a lot of places, winning a lot of smaller pots. I like the way he played the that turn barrel, Bob. Because also there's ways around like 3% Delta 9 TSC. Racking on base 10. How big is the gut? If you have a 10 gram gummy, you But it would be better if everything just got brought into the under the clear. Just regulate everything properly, test everything properly, like do it the right way. It's a very interesting table. It's hard. Yeah, I gotta say. We've had lots of talks about drugs, mushrooms, and uh, Mr. Schwarman here. I was going to say, Daniel looks like he's so excited. <laughs> he's actually, he's, uh, he's, he's been chatty. He's been really chatty, yeah. He's uh, not been able to win any significant hands. You'll probably see he's it. Still hovering about half starting stack. 26 or 30. Not in a presidential year, but 26 or 30. I think it'll get descheduled. It looks like he's considering what tournament's one. next on the schedule. I'm sorry? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, that's an absolute I mean, joke. putting it in the same category. Mintz is a specialist when it comes joke. to half starting stack in the main, so. Maybe you have some advice. Yeah, maybe we'll give some coaching <laughs> if he bags this amount. He'll know exactly what it feels like. A uh, shout out to Dale in the chat with a five dollar donation, saying steam room and a third coffee for Dnex on day one. Amanda feel better soon. Apollo and Rocky get some rest and make Mama feel better. Apparently in reference to Negrano's vlog. I guess he's not being wearing a Rocky well. shirt. Sorry. And his dogs, of course, named Apollo and Rocky. But yeah, I haven't been, I haven't had time to catch up on the Negrano vlogs, but. Um, if you guys in the chat have, please let us know if the runner was doing all right. He's going so out this is one of those spots where if Daniel open raised, he wouldn't have gotten three bet by the 5-4 suited, but because he limped, now he's getting iso by hand that, you know, it's going to be difficult for him to put his opponent on 5-4 suited. He might try to bluff some of the low boards into him. Yeah, Matern has been getting creative. Earlier we saw him isolate with 6-4 suited, but the runner did a similar thing. Now with 5-4 suited trying it again. Shelby Wells, one of our more active players. She's won the most hands so far at the table. She's won nine of 39 hands, as we can see on our stats screen here. Negrano is going to come along, so we're going to get interesting three-way action. Both Negrano and Wells not going to give him a turn credit for the hands that he has. Yeah, so he has you know good ability on some boards. This is not one of them. 
Massage is ended too. Yeah, if Shelby's been active, this is just the board, just always bet. You know, Jack Hyde not showed out. Great equity with the opening straight draw, backdoor clubs. She goes real, real small here. What about the uh, Yeah, she bet 25%. I think you, this is a board you should go a little bigger. Daniel's going to peel. And this is one of the hands that she bet you know, a little bit bigger. He's definitely folding. I mean, Matern has the backdoor straight flush draw. How can you fold that? Yeah, but it's all low end stuff. <laughs> it's not good. Turn card to seven of spades. Wow. Shelby Wells makes the straight. That's right, too. Daniel might consider bluffing this card. 3,500. Like clockwork. Shelby thinks about what Daniel has calling here is best, but a lot of people tend to just raise when they have the nuts in the main event. They want to protect, but Daniel usually doesn't have too many hands actually picked up equity unless he turns spades like with queen jack of spades or something. So like if he has a 10, he's just always going to bet the river, so there's no reason not to call. Well, it's going to come with raise, 8,500. The Grano folds and Shelby Wells picks up this hand. I feel like Sean on that four court straight board, you know, she's raising like Hope and Daniel also has a 10 because he's repping it, but you, you think that's probably a bad thing. Yeah, if he has a 10, he's still going to bet the river. So there's no, like, you by calling, you also get value from the bluffs like Daniel had. And so if he's turning into a bluff, and he's like, oh, maybe she has a set, she's trying to let the board pair, he might bet really big on the river. Or if, you know, if he has a 10, he's going to feel more confident about it. So he's going to bet a large percentage of the stack and stack off. But the calling you get value from hands besides 10x, raising only gets value versus 10x. Shout out to our man, Jimmy Bluffett, in the chat, gifting 20 go, 20 PokeGo YouTube community memberships on YouTube. Thank you so much. Jimmy Bluffett, I hope your dad is recovering. I know he's battling illness. Jimmy Buffett's always in the space of the streets with us, so always appreciate talking to him. Great member of the community. Yeah, big legends. Was out here earlier. Angela raising it up with Ace King. Rosen got a little creative earlier, three betting with the Queen Five suited on the button. Right now. He's going to try to see a floppy with eight, eight deuce of spades. Joining us on YouTube, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Let's see if we can pick up 500 more subs today. If you're not subbed to us on YouTube, you're missing out on daily clips and highlights. We've got some more streams coming from the main event as well. Sean, what a, what a different vibe from that final table we had earlier. We had we had a hard battle for the bracelet. We had a fa pretty fast structure. We got Sam Soverell in the mix, and now all of a sudden we're back to this. I think people often don't realize how much of a grind the main event is. Yeah, it's just day one. You know, you're super deep. Yeah, Everyone wants weird. to make it through the but day. Just not you're not even close to making the money. You're not even close to the bracelet. It's just a different vibe. And you know, 40 minute clock to two hour clock. It just shows you the different stage of tournaments where some players are so much better than others because you know this well, nine-handed is so different than playing four or five-handed with ICM considerations and challenge stacks where every decision you make 
is so much more important card because up the on. chips you lose is a lot more. Yeah. We got um, three cards here. Is that use? A player like yourself, at what point is it going to become interesting to register on day two? Because I feel as though the event is so long, it, it, it's pretty fatiguing to play for 10 to 12 days straight. You still have 60 bigs if you register on day two. I've been playing for 32 days straight. That's why another 10 is anything to make. Yeah. I'm obviously, I'm a different beast when it comes to longevity and stamina. Of I, poker tournaments I, series, but but I, I, I think people are in here. If you're in the, two, in the zone and people are, you know, playing scared on day one, as a no good man. winning player, you're just going to accumulate so many chips and have more leverage for, for the later <laughs> blind levels where you can do a lot more creative things where you, you know, can bust people. Like, covering, you know, most tournaments it doesn't matter when you cover people that much early, but a lot of them are re-entry, but this being freeze out being once a year, people really care about busting the main, so you see some crazy folds in the main that people would not take in normal tournaments because, in general, people are bluff raising rivers and bluffing a lot less, so the big bets tend to get respect. Yeah, it's very interesting. But we still are going to see lots of people enter on day two. Of course, everyone hoping the record will be broken this year of biggest main event. Every, everything is pointing towards that happening. Now the question is going to be, how much are we going to break the record by? I've been saying over 10K. I think you're on the same team, Sean. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, seeing the numbers today, reg is still open today. A few more people will trickle in. All the people are going to come tomorrow, all the day two regs. When people come tomorrow and see how long the lines are inside, I'll just come in on day two. I think, you know, we could even get to 11. Like, wow. It, it's not surprising, and it's only going to get bigger and bigger each year. Tell you what else, you mentioned the day two regging, which is kind of Who's a common thing now. France? Was it you? I mean, the fact that you have yeah, that you Saturday day two, you club? might have a bunch of oh, people yeah, kind of yeah. show yeah. up just to roll in on uh, Saturday. Yeah, yeah it was, that that was, was a great people club. Have real yeah, jobs that yeah, come on the weekend and can't be out here for, you know, three, four days. So they're going to show up on day two B and then just, you know, all right, sweet, I play a seven-day tournament. If I'm in, I'm in the money tomorrow. It shut down. Yeah, but it's not the same one, but you have like plenty of clubs right now in the Champs-Élysées in Paris. More rooms? Huh? Wait, more card rooms? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, I was there the night, uh, it was one year France qualified for World Cup. I came out at like 2 a.m. and oh. was, the streets were so insane. I was like, all right, I'll go back in and play some more. Oh, yeah, yeah. Came out at 6 a.m. and the streets were still nuts. And I was like, uh, okay, I'm going on. Ace, five, ten, two spades on this flop. Rigolo flopping top pair. Angeloff catching a bit of this flop as well. Action goes check, check. Pot staying small so far. Yeah, I kind of like a bet from the A6 suit when check two on that board. I know you don't love your kicker and got back to a flush draw, but here's the check. They're usually playing on the check calling. A lot of tens, Dutch has straight draws, some pocket pairs, and I'd rather just bet flop and check turn if I want to play a two street game. Two third spot here from Rigolo on the turn. I think it's kind of a razor fold spot for Angelo. If you think your opponent has the type of hand he does, sure raising do like, gets I'm a fold a lot. You, stop, stop, stop. But if I'm in a hand, can you just try to remember not to Wait, bounce your knee that. like that? Just because it like bounces. Is it hitting you? No, no, no. What yeah. happens is, because look at the floor. I'm like literally. Check race to 8,000. I'm sure you're a fan, Sean. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I think this is the way to continue. You commit the guy, he calls, you know, you got pot size bet for the river. And it's really tough to, you know, call off in the main event with one pair. Dude, it's like I'm literally like. So now Angelov is setting himself up for a big move on the river. Three of spades comes in. How much does the spade change things here? Um, I think the guy back on the turn, very unlikely to have spades. He puts Rigolo all in. The Frenchman deciding for his tournament life with a six. I like his style. This, this is great. 
I mean, I don't, this is such a brutally hard call to make with A6 and a spade. Yeah, this is uh, one of those situations where knowing a bit more about your opponent is definitely helpful. <laughs> but it just it just screams strength to me. Thinking back of the flop action here, Angelov raised before the flop and then decides to check and take this line. How do you assess his range given that uh, specific approach, Sean? It becomes a lot more polarized. Um, so, you know, a6, he could be turning queens or jacks into a bluff are perfectly reasonable candidates. The 10 jack, 10, queen 10, you know, very rarely he's going to turn king queen or king jack into a bluff. And, you know, he did open somewhat early position on Daniel's big blind. So his range is not super, super wide. It's not like there's a fish in the blinds he's trying to play a pot with. But, you know, I think when you kind of call this turn, you got to kind of have a plan for the river to call off a lot of the time. Because I don't think people who take this line, check, 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 raise, are going to give up on a river. And there's not too many spade combos actually on this board. Like, I don't think King Jack or King Queen of Spades are going to bluff. 10 9 of Spades probably bets the flop a lot. So, if he thinks about the fact that Spades got there and the guy's still shoved, maybe he'll realize there probably is over bluffing. Yeah, as the initial raiser, the spade almost seems insignificant because he would continue almost all of his spades in the flop, right? Yeah. Walk it's been two and a half minutes. Angelov calls the clock on his opponent. Clock on feature table. I think that's a kind of early clock. That makes me want to lean towards calling more. My opponent's usually uncomfortable, and they just want to move on Put with his hand and either get called or. <laughs> How is there not a floor for the feature? <laughs> Haven't needed any clock calls so far in all the hours we've watched the main event this year. Action's been really fast, but of course, deciding for your tournament <laughs> life, things change a whole lot. Player All right. Thanks for coming. Sorry. Both alone. All right, Rigolo lays it down, and Angelo picks up the pot here. Thank well you. done, sir. Can your site direct buy people into the event now? Because you have a partnership. Yeah. So just, like, if someone wins a satellite on your site, can yeah. you guys direct ready? Quite the full, I guess. Bush? Yeah. Bush? Yeah. 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 Ye
So yeah, it's just a reasonable fold to make. It's just, you know, unfortunate when you're chopping, but it's tough to know. The Brigolo are short stack with 42 big blinds. The Granu now on the 69 big blinds. Nice. You're one of those guys who always takes that spot. <laughs> I have to. I'm just waiting for Shelby Wells to get up to 420 big blinds. <laughs> What's your favorite song, Sean? Um, Ghetto Cowboy is like one of the three songs I like. What are the other two? I'm curious. Um, Paper Airplanes. And I'm going to look. That's a classic. Third one. Maybe Happy Birthday Song. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Nice little flop for Daniel here, but tough to get paid off. He decides to lay the trap in. Negrano with top trips. I would have liked a little bet there. There's some hands that are going to fold out that are better equity. King Queens, some ace highs. Daniel, 75% pot bet here because of how draw heavy this is, I would think. Yeah. But he has the ace of clubs, so it reduces his flush draw combos a lot. Bracket decides to let go of this one. <laughs> yeah, finally a hand to get some value there for Negrano. Gets very little. Looks like we're going to go back to Mr. Jeff Platt in the field. Let's see who he found. Let's see what the story is. Always curious to hear more from the best dressed man at the horseshoe tonight. Minutes. All right, out here in the Horseshoe Event Center, I want to introduce you all to Cody Pavlak. Cody, stand up for me, please. A random question for yes, you. Yes. How many horses do you have in this World Series of Poker main event? I believe a bit over 20. A bit over 20. So yes. many can't keep track, yeah? Yeah, I know. I have a spreadsheet at home uh, that's got them all on a name list. This, so. this, this <laughs> is quite remarkable to me. How, how do you go through what, what's your selection process how do you add a horse to the stable oh uh, well essentially i uh, listed the action so okay. i sold about 50 percent of my action and sold out within about uh, 28 hours online on twitter so basically i have uh 50 sold and the rest of the people there so uh, all on twitter so would they call you your horse? I would I would assume that, yes. Okay, so, so you did not buy in 20 people into the main no, event, no, like no, I no. assumed from the phrasing of the 20-plus yes, horses. Yes, that might have been backers. You have 20-plus backers. Yes, that is correct. Yes. <laughs> just a <laughs> bit of confusion there. That's all right. guy just puts up 200K like it's no big yeah, deal. Yeah, that would be um, how's your main event going so far? Uh, pretty good. I probably uh, shouldn't even be here right now. I already ran kings into aces, so uh, oh, I, think I, I think I lost the minimum on that. So yeah. Okay, and, well, best uh, of luck to you yeah. and your backers as I send you backers. back to the action. Yes, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. That you're their horse. Yes. I Got am it. Their horse. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Best of luck. Perfect. Thanks, Cody. Thank Appreciate you. it. Nice meeting you. I mean, backers, horses, it's all the same thing. Sean, how many horses do you have in the main event? Uh, I have pieces of four people, two swaps, and two people I bought in. Well, one I bought in, one I bought action. Nice. One of them already busted, the other one's too lazy to show up. So oh, hopefully wow. it'll show up tomorrow. Damn. If you need a horse to sh that shows up, you know. Now, that was really funny. That was, you know, Jeff was like thinking he found something interesting, and he's like, "Oh, you have 20 backers. Okay, good luck, man." <laughs> that was incredible. 20 people with pieces of the gentleman that we just spoke to. Again, another tough spot. We talked about having one card straight draws, the low end. You know, Daniel doesn't think he's nearly as far ahead as he is. Daniel also only has 29K, so he's got to be careful about chips. I mean, if, you're, if, not, if he thinks he's the best, then he's going to call. Or another time. <laughs> Someone in Pokego chat says, this dude sold off 5K worth of action in 24 hours, and he doesn't even know a backer from a horse. I'm playing the main event every year from now on. <laughs> I mean, if there's ever an event to sell action for and to always play, the main event is definitely the one 
to do so. I feel like the action selling game too. People just get that main event fever before it. <laughs> they can't come, and you get some, some peace by, and that you're not going to get any other time of year. Is basically how I put it. Absolutely. Yeah, but I'm I'm from the old school style that if you can afford this, you should take all yourself. Like, right. if you have more of yourself to swap out later or something else. Like, I know 10k is a lot, but you're only doing it once a year. So if you know if you have a 100k roll. I think you should be taking a lot more of yourself in the main and not selling action. But I'm also a bankroll degen. That's part of how I end up the way I did, you know. So don't don't do what I did all the years ago. But I think the main is it's a perfectly fine time to take a shot because if you're a good player and you're deep and you know some people, you're gonna swap a percent or two here. Maybe get all into the flip for someone you swap five or ten percent. So like, there's a lot of opportunities to you know get that equity out later when it's a little bit higher. <laughs> Returning a race to get up to 1100. Angeloff coming with a three bet with King Queen off from the small blind. See that stack of yours, please. Yeah. Angeloff's playing some damn good poker. He just I seems the most comfortable, and he knows that people are afraid on stream, you know, so people are going to play a little bit tighter. The few times I've been at features in the main, I know people tend to not want to get stacked and aren't going to hero call as much. Um, so I think if you have that awareness, you might go for it a little bit harder in a spot. Matern is right around starting stack, but also the third biggest stack at this table. Shelby Wells and Boris Angelov have been winning the majority of the hands here so far. Uh, Sean, speaking of your poor bankroll management that you just referenced, what was what was what was the craziest decision you've ever made as far as buying into an event in relation to your bankroll? So there was about three times in my career when I was 18 or 19 playing Poker Stars. One of them I remember was a W Coop 1K limit hold'em. I bought in with part of, uh, with points because my account was all in. <laughs> I had two other times where my account was all in from the tournament that day, and both days I won the 10 rebuy at the end of the session with 10 or 12K. So I had uh, multiple times that my account was all in, and uh, thankfully I won those tournaments when I was down to a few tables. And uh, yeah, even at one point in my career, I was staking a bunch of people in the Waffle Crush days, and we had lost so much money backing going to the World Series that I actually picked up backing from uh, Cliff Josephy and Eric Haber, aka Backs and Sheets, and called them up. They offered me a backing deal that day, and I kept using my money to back my horses, and I went for them. And later that month, I had my three biggest online scores at the time, my first figure, first six-figure scores. So I made them a couple hundred thousand real quick and had a good deal, and I was with them for maybe four to six months. And it was, you know, I realized, okay, this is really stupid. I'm going back on my own. Was it also the realization to stop backing as many players? So this is one of my sad, dumb, young stories. Um, so we knew about makeup then. For those who don't know, makeup is what you owe a backer of previous buy-ins. And we thought our horses were so good we could never lose that we just gave them expiring makeup for the World Series the next year. Okay. So part of the reason we went all in that series is most of our horses' makeup was going to expire by the end of the series. Mm. And we had some good horses like uh, David Bakes Baker, John Aguiar, uh, Ray Coburn, uh, Brad Augsburger. We had a like, bunch of really good players. And all our horses had expired makeup, so it was all going to die. And so, yeah, we just kind of let it go and end up losing a bunch of money. And Dirt picked up a lot of our horses. And I know Bakes had a big score for him. Aguirre had a big score for him right away. And so, oh, Carter King was on there. And then Carter went to Bax and Cheats, won a million dollars online or something crazy and won the big Sunday million. So it was pretty brutal. Um, yeah, but that's kind of what you do when you're 22, 23 years old. Making too much money, not really is the variance or bankroll needed to be putting horses in 5, 10K, 15K live events. Or we just and our horses did really badly. And they were good horses. Many of them were still in poker or became big winners after that. We just didn't have All the right. bankroll. Tournament the dealers variance. in the main event. Complete the hand your own. Send the players on a 75 minute dinner break. 75 minute dinner break. All main event players. Of course, as you know, we are not going on dinner break. We're going to cut out the entire dinner break to uh, keep you guys enjoying the action here with Negreanu on the feature table. He's got a lot of work to do, though, down to just 25K. Yeah, I got to go get some vegan food and power up. Yeah, I eat some mushrooms. Maybe Schwarman has brought some. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sounds as though we're on the final hand of this level. Oh, players, once you're finished, <laughs> you're some of those. Please exit the area and get it cleaned up for round four. Just think Riverbed here. 
Again, 75 minutes. Not dinner too many break. hands can call you. Dan's going to possibly try to bluff with the eight. Ron definitely giving it some thought here. His instincts are starting yeah, to be done there. Wells folds as well, and Rigolo wins a very important hand. He was down to very few chips, still one of the short stacks, but still in the hunt. We're going to go to a quick interview with uh, two old friends of yours, Mincy. On the uh, flip side of the interview, we'll be back with more coverage of this Negrano feature table. Get yourself a new drink, perhaps grab some chips, whatever you need. We'll be back in about three minutes. <laughs> All right, dinner break at the World Series of Poker main event. Barstool Nate is Hi. here. You having a fun day one? It seems like the energy vibes are, are really there. I'll tell you what. I'm having a yeah. very fun time at my table. We have a good, fun, lively okay. table. Okay, good. I'm getting my ass kicked. Mm. I, I, I'm not going to go through the, the coolers and the bad beats. Nobody yeah, cares. Don't, Nobody yeah. cares because, you know, we're so blessed to be here in Vegas and playing the main good event. Attitude. This is when I have to say really good things about everybody so they sure. replay it over. Sure. And I saw what that guy did. He was like all the hardworking people at Poker Go and behind the scenes. I love you guys. So that's what I'm going to do and not talk about how miserable uh, the tournament's been so far. But I have 23K. We agreed starting was actually 20K this year. So I've made chips at dinner. Which I, do, is, I do actually think, no, I do actually. What was starting stack? 60, 60? 20, 20, no, 20, it, 20. It, it, Starting stack was 60K. 20, but, 20. but can you believe that we're giving you the focus? We're giving, well, there you go. Thank you. I hope Josh pays me for that. He will. Okay. Josh, he, notoriously not cheap. Okay. By the way, you know, Brent Hank suggested that we do this interview so you could have the, the spotlight. Smitty, Smitty is here as well. Smitty might have more chips than I do right now. Smitty, your thoughts on I Nate's... I think I do have uh, chip lean in this ring event right now. <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> Smitty, Nate is a... No, hold on. We have, we have Mincy going feature table playing zero hands for six hours. Yeah. We, then we have him in the booth today. You're winning bracelets and rings left and right. And I'm just getting dicked by, like, the French man, who's very nice, by the way, but just absolutely ramming my asshole. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with it. How many feature tables have you been on throughout your World Series of Poker main event career? It's a really good question, yeah. Jeff. Uh, I've been on zero. Been on zero. zero. Okay. Do you think you'll make it one perhaps later this evening? No. No, I don't, no, I don't think I don't. you will no, either. I don't. No, I don't. They'll find someone in the gutter. They'll be like, that's a better guy for the feature table than Barstool Nate. Do you want to at least wish Smitty best of luck while he's here, while you're here, while everybody's here? Smitty's playing tomorrow. Yeah. He'll probably bag like 240. Probably, yeah. And I'll be on a flight, hopefully into the mountains, but <laughs> maybe back to New York. I'm not sure yet. Uh, I wish you both the best of luck, and thank you very much for a taking the dog in the fight. Come on. Make a comeback. We are just somebody. We're just so blessed to be here playing uh, the main event. Again, yeah. We really, truly yeah, are. Yeah. I didn't even think. I, so here's something that people don't know. You hurt it's, your foot. I actually we know, broke we my know, foot. Yeah, we know, we know you hurt I'm your foot. I'm not even supposed to be here. Right. By and the grace of God, I was able to sit at a table with a broken foot. Yep. By the grace of the Lord himself. Very so blessed. So I'm very happy okay. to be here. Yep, let's wrap it up. Back okay. to you in the truck. Yep, that was great. Thank you. A big circular white. All right, Barstool Nate, right. as always. <laughs> as always entertaining here. Sounds just a little bit jealous of the Mincy action. A little bit jealous, yeah. Also doesn't have the the seat at the feature table, of course. You know, it was between him and Negranu. Yeah, they're about the same height, so it <laughs> seems like a fair swap. They have about the same chip stack. Yeah, Negranu, you know, about a third starting stack here, ace eight of hearts, oh. raising it up to 1,200. I mean, th th there has to be nothing more frustrating than coming into the main, not being able to make anything happen, knowing that you know you have these people outclassed for the most part. Nah, eh, it happens. It's poker brain. It's like it's ten thousand people. Doesn't matter if you're top hundred; like you're still gonna win First it. Hand. You know, yep. One out of three or four thousand times, or two thousand times, whatever it is. It's still a crazy, crazy amount. Yeah. A little way. <laughs> We're gonna see four-way action here. Blinds are up to 300, 500 with a 500 big blind ante. Yeah. Ace, queen, four on the flop, and the random kicker for Matt turn. So uh, <laughs> we get to play what is that card game. That yeah. Makes it a bit more exciting here to figure this hand out. First hand? Yeah. You just missed two keys. All right, thanks. So we just skipped the dinner break. We cut it out for you guys uh, to make this evening more enjoyable. We've got four more hours of feature table streaming coming up. High queens once. A turn with at least an ace. A 
suited Ace of Diamonds, of course. It could be Ace Queen off, could be Ace Jack off, Ace 10 off. Daniel's not too happy by that call four ways. He knows he could definitely be outkicked here. He's really hoping to turn a harder an eight. But turn, of course, could have a smaller ace with two diamonds. And then this clo this turn card would also be great for him. Yeah, pretty much there's not a handy flat spree that this is bad for. Um, now Daniel's in a lot of trouble. Um, uh, you know, even the ace deuces, the small ace of the ace wheels have a lot of equity to chop with a four king or queen or diamond. The ground does decide to check. My John Goodman call is correct. I can't see yeah. I can't unsee it. No, no, I, th I, I do see it. <clears throat> Daniel's praying for a check back here. Yeah, I was going to say, is this like a check full territory almost? It's not amazing of a spot. Your opponent bets here. I usually lean towards folding because sometimes he has king queen or jack 10 that also got there. And, you know, usually expect them to check back. And Daniel being having these hearts, he knows if he has an ace, it's either ace spades or ace of diamonds. Yep, he lets it go. This one fold there by Negranu. Let's see if we get to see my turns card at the he end kept there. Swiping over oh. the reader. Maybe but I'm going to say Daniel was beat. For that guy to bet 60% on the turn. I think he had ace queen or ace king or ace jack of diamonds, something where Daniel's in a world of hurt. So I think he's going to be, if he knows he has ace of diamonds, he's happy folding. Negrano staying disciplined here, down to 50, just shy of 50 big blinds. And now the table short stack, which is never fun because anyone at the table can knock you out, which is very ominous. But, you know, Daniel, like me, if he busts the main event, he's like, cool, I'll get a few days off, get to rest for the next week or two of post limbs, and you know, try to win the 25k horse or something else out here. Yeah, it's weird. You know, back in the day when I started covering the World Series of Poker, the main event was the last tournament of the summer. As the event went on, it got sort of quiet and dark in all these rooms, and I sort of liked it. Uh, but now, of course, we have a lot of post-limb events, which in a way make a bit of sense if players make a little bit of a run or don't make a little bit of a run. They got some more events to play on their trip to Las Vegas. Um, how do you feel about it, Sean? Um, I think post limbs are a necessary thing. People are going to stay in town. Your friend's still deep in the main. Why not throw them out there? Um, I think there's a few too many. I think it should wrap up a few days before the main does. I think, you know, when the main gets on like 27 people, I think it should just be the main to focus on. So you're not worried about other events or other people winning bracelets. But, you know, I get it. And they're business after all. I think we're going to see Negrano all in here. I mean, it's really early position. It's kind of fold or jam. But I think Daniel off this deck is just like, whatever, man. If you got ace, queen, beat, cool. I mean, on Noma turn, really picking on the Groner. This is the <coughs> third time he's three bet him, and we've only been broadcasting for two hours. Action back around to Negrano. We saw Angelov fold pocket eights. And I think if Daniel jams, I think ace, queen off is a reasonable hand to consider folding. This would be massive for Daniel to, uh, you know, get a full pre where they're pretty much chopping a huge percentage of the time. Let's go. Negrano folds and potentially seeing the same from bracket here with pocket fours. Yeah, I don't like this flat when Daniel's so short with the whole table behind. I know you're trying to set mine a lot in the main, but you're calling, you know, two, three percent of your stack here. Just let it go. There's gonna be better spots, better players to call try to set mine against the Negrano when he's short. being truthful on the fence about shoving as he said if you're just tuning in they won't see the main event we're having the Grinders table on here for as long as he's in the tournament and uh, it sounds weird to say because 
you always expect someone of his caliber to at least make day two. But as you can tell, nothing has been going his way so far. Yeah, but the main event is the type of tournament someone like Daniel is going to be more aggressive and take some spots and, you know, feel wonder if people are just picking on him, trying to play a pot with him in the main event. It's a very weird dynamic being a known player against a bunch of unknowns you don't know their poker history, or are they just trying to run a bluff versus Daniel on stream and then be able to, you know, tell their friends, look at me, I'm a great poker player, I've played one of the best in the world. Yeah, absolutely. And it's always brutal when you're this short, you know, going this multi-way every hand. You can't really see that, you have to make a hand to continue. Very tight fold by Rose in there with King Jack off. Deuce, 9-3 on the flop here. Top set for Negranu. <laughs> now, now it's a matter of finding some value. Yeah, you know, when you flop a set, you kind of wish there's a little more on the board than the deuce of three rainbow. So he's checking, hoping people catch up. Maybe they bluff their pocket pairs. They're not bluff, but value better protect. Shelby picks up a gut shot. Okay. Still not a whole lot out there. Negranu just checking to see if someone wants to throw a few chips out there. Shelby can't contain herself. That is 1800. It's a good candidate to bet with. Uh, Daniel's just thinking, how much can I get out of the king? How much do I raise? Just want to be able to get it all in on the river, possibly. She bet kind of small. Raise so Daniel's doing one of those live pro tricks uh, by raising exactly 5k. It's just one chip for her to call. So psychologically, it's easier it. for her to flick it in. What's that? Nothing. <laughs> you wanted to what? Rip it. Did you have it? I wish you ripped it. <laughs> At any point, rip it. <laughs> I wish you had a king. You didn't have a king, did you? No. Oh, you're dead. Damn. I wanted you to have a king. Uh, Daniel, if she didn't have a king, she probably had equity. She was not dead. <laughs> You're smart I to know that. I wish you had a set, actually. If you had a set, I could beat a set. Unfortunately. Toronto finally wins nada. one. <laughs> she had She was pretending. I was pretending. <laughs> he didn't pretend. You pretended. Somebody pretended. <laughs> In that spot with you know, Shelby having some equity going to the river, are you more of a fan of checking, ba checking back there? Or are you totally No, I, I like betting. You like the bet? Yeah. Daniel's going to fold ace highs, flatting kings, king x, you know, king queen, king jack, king ten suited. There's a lot of hands that are definitely going to uh, connect on that turn. And so with a gut shot, perfectly reasonable bet. 1,100. Raise to 1,100. In case you all are new to Shelby Wells, she was the penultimate woman standing in last year's main events, finished in 97th place. I was wondering why I recognized her name. Yeah, like, she's a, a dealer originally from Louisiana, from New Orleans, now a uh, now living in southern in Indiana. Great story last year during her deep run. Take a step here. Sure. Looks like he thought he picked something up that Rosen seemed happy with that turn card. So it looks like he's going to check fold and save his chips for a better spot. It is 1600. The ground does let it go. Uh, in case you're new to PokerGo.com, please know that the remainder of the main event, starting on day two, <laughs> is going to be on oh, PokerGo.com exclusively. Yeah. Do it. Use promo code DREAM30 no, I just don't know why I to bet save $30 on you. your annual subscription. Huh? I said I don't know why I bet oh, there. That was the problem. Oh. I was never and once you did, you're like, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what you, well, you did write to not myself to yeah. just since I was weak, and that's why you write. Well, well, yeah, but if it goes thing. through, oh, what a great bet. I was going to say, yeah, maybe <laughs> yeah, this is the only way to win. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry to see what you're talking about. Yeah, good discipline, you didn't compound the problem. Right. Sometimes people get in there, they stick the their foot yeah. in the bear yeah. trap, and then they try to keep 
what do you call it? Pulling their way out of it, and yeah. it only makes it worse. She did good to get out of the trap. Drawing dead. Obviously. Mm, get a gut shot? Well, then never mind. I'm glad I raised here. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, I know what could happen. I'm dead. She hits it. Out the door. I was just going to finish my story and say, if you are an annual subscriber to PokeGo, you're automatically entered into our raffle to play in the season-ending PGT Championship Million Dollar Free Roll. 500k up for grabs for the winner in that event. And uh, you might get a chance to play against Sean Deep. You only have to be top 40 in the PGT standings. <laughs> yeah, I actually almost snuck in last year. Um, I had three-thirds in high no-limit events that counted, and I think I was like within five or so of qualifying. And I went to play the win. I knew if I had a nice score, I would have got in. Sure. This year, there's two mixed game and two PLO series. I was only a player of the mixed game. I won one of them. So it's always a possibility, but probably not this year. I've not done well in the high buy-ins at Vegas in the World Series. So who knows? I mean, I know if you found table to main, you can get into. But yeah, it's not my ideal event. I play against all the guys who grind Aria every day and girls. Right. Um, they're much better than me at No Limit. So yeah, it's not really a big goal of mine to get in there. It's still pretty dope, though, that there's a million dollar free roll out there for the players no, it's on those it's, standings. It's, it's amazing. I, I hope, uh, you know, Caesars takes note and says if Arya can put this on with events with 1% of the field sizes in Rake, maybe you should do the same thing. Um, you know, I've had many discussions and we did the podcast where I talked about, you know, what player of the year could be or should be, I think, and hopefully at some point. Whoever's in charge of the World Series recognizes how valuable it is for the players. And everyone. Nice little value here. Calls with the better kicker. We have that million dollars put up by Poker Go, so pretty insane to have such a large free roll to close out the year. Three annual subscribers will be added to the field there to play versus the 40 best players in the world, which is kind of a cool experience. Not the 40 of the best, 40 of the top 50. <laughs> 40 of the most successful players of the year. Yeah, which, well, if you're running good, you're usually playing good, you have a little confidence. Uh, it's not an easy term, especially it's winner take all, but at least you don't have ICM considerations. No, no, it's, it's, it's a million it's, it's million dollar prize pool, 500k for first. Oh, they switch it this and then, year. And then they have a few more pairs. Oh, okay, because yeah. yeah, last year it was just a winner take all. So yeah. I'm not up to date, obviously I'm not. Uh, the high roller scene. So if you're if you're top 50 with two months to go, you might be still not gonna. No, <laughs> not gonna chase it. Nah, because don't you get as many chips as your like points or something? So it's not an equal stack for all top 40, correct? Uh, that's correct. Yeah. So like if I squeak in 38, and then you know I have one tenth the stack of oh. Alex Fox in, you know I can only do so much with it. So <laughs> not gonna really. Uh, distract my schedule for that. And I kind of have a million dollar free roll effectively myself going right now. That's a little higher priority. More French on French action here. Matern versus Rigolo. We've seen this before. Matern not on the winning end the last time we saw this. In case you're uh, trying to be hip and cool and stay up to date on all the latest, we just created our Poker Go account on Threads, which is supposed to be the new thing that is like the new thing that's kind of like Twitter. So if you're on Threads, which has just launched today, give us a follow on the Poker Go account. We'll be putting some behind the scenes stuff there during the main events. Uh, give me a follow as well. Just Remco Rinkama, my name. You know how yeah, people can spell it. People can spell it. It's not a hard name. It's not as easy as Ben Mintz or Sean D, but hey, I'm also a foreigner. People get my name. You realize how hard my name is? With it, like like deep, like a P? Or? Well, yeah, and also because I am A-U-N. Oh, no yeah, one ever yeah, goes A-U-N. So, right. they, they go S-H-A-W-N more? S-E-A-N is most common. We got, we got another Sean here <laughs> with us. Producer Sean, S-E-A-N also. Okay, two black two Yeah, one of those guys. <laughs> Seen. Yeah. Seen. You're not Sean. Yeah, your parents paid extra for the H. It's a very expensive letter.
action continues here on day 1C of the main event. Tomorrow, we got Phil Helmut's grand entrance. He also will be playing at our feature table. Of course, fresh off of winning his 17th bracelet. Sean, how many more years before you catch him? Uh, every time he wins one, it's another year of my life I have to go chasing him. Um, <laughs> no, I think, you know, with the frequency of them, with the online ones, with some on GG, you know, I, I know some rumblings of some other possible bracelets in the horizon. I think I can average about 1.5 a year from the next 10 years, so I think it'll take me about 10 years to pass him. Wow. It, it's it's going to be exciting to see how the group of guys that you're in, sort of that have four to six bracelets. It's Jeremy Osmus, yeah. Peter. I mean, there's a lot of guys that are playing a lot of volume that are doing really well. And uh, I wonder, you know, when those guys are all going to get to 10, which that's that's when it's going to get serious. Uh, I think we got to get to 15 because Phil's going to win one every about four years. So it it's going to take a little bit to someone passes, you know, Doyle, Ivy, and Chan. It's just crazy that Ivy hasn't won one. Like, that's one of the big shocks to me. Obviously, we know Daniel's drought, uh, but Ivy's been deep in so many ones. Great events for him, big stacks, and just it never seems to go right for him. It's the Ivy, like, immortal level is just not there anymore. Right. And I, I don't know what it is. It's not a slight on his game. He's still, when I played with him, he's been a great player every time. Um, it's just something, you know, there's a killer instinct that happens three, four-handed. We saw that today with Sovereign. He really found all the spots and, you know, gave himself a lot of chips. And even though he went to heads up as a small dog, he was able to, you know, place the pots back and make a couple good hands and was cool. making the right decisions to get the most chips out of his opponent. Yeah, it's very interesting. I believe Ivy goes back to 2014 when he won a $1,500 horse okay. event. That was in Australia, right? No, no, that was in Vegas. That was his last Ivy bracelet, it's the last in the Grand Ooh bracelet in Vegas dates back to 2008. What was the year that he won WSP Australia, like a next event? Uh, I can look that up. But um, I thought that that was his most recent bracelet. I did interview Ivy when he won that one in 2014. I remember that he was talking about you know, how it's been few and far between. I can just look up Ivy's bracelets real quick. Um, but at least you're saying that Ivy is still at least sharp at the table. Like yeah, he, he hasn't lost a step. Yeah, he still still has the most intimidating stare in poker. You you hate when he's at your table, no matter what event it is, especially if you're bluffing, because you even players like me just crumble. Yeah, it was the, uh, yeah, there it is, 2014, the eight game mix, 1500. I was there for that one. That was his last, most recent win. The one in Australia was also a mixed game the year prior, in 2013. Okay. Uh, the was most recent place was, it, in fact, in Australia, 2015, the uh, APAC main event. But yeah, it's been uh, quite a long drought for Mr. Ivy, almost 10 years now. You go to the, the Europe main event. You go to the Europe one, right? Yeah, um, I've gone the last four years. They've ran it. Um, I'm probably going this year. I don't know. It, it might be bad timing. It might be during the Poker Go PLO and Mixed Game Series. Also, some friends are coming to visit in October in New York. So, I don't know. I, I love King's Casino. I um, You know, they're very good to me. I enjoy my time there a lot. But I'm not totally 100% this year, where other, every other year I was 100% at all times. I mean, part of the allure of going to King's is uh, drinking with my friends and <laughs> now I can't do that, so I'm going to be probably a lot less bored and uh, sit in the room a lot more often. Music to the ears of Mr. Negron, oh, Mr. Helmy, that you won't be trying to add another bracelet uh, at the uh, Europe stretch. I mean, I, listen, I said it's a maybe. You know, I, I can easily be convinced, um, and it also depends on how much my wife hates me that week if she wants me to leave town or not. <laughs> oh, man, I feel bad for your wife. Okay, she's getting paid well for dealing with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she has to suffer through almost a whole other year of you potentially being grumpy about being tired and hungry. Well, well, yeah, that that can be bad. Um, <laughs> for sure. I see the realization in your eyes. Yeah, I, I, I was I was on poker. I was not on the weight loss uh, for that comment. I, I was gonna say because there's the the COVID year when we had the late World Series and Europe was right after. I didn't go. And when Julian Martini won two bracelets out there, I go to my wife, I go, 
See this guy? He won two bracelets there. I should have been there. They are easy bracelets to win. You just got to be spazzy, re-entry. You know, the PLO is great, the main event. And then, obviously, the year I had last year at World Series Europe was probably one of my best poker trips ever. Um, you know, I had three third places in 25K No Limit, 50K No Limit, and the main event. So the two big No Limits, I was happy to get third. I was kind of short. And then the main, I had six kind of chips in play three-handed and stopped winning pots. So that was sad. So a pretty brutal flop here for Ace King. I don't really like betting the three hard board with Ace King. There's just not many good things are going to happen. And obviously he gets bluff raised by a semi draw that's slightly ahead. But those monotone boards, sometimes you just got to be checking a lot of hands in your range. Kind of a frustrating time for for Daniel, I think, with the 24K. Oh, I can't. I was about this stage in my day one, and uh, yeah, you know, you just got to make some hands versus the right people, and he's gonna keep trying to see flops and play post flop and trust his reads and hopefully, uh, you know, accumulate a little bit. It's not like he has to just win it all in free. He still has 50 big blinds. Is a lot, a lot of chips. And this is still very early in the level, so it's not like the blinds are going up anytime soon. Not a fan of this overland by Shelby versus Daniel. It's just not going to play that well, and you're playing against a better player, you should try to have a better starting hand. That's no insult to her. I think, you know, all but 10 people in this field would be a worse player than Daniel. But what do I know? She flops top pair. Looks as though we're going to go back to Mr. Jeff Platt, who uh, found one of his team members, Mr. Jeremy Osmus. Of course, he needs a whole lot of points from that guy in 25K Fantasy, but... Uh, I mean, he's already won a bracelet. What more do you want from him? <laughs> Let's see you what fantasy owners are brutal to the horses. <laughs> Let's see what Jeff and Jeremy have to say. Out here in the field post dinner break, he is a six-time World Series of Poker bracelet winner. Let me steal Jeremy Austin's away from the table for a quick sec. Don't want to interrupt anything that's going on. Still weird to hear that it's bracelet number six, especially considering five have come within the last two years. Kind of. Yeah, yeah. it's gotten a little ridiculous. Yeah, they've, they've come quick, but I'll take it. You are uh, the co-captain of a very popular 25K Fantasy League team, Team No Gamble, No Future. The team is struggling. You've had a great summer. A lot of people are saying, not me, that you should maybe be taking some of the blame for the team's poor uh, performance. Your, your thoughts? I, I wouldn't say that. Yeah, um, I mean, if you look at the scores, the points, yeah. I've overperformed already. So sure. someone's got to do something. I've done all, almost all I can do. I might do more. <laughs> but at this point, you know, it's up to, I think, management. To management, kinda, maybe. Yeah, ruffle some I, I think should, stir up the pot, get I think some we can motivation. agree to just blame your teammates. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I don't know. Hey, yeah, I'm yeah, just a player. I'm yeah, a player. I'm, player. I'm not in the CEO. We'll, we'll blame Brent Hanks. Um, this seems like a fun table. Fair it assessment. It is a fun table. It is fun. Uh, lots of talking and having fun and uh, banter and... You know, we got Mike Dentali over oh, here. Yeah. He's, he's, he's fun to play with, so it's fun, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I'll send you back to the action. Appreciate Thank the time. You. Thanks, sure. Jeremy. Pick it up. We need you to win the main for fantasy. Thank you. <laughs> I was trying to not name drop people, but I did have dinner break with Dentali, and he was uh, had a few glasses of wine with uh, some of the other people, so he's probably getting extra loose and extra fun right now. <laughs> I mean, Jeff Platterbrand Hanks. Quite clearly, some of the worst managers in all of poker fantasy. Mm, I Team No Gamble No Future in 17th place out of 20 teams. Last I checked, Team DPMC that I have a small piece of in first. So um, yeah, hopefully that pays for my new bike later this year. I doubt it. Your bikes are probably pretty expensive. That, uh, yeah, well, if, if we win, then we're, we're, we're halfway there. 
Uh, meanwhile, Sean Deep putting that team on his back. 234 points. Well done, sir. Thanks so much. Yeah. And look, look at those results. Only one of a 10K. That is no double points. Okay, that is 234 of real American points. <laughs> <laughs> Hard-earned money. Yeah, the, you, you don't understand how much I had to work to get all those points in that many events. I think I'm up to like 16 or 17 caches. You know, I put out a tweet earlier this series. Uh, what was I going to lose more weights or total caches? And it's been a battle. I have been keeping pace of both equally. So uh, I'm intrigued to see which one wins out in the end. Just get that main event field bonus, please. Oh, yeah, then, then I'm definitely going to lose more weight than <laughs> points. Or cash is whatever. But yeah, the 25k fantasy, always a fun sweat. What I think is so funny about it, Sean, is that the players also seem to care. First, first about getting drafted, that's sort of a badge of honor. And then second about performing well, because everyone is refreshing the standings every single day. I believe it was either 17, I think it was actually 18 the year I won, that I didn't get drafted. And I was so annoyed. <laughs> and I said, F you guys, I'm never ever, I'm playing all these terms I want to make you guys regret never ever picking me. And I think it was like 2015 or 16, one year Daniel drafted cool. me. And it was a year there was massive open face action at, in Vegas. And I played four events and I max light regged all of them. And I'd even try to play the main event. Like I just tried to blast off to go back to open face. The money was so good there. So Daniel has always signed off and said, I'll never draft you again. You're the most unreliable player. <laughs> and now here I am. I actually go for more points than Daniel. So uh, that was nice. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's crazy. Um, the players love it, the drafters love it, the fans love it with the ODB draft. I think Fantasy Poker for the World Series is a great way to engage the fans. I love all the random people. Like, I had some six-year-old ladies come up to me and say, like, oh, you're on my fantasy team. Like, it's so awesome to hear that, that they're sweating along and care about every little $1,500 I keep cashing or final tabling or winning because it gets them a few more points in fantasy. <laughs> it, it, it's as if I needed more motivation. Yeah, that's really, really cool, and hopefully, 25k fantasy keeps growing. I, I, I gotta say, I gotta call out Jeff Platt for that interview. That was audacious to go to the one guy on your team that's contributed <laughs> and then kind of complain to him about like him needing to get on his teammates. Well, like, well here's the thing. As an awesome coach, and they, was, they can say, hey, this guy won five races in 21 months. If I had Phil Helmuth as a coach on a team with me, I'd expect some fucking Phil Helmuth coaching. <laughs> so Osmus has to step up and help out. Like, you know, the people I drafted on my team I've coached like four or five of them in different mixed events. And you know, I don't even, if the team I was on, if anyone asked for some advice, I'd probably say F off. But you know, if you don't have a piece of a team, you want to see your team win because it's cool to be a part of the team that wins. Absolutely. And uh, of course, Ren Lin and his team are running harder than the Sun. I cannot believe that team. I thought he had the worst team when it was drafted. Team Lady Gaga in second place, only a few points behind us. Is it like, is it winner take all? or? No, they're, they're paying uh, four spots. I think it's like 300k to first, and then 150, 150, or something like that. I mean, this team is just yeah. absurd. Yeah, but yeah, Mincy, you gotta get in there next year. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, gotta get a piece on the. Yeah, no one, no one wants Mincy on their team. No, he doesn't no, put enough a volume. More, I'd, I'd be there for more for moral support. You yeah. weren't there for moral support for me all summer. Where were you, Mincy? Were you at any of my rails and my final tables? How many FTs did you make? One. Four? Yeah, I was at one. I was at the Shulman Stud one. Oh, you were? Okay. Yeah, I was when, there. We when did, did you come say hi? Oh, Dude, we did. We, we did content there. So the first yeah. No. You're, you're forgetting that. I was there for that, for sure. Okay, yeah, yeah. You interviewed me at the start of the final table, and then you... No, that was... Yeah. Was that day two of that one? No, it was FT. It was we were FT. up on the stage, I thought. Yeah. And then we moved to the... I, I was there. I was there for one. I don't know. I'm trying to remember. No, I, I definitely remember because it was you, Showman, and uh, Angry John Manette. Yeah, I know we made that final table, but I remember talking by table two, not by the horseshoe, and the stud final table was played at the horseshoe. No, I was at the horseshoe because it was right after Hunter. <laughs> okay. You guys need, need a minute to, to sort this I'm, out? I'm a little hurt, man. He meant to talk for like six weeks straight about all our ideas, yeah. and then he was barely in town. Yeah. When he was here, he wasn't at the gym. He just goes to his own place. Not the gym here. Have you been a team? Have you been on Team D or what, Mincy? Oh, I mean, I'm for Team D. Uh, have you been there for Team D? You may support me. Wow, the the, the brothers are fighting here on the stream. You might well, have I don't to... know that anybody ever thought we were, thought we were family. No, no, no. You guys are brothers in my mind. I know. Right? I just I just want to know on a scale of one to ten. Where's your effort level been for my support? 
Let's give it a five. Four, four, five. Probably really? That high? After I got the brick watch and after I got size, we were matching brothers, rocking the brick watches every day. That was cool, yeah. Didn't really help me out though, did it? Damn, man. Oh, ruthless. Ruthless here. All right, let's 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 watch some poker. You guys clearly have some some stuff to work through. Maybe you need some couples counseling. Yeah, I, I I needed him to be there for me. He needed to be my wife in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason we're able to lean into the banter a little bit because the action has been really stale these last few hands. Up until right as you say and, that, and right as right we sort as of say that. right as we refocus a little bit, we find pocket kings here for Negranu, swar swarm and raising it up to twelve hundred. Uh, looks like more than 26. I see more than two yellows there. Yeah, looks like 46. Maybe about 30. Oh, we have a turn picking a base queen here. Potential for some big action here, or does ace queen really shrink here? Mm, this, I mean, it's cutoff button. You have a lot of chips. Daniel could be abusing someone. You just got a four back call. It'd be different if they had equal stacks or a lot deeper. You squeeze Daniel's onto the gun open and on the gun one flat, the whole table behind with ace queen off. I think he's going to recognize that it's too good of a hand and he's going to make it, you know, eight, nine thousand and call off when Daniel jams. Negrano really needs a double up that would make his night a whole lot more fun. But turn still in the tank here with Ace Queen off. And oh. He lets it go. Wow. He said he plays that play. He was playing for all of them. Gosh, no credit. I had to wow. Free see, that's like, you know, you see the spot, a cutoff open. He has King Queen off, the big one, Ace Queen off. It just shows you, like, how profitable three nice. bets are in the main as a known play. Like, maybe Daniel's got to find more of those spots. and. Not just have kings. If people are scared of doubling him up or giving him any chips and giving him some momentum, he's just gonna have to steal a couple thousand at a time. All of a sudden, he's gonna be back on 40, 50 thousand and be able to play, you know, his normal style. Right, he's got to. Does he have to fly up the king's break? No, he should three bet, but it just shows that maybe he should be three betting more if he's not getting action versus one of the best hands the cutoff is gonna open and one of the best hands the big ones can be dealt. Got a little king's action again. Rigolo also in need of a double up, down to 21k or 23k to start this hand. Rosen makes the call with the king queen offsuit. Nothing there for Negrano this time around. <laughs> Negrano also has been fairly quiet, Mincy, especially the first hour we were going. Yeah, he was chirping and chatting and. Do you think he watched your final your day and is trying to play like you? I, I actually had more chips than him. <laughs> <laughs> you never got to 22,000? I never got as low as 20, like I got down to that low. Yeah. I play a little higher variant style than you, though, don't I? Uh, yes. But that, that is Do we want to tell the fans about uh, our little epic slow roll in the tag team? Yeah. The one event you supported me in. Yeah, dude, Sean, that, was, that was really funny. He, so he, he was playing an online event. And a, I guess a PLO online, you went deep in, and then you're playing the, the deuce to seven. Badoogie. The Badoogie. And he ran over at, on a break, and uh, I was coming back to tag in. And Don't he went all in, and got called. The guy goes huh? eight, it's shows it's eight. Sean's shakes his head, goes six, head goes six as, as, as I walk up, and then he just rolls over the wing. It was good. beautiful. That's good. That is great. Uh, how do we feel about slow rolling in the chat? Let us know. Sean Deep, of course, the most notorious uh, slow roller. I don't know if I'm the most notorious. Maybe the most frequent one. There's who been. Who else? Who else? Would you I mean, you got the Corey Zeidman notorious slow roll that oh my God. played for 25 now, years, and you know Corey Zeidman's a piece of shit. So uh, happy to see he's going to jail finally, hopefully soon. <laughs> <laughs> that guy, I thought, I thought and he's not a piece of shit for slow roll. Uh, where, where is it? Where is it? Yeah. 2005 main event day one. Jen Harmon, Corey Zeidman, nine seven of diamonds, I believe. No, it was nine eight. Nine eight. Yeah, Queen Jack ten, Queen River ten, or something like. It was Queen Jack, Jack ten, something. It was like Queen Jack ten. He had eight nine. She raised, or he raised. She called. 
Turn was a queen of diamonds. Check call. River was jack of diamonds. Check shove. And she just knew she was beat. Play poker. Yeah. And he tanked for a while before calling with the straight flush. Yep. One of the most famous main event hands we've ever seen. It'll be on there later, too. You can watch it later. I have no desire to Got a watch pretty it. cooler flop here. Center. Top pair, top kicker for Wells on the big blind. Nut flush draw for Tavolaris. Stay up all night, man. Nailed it. Nope. Expert at foreign names. Those na those Were you there at that long, EPT Remco in uh, at Kiev when they had me announce all the Russian and no, Ukrainian I, names? No, I wasn't there for that one. Oh, that was one of the funniest segments of my early commentary career. They just gave me all these names with all these consonants in them, and they wanted me to just. And I butchered all of them. It was it was awful. Good thing for you, Wells Ooh. is also in this hand as the jack hits on the river. Wells' pair of eights now no longer good. Let's see what Tavolaris comes with here. Yeah, she made a mistake. When the middle card pairs, you defend out of the big blind versus early position open. You should be leading almost all your hands on the turn, especially ace eight, and go for a small sizing. He obviously would appeal this particular hand. And I still think she, you know, I don't like that she didn't bet the river. She's got a lot of bluffs or draws that missed, a lot of straight draws, flush draws. He might call ace high or even king high, and or possibly worse eight. So I'd rather value bet than to be in this spot where you check and, you know, now she doesn't feel like if he had short on value with ace high, he would have checked back. So did he river a jack or did he have a big pocket pair to start? Yeah, it's the first hand I've seen her lose at the table. She lost uh, Jack-10 with Daniel in the set. Good morning. Y'all having fun? Really? There's no paint drying anywhere? <laughs> this is what Daniel's best at. Chat, engaging with fans on the rail. I've learned so much of how to act in these spots because of him. Um, he's a great ambassador for that. Always making time for pitchers. And just, you know, them having a one word conversation with him is going to mean the world to them. Yeah, and he always says, please ask for photos while I'm playing, not while I'm on break, because then I need my breaks. You can see Negrano standing up from the table every single time he plays on a table that's close to the rail just to take some pictures with the fans. Yeah, Bracket again calling Daniels open with a small pair. Just. Gotta start three betting some of these hands. Everyone flopped a little bit of nothing, so whoever kind of stabs will probably win. Or Shelby will peel the straight draw on a flush board for that cheap. She decides to. If you said you watched it, did you see any fun hands? And Brackett's bet takes it down, denies a lot of equity to Wells, and gets a much needed pot to his stack size. I don't, I don't think Daniel's enjoying this 21K very much right now. Um, you know, he's thinking about his dogs, Rocky and Apollo. Amanda's sitting at home. If he leaves, he's got a couple days off. I'm grinding the online turbo tomorrow, have some fun, sitting at home, having a few cocktails. Life ain't so bad. I like that attitude. But yeah, I think the fact that when he raised all the ace queen was, you see that Daniel's going to try to his last chip and not just, you know, gamble in a tough spot. Like, you know, making that fold. You know, we talked about looking for some three-bet spots. Maybe the King Jack off what could have been a good candidate to consider.
Rosen raising it up with Ace Queen offsuit. Action falls to Tavalaris in the big blind. 6 5 offsuit. He's going to defend this. King 10 6, two clubs. Rosen with the ace of clubs. Oh, well, yeah. Not going to be too unhappy with this flop. Yeah, it's a good flop to bet pretty big. You turn the nuts a lot. Uh, you got to bet bigger on this board. You're under the gun. It makes it real tough for a 10 or a 6 to call. You don't want gut shots to continue. And you're letting them all peel for the right price. There it is with a pair of sixes. Double R is coming along. Eight of diamonds on the turn. See if he went small on the flop, playing on two barreling a turn. What do you got here, like 2,800, 3,000, somewhere there? Uh, 3,200, I kind of go two thirds. I really want, you know, queen 10, jack 10 to fold. 10, nine might fold by river. 3,400. Good sizing. And it should work. You have good cards? Well, they like good cards. It doesn't mean you hit them. Yes. Both of them? <laughs> yeah. No, Daniel's mad because he pulled up the king jack. Yeah. Yours must have been better. I think you said it was such a straight face that it confused him. He's like, yeah. is he being legit right now? Or is he? He raised, he must have good cards. I had to think about it. I, I was with you. I was like, he's saying it was such a straightforward pace. Like, I mean, it sounds like a trick question. Yeah, you're like, wait, wait. He got what he needed. Huh? He got what he needed. To watch it in 30 minutes. I know they're gone. I, I look good like, a, I like a guy is getting out of line. You had better cards. <laughs> Ace nine off is a little too light versus a guy who hasn't played too many pots in early position. Plays really bad at flop. Wells just at at all points eager to get involved into some action. It's worked for her so far, but of course <laughs> could <laughs> could easily backfire at some point. Yeah, he's kind of betting based on strength of hand. And if I was relaying info to some of this table, I'd say, you know, he likes his hand, but he doesn't love his hand. And you could probably bluff raise him and get him off a lot of hands that are betting this small on some of these boards. Rosen correctly peels with his gut shot. No one ever sees the wheel when it comes. Turn card is the eight of spades. Surprised to see Bracket continue here for a second bet. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of this, but he's just hoping, you know, some weak aces fold. And if he kind of bets the turn, I kind of like betting River as well on non three or non eight. Shelby Wells with the quick call. 12 8 in the middle here. Let's see what Bracket does on the river. I do not like that line. He can't just give up other showdown or weaker aces. Nice. Wells takes this one down and again chips up nicely. Uh, some people in the chat asking about where has Gus Hansen been? We've all spotted him in Vegas. Uh, Sean, we know that he's been playing cash. W what have you heard about the cash games this summer? Um, they're very good and a lot of them are private and I don't have a seat in them. So yeah, I'm a tournament player. Not People are scared of me loop, for you know, some crazy reason. Cash. Cash. Even even in cash. Really yeah, I could probably so only get in the Bobby's 3K, 6K, yeah, so far. which uh, yeah. is slightly yeah. out of my bankroll. My, maybe my, my earlier 20s, I would have gambled in that game a few bullets, but uh, nowadays with the family, 
I can't justify losing half a million dollars in one cash session and going back to the wife and kids like everything's normal. Me neither can Min <laughs> neither can Mincy and I. Can't justify it. What's the biggest cash game you ever played? Uh, I played 1500 3K. It was straight super stud many years ago. Straight super stud. Wow. Yeah, that was my favorite game. We had a couple. Uh, Good players for the game in there, and a lot of players who didn't understand how to play the game. And I had a lot of knowledge of that game, so I played a lot of it, and it was great. I did really well that summer, one of my best summers ever. Yours don't work for me. I only played 15 3 for like the last few. I, I last appreciate week or two. it. It was mostly 8 16 and 1K2. I'll blind away until tomorrow, that's fine, whatever. <laughs> Maybe you get aces again. <laughs> yeah, that works out great. There's a winning. <laughs> just won't play whole hand. I almost didn't pay you out of pay or out of principle. What happened that hand again? It was the very first hand at the feature table, like right as we sit down. Yeah. And I looked down and I have aces. And I'm just like, there's nothing good. But something weird happened besides that. <laughs> yeah. Something weird. Before came three, four, five. No, four, besides five, six, that, like seven, pre flop, four. something that before the they dealt, something weird happened. I can't remember. Uh, they like gave us weird vibes that something bad was gonna happen. I don't. I don't remember. I, don't remember. I believe you, since I haven't won a hand. I believe you. I just don't. I don't remember. Donnie Peters with an update, down to 39K. It's not been an easy level for him. Hopefully he'll be able to chip up a little bit. Perhaps he's drawing a bit too much inspiration from the likes of a Daniel Negreanu and a Ben Mintz, as everyone seems to be below starting stack these days. I just got a Nate, Marshall Nate update. He's up to 46K, which feels like a million, because apparently he was doing bad earlier. Yeah, he had a good interview about you. He was, seemed pretty jealous that you got feature table. <laughs> he was. And now you're not even with Barstool, and you still get feature table action. Both, so both, both, both playing and commentating. There you go. I don't think he's too jealous of Ben's uh, commentating skills. <laughs> I mean, commentary is just about having fun, and we're having a lot of fun. So I, I, saying, I don't think I'm doing that bad, am I? We're doing great. We're doing great, me and Remco. <laughs> just relentless. I, I love it, though. Just relentless. I'm, I'm conditioned to take... A lot of a lot of heat and pain. It's it's certainly nothing 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 that I haven't gotten used to in the last three or four years of my life. Uh, shout out Maybe to everyone in the, in the chat. We still need to break the record of likes from last night. We had 5,000. We're at 3,900 right now. Let's at least get over 4,000 in this current yeah, moment. If you're not yet a subscriber to our YouTube channel, please make sure to do so. We're about to hit 443,000 YouTube subs. And then if you're new to PokerGo, subscribe right now because the main event, of course, concluding on PokerGo in about 13 days' time. God, 13 more days of the main event. It's kind of bizarre. <laughs> yeah, was, I was at dinner and someone was saying there's a day years, eight. So yeah, 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 there is. That's so that's crazy, which is good because the, day seven was so long last year. Like, you got you got to make it reasonable. Yeah, I'm not, not sure I'm going to get there, change. but at least it's on the schedule. And anyone listening, by the way, if you want to send some questions, you can tweet at me. Uh, any questions for Ben, wondering why he's still here, you know, just send me a tweet at Sean Deeb, and uh, you know, I'll be answering some of the questions. And maybe if uh, Ben has any, you can also just go to the chat, Sean. I, well, I don't, I can't see the chat, Remco. You can go to the chat on YouTube. You have YouTube on your phone? I I think so. I don't know. I'm not good with technology, man. Oh man. I'll, okay, you guys sent questions in the chat. I'll ask the Sean and Mince some questions. Let's turn this into a and A as the action has been a little a little bit slow. Somebody asked Sean if he takes Holly for himself. Oh, no. Yeah. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I've always been one to lack confidence, you know. Yeah, clearly. How does Sean Deep even have a wife? I've never seen that. Um, so my wife's answer to that question is she married me for love, she stays for the money. <laughs> <laughs> She's not joking either. Uh, your wife is a tough cookie. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, when I met my wife's friends and family, they said, uh, wow, you found a bigger shit talker than you may be. And I would say she's the female version of me. Super confident, super opinionated, will get in debate on any subject, gets involved in any drama, and then 10 minutes later, completely normal. And so I love, she's so feisty and fiery and a great mom. We have a great relationship. Uh, you know, I can't believe our 10 year anniversary is coming up in a couple months. That's awesome. It's ridiculous to realize that. Uh, Dan Ortiz is wondering, what kind of watch does Mincy wear? 
We're rocking the, the brick watch. Hey, not just Mincy. I yeah, got a brick Sean watch. Dave's too. got a brick watch support. Big shout out. Wow. I appreciate it. I think I was one of the first people to he, buy he it. He was. Check out brickwatchcompany.com. And I doxed my email address in that in that tweet. So got about a million impressions because I got the Dave Portnoy retweet. All right, Negrano, remember I said looking for some spots to three bet? He finally picked an offsuit Broadway hand, and it's going to work. Just recognize these spots. Daniel abuses Fable. No one's three betting. No one's getting out of line. They all are just raising weak hands and don't know to continue. Negrano finally picking up one without showdown. Perhaps sort of sensing that a uh, switch of gears is necessary at this point. Yeah, I mean, when you have a table playing this passive, and they're all just playing straightforward and, you know, they all just want to stay on the feature table. They all want to make day two. It doesn't matter that you're a short stack. You put out a couple thousand chips, it's going to get a super high percentage of folds. And if you start doing that a few times, when you do wake up with the kings on the button, the guy with the ace queen and the guy with king queen are like, oh, man, I got him. I got a good hand. He's been so active. You, you got to build up that image to get paid off sometimes. Oh, got Coach S off. with the joke of the night so far. He's saying, if Sean's wife was a tough cookie, he'd eaten her a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sean might have. Not this Sean. Yeah, just protein bars to me these days. <laughs> uh, Sean, do you slow roll your in-laws? Uh, yeah, we actually slow rolled her father when we got married. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rosen getting a little little frisky here. Great handed pick as a three bet. Versus Wells, who's played by far the most hands at the table. Um, she's definitely going to peel this one to a three bet, this stack depth. But you're still going to win post up a lot of the time when she if she doesn't pop a set. Eight, eight, six on the flop here. We knew someone was likely to possibly flop trips. I did not think it was going to be the ace eight of hearts. And this is a hand where uh, Shelby definitely probably will call a C bet. You know? Yeah, but three of spades, paired board versus pre flop razor. It's definitely a hand you consider uh, calling a bet. Depending on bet size, definitely the 2500. She's going to call at least once. <laughs> Seven of Spades brings a lot of draws in there. I still like betting to protect from Rosen. Even if she does have a flush or, you know, straight, she's not necessarily going to raise. And you have equity, and you also have to protect versus the hand that she has that's now all of a sudden up to 23% equity. You're like 7,500, right, Kelly? Uh, I go kind of bigger on this exact card. Just because so many hands have draws. And he, you know, we talk about blockers. He unblocks all of them with AC8 of hearts. There's a lot of pocket pairs. There's a lot of 7-9s. Uh, oh, wow. Flush doesn't come in for Shelby. As the eight eight ace eight is strong here. Ninety five hundred. I think he went a little too big on the queen. I don't think she has too many queen X's. Maybe he's trying to like act like he has ace king with a spade, so maybe she'll think that's the hand he's gonna bluff with. She decides to correctly lay it down, and Rosen will take this one. Uh, Kyo Gmal is asking if there was a bicycle bet distance ridden over a certain period of time between Remco and Sean, what conditions and odds would Remco offer? Uh, I think you'd have to be blindfolded. <laughs> How many miles a week do you you bike a ton? About 200 miles a week. How long has it been with CBS? Yeah, that's an average. Yeah. He's, he's an animal. Yeah. He used to be your size. Not that big. I was 285 uh, pounds at one point. There's a great photo of me wearing an Eli Manning jersey at the Giant Stadium right before, like literally a week before, I made a prop bet to lose weight with Noah Boken, my boss at the time, when I was working for, working How's for, Noah doing, by the way? Noah's doing excellent. 
He, I saw him at the WSP last year. I wouldn't be surprised if he's hearing it right now, actually. Um, yeah, Noah's doing great. One of the old school online legends. Always loved hanging out with the EPTs. Always great stories, great to drink with, and uh, he was, you know, a real volume grinder from back in the day. And I have so much respect for this game early on in my career. Exclusive on Poker Stars back in the day. I remember it. I remember it. Yep. Started uh, Juice Brothers, a smoothie company with multiple locations. Uh, Amsterdam, I think Barcelona, New York. I think they were talking about a location in Las Vegas. So Nick Edwards tweeted me a question. Why don't they do the sweat with the player anymore? He used to love the beef jerky whole card thing. So that was done on the official production. And so this is just a live stream. So it doesn't have the same segments. Um, I know for the edited versions, there's going to be a pretty good segment featuring yours truly and Josh Arie. Oh boy. Got a little competition versus Vanessa Selps and Maria Ho. And just put it this way, it wasn't fair. <laughs> OK, OK. Curious to see that. Yeah, John, Sean referencing the uh, full production, which kicks off on day two. Donnie and I are going to be on the call, I believe, for the first two levels on day two before kicking it over to La McCarran and Maria Ho. I think you're going to have to liven the table up again, get people we're to sure. talk. We're fine. We don't need to. Don't, don't feel forced, bro. Okay, okay. good. Because yeah, I, I felt bad the sitting here is, sleeping. No, it's changed like... so much now that the commentators just talk the whole time. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Like, right. Riff, Cajun. Yeah, sit here quietly. Like, I watched, you know, yeah. Because live stream, they just talk. Really? <laughs> Daniel's giving us a lot of shit for talking a lot. Sorry, yeah. Daniel. If you're not doing it, we're going to. That's exactly right, because if Daniel talks, we're just going to be quiet. That's how it works. Rigolo picks up top pair here against Avalaris with sevens. Probably a pretty good candidate to turn to a bluff. You definitely do not have the best hand. And you're going to try to get a 10 or a queen to fold. Yeah, I mean, you can't beat anything here, 7s. correctly recognizing that going to showdown is not going to work for him. Big sizing, good sizing here, too, 44 and 62. The other, the other thing, too, factoring in Rigolo has 24K, so, I mean, 4,400s. And people talked about the ace, six of diamonds he folded. One player has mentioned he saw what the other guy had. So they definitely see that, you know, he's made some big folds. And this is a reasonable hand to fold to a bet. There's not too many hands you beat. He really wants to call this, I think. He's going to end up calling probably thinking that he has underrepped the strength of his hand a little bit as well by the line that he took himself. But then again, hard to see Tavalar's betting for value with less. Yes, yeah, he's not expecting ace-10 to be right. value betting. He doesn't have queen-8, you know, opening under the gun. And queen-8 would even chop with queen-9. Does decide to lay it down. Can't really fault it before no. in there. No, I mean. That was a great bet. Yeah, that's Ooh. kind of love. You're in a bad spot. And 
There's a lot of hands that improve on that king. There's a couple slow played hands on the turn. It looked a bit sus. Side. Side in the end. You can vote for me. <laughs> and they just asked me to remind everybody if you're using your phone, please keep it off away from the table because it can appear as the VR. Okay. Thank you. Okay. If I'm like. Turned I'm over surprised they're actually allowed to have their table, that, no, that's uh, cell phones on the table. Yeah, the blue thing's holding it under the table. Could probably be a little <laughs> Thinking, okay, I'm not, I'm not messing anyone up. I'm under the table. Like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> that was probably right me. I was there trying to be courteous. Like, all right, just quietly do it down here. No big deal. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm just jamming up all the signals. <laughs> I'm trying to find some more questions here in the chat. If you guys do have them, please send them in. we got about three more hours here of coverage of day one C of the main event. Tomorrow, the biggest day one of them all. Some people saying we might get 5,000 players. That'd be amazing. Bracket with a A6 suited, raised to 1,000. That is a raise to 1,000. On your neck, bro. Is that a shrimp? Only for you. Scrimp. Scrimp. Above the scrimp. Nice. Nice. Seems like a flop to the nut flush draw, a lower flush draw. Yeah, a little bit of something for everyone except for. I guess Angeloff and Bracket won't be too happy with still. Bracket with a gut oh, shot. The key fob. Key fob. Just a second, so. Instead of having a card. Three card, seven of out. diamonds. So now, seven is currently elite. Well, it's the best hand. <laughs> exactly. I guess it's 60%. Yep. At least got claw blockers. Probably going to be hard to bet a seven here, though. Yeah, he's not going to bet with the second flusher on the turn. I would have liked to seen a, a bet from Regolo. Not flush draw, gut shot. You have some ace jacks yourself, jack nine suited. That's an interesting hand to choose. I checked to him in position. Yeah, but he went a little too small, I mean. That's what's messing it all up. It's tough for uh, 10 jack ace 10 to fold to that sizing for someone who they've seen, you know, bluff a little bit. Cool. Rigolo with the ace high flush draw. Really cool if Tavarlis actually check raised his hand on the turn. Pretty ideal candidate. Very believable, has equity, blocks some of the better hands. Do not like calling. Eight of hearts on the river gives Rigolo a winning pair of eights. I don't think he can imagine the eight. Right, the I was, right now. He, he's not he's not playing this hand to hit an eight. That's for sure. Happy to get the showdown for free. Oh, uh, Riggle small boy, not bought. You know, I keep, okay, explains why he didn't bet the flop. That makes way more sense. Well, to me. I mean, Angelov knows for sure he's not, not going to win this hand by checking. But bluffing into two players, that's pretty ambitious. Yeah, especially after you check back flop. Like, what are you repping? <laughs> King seven suited, ten seven suited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really tough to call, but man, good timing. Yeah. Wow. Angelov gets it done. Very impressive showing by him so far at this feature table, up to over 100,000 chips. He's won 16 of 75 hands at the feature table. 
Very skinny John Goodman as a lookalike before. As a matter of fact, if you've seen John, John Goodman lately, I just looked like John Goodman. He's lost a lot of weight. Yeah, he has the righteous <laughs> gemstones, yeah. But I hear it all. John there. Goodman. Barry's one of my favorite dealers. Like uh, always give him a hard time. No one will be able to unsee it. He got a little upset, asked if I would. My mom's uh, got a huge crush on. Who I would pick him or this other dealer, yeah. uh, Eric? Yeah. Yeah. Thought that was a good choice. I think Eric. Like Roseanne, John Goodman. John Goodman too. Here's a question. <laughs> Sweating, John Goodman. At least she did. That could be worse. Uh, Murr7 with a $5 donation says, can yeah, you explain sure. the new WSB satellite pro process? I know it's different than years past. Well, they got rid of the Lammers, which was a pretty big change. Yeah, so uh, they had some issues with that. So now if you win a satellite, uh, it goes directly to your TVIC account, which allows you to buy into events. So it's seamless, and TVIC has been a great addition to the World Series, and I'm really excited to see what they have in store for next year if they get away from the Garbage Bravo app. Mm. Just tell them how you really feel about it. But I, I believe I feel about Bravo the same way I feel about you, Mincy. Unreliable. Oh, we're back to this again now. I give him a break a little bit. Kind of like you try to give a break in the main event for the next year. Uh, shout out to everyone watching our late night coverage here. We're gonna, we're gonna leave the lame jokes hour for 11.30 p.m. Pacific time. For those of, that, have been, that have been tuning into our streams the last couple of days, get your lame jokes ready for 11.30. We're still a little over an hour away. We should have Mincy read all of them, so probably he'll find them all funny. We, have, we, have, we had a lot of good ones last night. So interesting lead here by Rob. Start at like 20-ish? Uh, yeah. Very Thanks. small bet into preflop Razor on not the best board. And Daniel recognizes that and goes for the old school. You raise, you must be, you lead, you must be weak. I'm gonna raise. And he is correct. Negrano picks up the pot here. It also means that it's time again to check in with Wait Mr. Jeff Platt. He is out <laughs> in the field. I had it. Oh. Negrano had it indeed. He had ace high. That was the best hand. All right, oh, Jeff Platt, what do you got for us? All right, so many different stories of how you can wind up at the World Series of Poker main event. I want to talk to Shem real quick. Shem, stand up for me, please, for a quick sec. Shem Goltz, uh, I'm doing well. Thank you very much for asking. First, before we get to your main event story, what was the story of that last hand I just saw? Wow, so I opened sevens. The big blind defended. Flop was 6-4-3. Yeah. I bet he goes all in, he's pretty short. I snap, he's got the nuts, 5-7 oh. suited. Like, I call 4-5, five, 5 comes. Five comes. So, so, so it's that control. easy, you just have to call for the card and yeah. then it arrives? Yeah, I think that's the strategy. How'd you end up here with a seat in the World Series of Poker main event? Yeah, that's a pretty crazy story, actually. It's my first ever World Series of Poker, and I wasn't intending on playing the main event because of bankroll, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out, big shout out to Benz Benz on Twitter. He hooked me up. Basically, he did a last longer challenge on Twitter where he gave 20 people, including myself, he just picked randomly, I didn't know him beforehand, a free roll to a nightly tournament, and yeah. the last longest was to win the main event. So uh, stor short, long story short, started at 7 p.m., and at 5 a.m., not only did I win the challenge, I actually won the whole tournament. There were 300 <laughs> people, so it saved my whole month because I was down on you know, doubles, WSOP, and it was amazing. I mean, it was... Crazy. I don't want you to miss hands, so I'm going to send you back to the action, sure. but real quick, you having fun? Yes, yes or no? Yes, it's, it's, it's really fun. All Great right. structure, it's a grind, but I'm loving it. Thanks for the time, Thank Shem. You. I appreciate it. Good luck. Wow. Shout out to Shem. Not only winning the last longer to get in the sea, but also winning the tournament to get unstuck. I love stories like that. Yeah, so, Ben's Ben's has been full of. We got a big pot of Bruin. Matt turn opens. Angela, three bets the aces, and Shelby Colt, four bets the jacks. Wow. Yeah. That is some aggression there. I mean, versus Angelo, it can't be that bad. Um, but, yeah, what I, I prefer a flat, but your hands kind of face up by flatting. But if you knew, if she knew the cards that Angelo has had the last few hands that he's played, I would like to keep him in there with his weaker hands. And now he's probably going to four bet, or five bet her about 26,000. She's going to have a tough decision to make. Every time someone reaches to grab the chips back to their stack, you know something big is coming. Uh, I was originally going 25, and I thought he might throw a yellow in there. 25K is the five bet 
five bet alert, five bet alarm. We should have some sort of lights going off at this point. We have not seen this yet in the main event. Oh, I've seen some five bets in the main event. Oh, right, right. We haven't seen it on the feature table. Referencing my famous aces to a6 offsuit hand from many years ago. Shout out Max Heinzelman. Rest in peace, buddy. Rest in Should peace. Should have so many people. What are you doing, Shelby? I don't know about this. Wow. Shelby has been on point the whole night, and now with 52K in the middle, she's got a lot of money involved with pocket jacks. Angelov is so happy to get a nice low board, not worried about the sets. Still thinks he's going to stack kings, possibly stack queens or jacks. I think he goes like, little, like 18 or 19 here. Oh, uh, that's way too big. I think I'd go like 12-5, quarter pot. Don't even less. Wow, small bet here from Angelov. Well, yeah, you know your opponent has two outs at best almost always here with this preflop action. These might as well have been completely irrelevant cards. She has no hand that connects with these cards on the board. She can be, there's no way she can fall for 10k either. You're right. I see, I see the logic. Shelby makes the call, digging an even deeper hole here at the feature table. Of course, still two outs to potentially turn this thing around, but the nine of hearts is not going to make a difference. going like 20 or 25 here to set up River Jam. I might even go less. And I think check is actually kind of cool. Um, and then just shove any river. 24. Ben is putting forth out. Yeah, he's trying to bet about a third of his stack. He to, sets up the river shove, yeah. yeah. I mean, if your well's at this point, you know what's coming. You also have to give Angelov credit for the type of range that he has. So, Jacks sort of belong in the muck here at this point. Jacks should have been in the muck pretty far. Well. Five bet. He's been crushing his table. If he has ace king, he's just going to flat the four bet. He's not five betting without aces, maybe kings. She finds the fold. Finds the fold, and Angelov takes down a massive pot here with pocket aces. You know, now he's got a starting stack ahead of everyone else. He's just been destroying this passing table, <laughs> running his bluffs. He's had the aces. He's got the paid aces. Off. That's what he's claiming. That is the assertion. Is this the quintessential the aces, reason that's why a top pro should that, play right? day one of the main event? Five yes. bet, bet, bet. I mean, you're not claiming uh, ace four, right? Or I guess you are. Seven six. Ace four. <laughs> All the kids, ace four. That's the one they go freaking bonkers over. <laughs> Landon Tice. He goes. He, no, he likes the ace five. He doesn't. Five. Him and Espen. Yeah, ace four suited. Five. 900 big blinds. Let's go. <laughs> 400 big blinds each. Ace four suited. Have to have a bluff for that size. You know? Yeah. 400 big blinds deep. You got to have a bluff. Ace four suited. I mean, right? How could you play otherwise? Without the ace four suited. Bluff. Shout out Jimmy Bluffett for the $20 donation. He wants to give away 20 more free YouTube community memberships. He says, all we have to do is hit 5,000 likes. Well, there you have it. Let's just hit 5,000 likes on today's video. Jimmy Bluffett is feeling generous. Appreciate it as always, Jimmy. Thanks for all the moderation that you're doing. All right, maybe you're on what's called winner's tilt. You know, you just want to pop. Yeah, and you're all loosey-goosey. I don't like and you'll spread the kiss. Yeah. Well, you know, you're all loosey-goosey. You're like, ah, ha, 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 look at me. I'll just raise. Any two? Huh? Any Yeah. Yeah. Queen 6-3, small pair for Negranu. Angelov. With the betting lead, of course, going to keep firing. Pokemon mm -hmm. Chat pointing out that Angelov has had fives, like at least five times at this table. Ooh, a little luck for Negranu. Third heart comes in, giving Negranu two pair. Angelov checks behind. River card, the fourth heart. Oh. Might be a card that gets Daniel to fold. 
Maybe not, though. He's seen Angelo basically take an aggressive river line every time for his weakness. This is a spot where if Daniel had 60,000, his 2,500 would have been in the middle already. But because it's, you know, 10% of his remaining stack, it's a lot tougher of a call to make. Are you value betting thin? It could be. Yeah. I'm talking to Daniel Knack. Well, I could be. Not that thin. No, you wouldn't value bet worse than what I have. I don't believe. It. What do you have? Something, something. I'm allowed to say. I, I closed the action. I had a little something, something, and then it ran out really stupid. Oh, let me check. I think I didn't have it. You think you did? Pair five. Two pair. Two pair. Two oh, you 50-50 has a Phew. I thought if the five was a card or a yeah. diamond. That's a good way to bluff, though, because then you don't know. You're like, read me. I don't know. 50-50. <laughs> hey, you didn't need that five. You didn't need that five. I mean, Small it goes to show how bad the day has yeah, been. Happy with the last that one. you're getting a round of applause yeah, yeah, for a pot that's You could small. win this one or that well, one. That's that was one. half of Daniel's Leave the little stack for guys like It was like a 10K me. pot, and he's got 30,000. What did you have? He loses that, he's down to 20,000. Yeah. yeah. She said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had just tried the four. Everybody knows that. Shelby still feeling the pain. How much is Okay, so I told you. Now How much is the delay? Like 15, 20 minutes? About this? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Aces or race five? Yes. And there it is. 5,000 likes on today's video. Let's go. I hear. I have a little. Or I'll punch you in the face. <laughs> if I see you vaping, I'm going to punch you in the face. It's allowed. That's the rule. Huh? Why so aggressive? Your table That's what change. they said. You can, anybody's allowed. It's like vigilante style. <laughs> we got 40 more minutes of this current table, at least. By the way, if you're new to our YouTube channel, please make sure to subscribe. We're 16 YouTube subs away from 443,000. <coughs> John, when the pandemic started, we had 50,000 YouTube subs. Things are things are going pretty well for poker in general. Yeah, I mean, I was talking to someone at our dinner tonight. He was talking about he had two Japanese people at his table, and we're talking about how poker in Japan is blowing up. Got a couple Japanese win bracelets, a bunch of them in mixed games, everything. I think that you know the Asian market is here, and they're ready to play and they're ready to gamble. And so many great characters and ambassadors from there. You know, I was talking to Ren Lin about how. He's one of the best players at the table. Everyone loves playing with him. He's so happy-go-lucky. Like, we need more people like that. He reminds me of an Asian Daniel Negreanu. Wow, yeah, the Japanese players, Chinese oh. players, Korean players. We've seen tons of players from the Asian continent. Is Ren Japanese? I guess I was being racist. No, 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 Ren is Chinese. Oh, he's Chinese, okay. Yeah. I figured the way he said it, I was like, oh, man, I just nailed it. I got it wrong, as always. Masa Masato Yokosawa is the number one poker ambassador in Japan. I oh, that's that vlogger guy, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He has almost a million YouTube uh, subscribers. Who was the Hadouken guy from this summer? That was Shimitsu. Shimitsu, okay. That was he hilarious. was awesome, yeah. yeah. I was sweating the Josh R.A. 10K limit old final table, and that guy was smiling, having fun, having a blast, showing bluffs. It was hilarious to watch him play limit ball. Wow, Chad is popping off right now. Jesse Kirtland with a $20 donation saying, matching on behalf of Jimmy Buffett, the man is a beacon of positivity in poker, and thank you guys for the great day one commentary. And there it is, Jimmy Bluff with a 20, 20 YouTube Pokego sub donation. It's been quite the night. Daniel Negreanu brings people together. That's all I can say. It's not Ben Mins? He left. Yeah, he left again. Unreliable Ben. <laughs> no, it has been fun having you guys in the booth with me. My name is Rem Karinkama, in case you don't recognize the voice. He's in your hand and you need a card, bro. Uh, does Jeff Platt have to do the walk-up no every time he does an interview? 
It's part of his shtick. Okay, I really was wondering, like, why does he stand a table away and do the walk up every single time? It's he's a professional broadcaster, you know. He needs to have that sort of local news vibe going, where he's on the scene reporting. Channel 8 News, Jeff Platt. Once you're on the terminal floor, you're on the scene. You don't need to walk up to him. You know where you're going. It's dynamic, Sean. It's a dynamic image. A man walking is, is more exciting to look at than a man standing still. I'm exciting either time, so no one wants to look at me. Uh, back to the action here. Rigolot raising it up with Ace Deuce suited. Negranu. Come on, three bet call, Daniel. He's got like 27 bigs. He's opened a lot of hands. Don't let other people in there. And all of a sudden, show up tomorrow and you get. Uh, the dude who won last year, didn't he? That was his speech, right? He said he was down to 17K at the end of day one, then spun it up. Yeah. I'm, I'm on my way there. You can do it so fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. you win three pots. Like, double, double, double. All of a sudden, all of a sudden we got three way action no developing here. I'm really surprised to not see Negrano 3 bet here. Yeah, I just think he thought it was a little too good. Yeah, this want a lot of other people in. Got a pretty good flop for him. Rigolo yeah. not getting what he's looking for, but still has those backdoor clubs. Yeah, but Queen 10 6 pretty much nails Daniel's fighting range as a lot of Broadway hands. So even 8 9 suit is double gutted here. Bracket has bottom pair, that's why you don't call king six suited. Multi-way, just garbage hand, not small. All right, let's see if the round of applause comes back for Daniel Lee another pot. <laughs> I would love to see that. Oh, we got it! Yep, we got some strong fan. We got some of the ground and cheers going on in the background. I'm enjoying the crowd. It's two and a half hours. Appreciate it. I believe this table has not seen a single player get eliminated. Yeah, average stack is still 60,000. Yep. Angelov has almost tripled up. If he got that bluff through versus Daniel, he would have had three X starting with no one busting. Just shows you how much, like, you know, everyone's being that weak. That passive. But, you know, everyone still has plenty of play. Rigolo's down at 25 bigs, but he's definitely tried the hardest to win a lot of pots. Almost called that A6 suited. Would have doubled up and would have been almost back to starting stack that hand. Wow, David with the $5 donation saying, Rainbow, can you check threads? I asked you a question on there. See, I'm new to this app, but yeah, you can follow me on threads. Yeah, when Twitter went down for days in the series, I almost lost my mind. I'm oh. like, I play a lot of hours and I chat with people different things, and what am I do without Twitter? You gotta get on threads, it's a new thing. Uh, <laughs> Dave is asking me on threads, if you wanna send any questions, you can do so on there as well. He says, approximately how many hands of poker would you dare say are dealt each day? Online and live tournaments, it's gotta be at least several million. I mean, it sounds like a, like a lot of things kind of question, to ask about how many hands are being dealt at the World Series of Poker each day, but I mean, the number has to be astronomical. Yeah, I mean, online poker hands, there's so many so fast. Free rolls, play money, apps, I would say probably 100 million a day. Hmm? Wow. I said I have no yeah. idea, is it right? He asked you the That's wild. No clue. You're always on it. Not me, I had no, that's why I said I have no idea. He goes, is the button right? And I was like, I have no idea. And you guys were like, okay. A lot of things, one of the best ways to kill time at the poker table. Really good with a, keeper, so a game that originated, I believe, World Series Poker yeah. Europe. World Series Europe, yeah. So Antonio, says, Phil Locke, and Johnny Lott on the yep. table. That was when I was an unknown online kid traveling the world, playing high stakes, and losing every day. <laughs> but, you know, I give credit to the Dutch report. You guys are some of the first people to know me and notice me because, you know, I was friends with a couple of the Dutch guys, uh, Got You Red, and. Uh, uh, Lex and different people. So like, I was on your radar much earlier than most media people. Oh yeah, for sure. We always gave you some love. I remember um, getting. I mean, I, you and I are, I think, the same age. Um, I remember getting really drunk at EPT Monte Carlo, and you were like playing like 20 tables on your laptop uh, on a Sunday yeah. at that bar. You know, inside outside bar. Yeah. It was just phenomenal times. It feels like 20 years ago now. Well, it was it over 15, probably. It was over 15 years ago, which is pretty <laughs> insane. We're getting old, Sean. I've been old, man. I got called old school generation like five times this summer. And I'm just <laughs> like, and I think back, I was like, 
Well, when I start watching poker on TV, Jawanda, Ivy, Negrano were all late 30s. Like, right. I'm the age they were on TV. How y'all doing? It's so weird to me to be like, I don't want to compare myself to them, but like, I feel like it's a similar level of, you know, notoriety that they had at those stages. Like, I wasn't known as the best, but I was known as a competent player who wins a lot and plays a lot. Big cooler here. Bracket has the trip queens versus the aces. Yeah, my wife. If he puts in a raise, I think we're gonna see some action. He said he just calls. Let's go. I'm I'm doing wow. my best, bro. <laughs> okay. Trips versus well, aces. We're on the comeback with a complete here. blank on the turn. Bracket probably should have raised the flop here. Uh, I mean the way this table's playing, I actually don't like raising. Uh, everyone's playing so passive. Calling is perfectly fine. And also, you know, he doesn't have the absolute nuts. There, Rosen definitely would raise queen jack, king queen, ace queen, pocket sevens. So you're not super excited. I mean, you have effectively like the fifth nuts here. But if your opponent's willing to put money in, it's not too much. Yeah, go to the guy with 2.5 starting stacks. He's more change guy than the guy with starting stack. Rosen best 2200 with his aces. Action now on bracket. I mean, Raising on the four doesn't seem to make any sense. No, I, I think you got to. Uh, but this is such a small bet that you can raise it. A little too small of a raise. Boy, you just you're really trying to kill me, aren't you? I'm, I'm I was like, well, there's no way he can lean back in these chairs. I'm safe oh, now. No, <laughs> no, chair. Never mind. Exact same chair I got. Is it? Yeah, I brought mine, special. The old uh, school chair of the people. <laughs> it wouldn't be a World Series book without any chair debates. Hey, you know, people complain about it. I've always been fine with it. Um, I think there's a big, lot of improvements here. Uh, Rosa, meanwhile, makes the call. We go to the river cart. 15.5K in the middle. Not too much more than pot size left behind for bracket here. But that's why I like a little bit bigger turn size. Easier to get it in on the river? Yeah. Okay. Shout out to Nathan Watt. $10 donation says, Ben Min sounds like Patrick Mahomes. His voice exudes excellence. You said that about Ben Min's? His Have you been listening to the same commentary we've been listening to? His voice. The sound of his voice, Sean. Yeah, he, he I, I, I know. I'm, I know the sound of his voice. He wasn't saying about the content. <laughs> Uh, 7,000 is the bet here from Bracket. Listen, I'm usually all for only making fun of people when they're here, but Ben Men's left the post. He went MIA again. It's the story of the summer. Where is Ben? That's going to be my new segment with Poker Go. We're just going to look around all the cubby holes of the, the uh, valleys and Horseshoe, or Horseshoe and Paris. Rosen makes the call and sees the bad news here. Queen is going to be shown by Bracket, and aces are cracked at the feature table. I mean, for all the shit we give Ben Mintz, one of the most positive guys that I know of, such a good energy guy. Really hope he's that been he bringing the energy to you because he hasn't been bringing it to me. You you seem pretty whiny to, for someone as successful as you are. Pretty whiny. Do you, wow. Do you need do you need all the extra attention all the time? Yes. <laughs> My wife and kids uh, yeah, don't give sitting up for a couple hours. Poker community has to. I wonder why. I wonder why. John Rice with the five dollar donation, letting us know he's in the bathroom right now. Oh, oh Ben Mintz is okay. No, John is. In the oh, bathroom. okay. <laughs> I thought you found Ben. It's like a game of Where's Waldo. Oh. I might have to, uh, you know, put out a little Twitter bounty for a photo of Where's Ben right now. See who can find him. I hope he's all right. Grano 5-3 suited. He's going to play those cards that made him famous, so to say. Or no, that was Gus Hansen. Negrano more of a small ball player. I think it was like the 5-4 clubs or some of Daniel's favorite, most memorable hands. Shelby ain't scared. She's got the same hand, different Oh, suit. I love it. You, you, I mean, you, Shelby, of course, perhaps went a little bit too wild with the jacks there. But overall, I'm really impressed with how comfortable she is on this stage. Yeah, she's definitely clearly been at feature tables before. All right, Daniels <laughs> got unlucky that the big blind woke up with a hand, and he had a fold. Okay. 
What's the best Gatorade flavor? I survived. Uh, great. <laughs> I get points for surviving. No, horrible. <laughs> Tastes like soap. I made it to the no. next dealer. All right. I'm not a fan. <laughs> Let me guess. You're a lemon lime guy. Yep, no. Keep making it to the next dealer. Punch. <laughs> orange. Orange. Yeah. I love orange everything, but orange Gatorade. It tastes like this. <laughs> no. Grape, grape, or grape is the worst because it tastes like soap to me. It tastes like... What actual. soap have you eaten? I've had. What so soap do you guys have in the Netherlands? Like dish soap. It has that same sort of... like. It, the How much dish soap have you eaten? Were you that much? You cursed that much as a kid? <laughs> your mom kept squirting the dawn down your mouth? Wow. Somehow. Can't do the grape flavors. Can't do grape. grape of anything? No, I don't like it. I like grapes. Grape jelly. Do you also. like wine? I love wine. Okay. Yeah. Also, not a fan of, of like if I'm making a PB and J, it has to be strawberry. Stop. Yeah, I'm serious. You're a psychopath. <laughs> it has to be strawberry. Do you call it jelly or jam? Jam. Okay. Is, is that okay? I mean, you're European, so I think that's what you guys know. Like all my Brit friends, you know, Andrew Tang and the mm. like, always made fun of me for calling it jelly. Like, what is this jelly thing? I'm like, jam is different to us. It's like it's. A little different oh, texture. Oh, it's, it's high class. Oh, well, there's like I think preserve, it's, like a preserve. Yeah, it's more like a jam, like a chutney, almost. Yeah. Peanut butter, smooth or 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 chunky. Chunky is awful. I hate like what? Whole nuts feeling of almost anything. It's terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no way. Sure. It's awful. I, I don't Watching like cream peanut butter. TV. What? No, it has to be has to have the little chunks in it. A little crunch. Crunch is good for, in, on everything. You want crunch on everything? Yeah, put perfect. potato chips on your sandwiches. I would love that. It's the that's <laughs> that, my brother did that as a kid, and I stole that. You know, a good turkey sandwich with, with lettuce, little and butter, and uh, it's like lazy potato chips, the ruffles said. or something. Really you good. You said a totally different word. Yeah, it's the same thing. Though. Chad has never gone more wild than in the last three minutes. You guys don't have bananas <laughs> and stuff. Like well, yeah, you start talking about food with Sean no and Remco. Yeah. It's gonna no bring bananas. up a feisty debate. Huh. Yeah. The same. Uh, oh, Angela, I know. Meanwhile, does what he does best. Megan hands winning pots. Yeah, but he could have won yeah. a bigger pot there. Banana. We've known about the similar amount of. Yeah, let me play this hand for a day. Gail says yeah, you want commentators some talk a lot of BS. Yeah. It's day one of the main event. We got we got to keep it we got to keep it lighthearted. I mean, listen, I'm I'm all for letting the table speak in the hands. I think you know there's more stuff going on. I gotta say this uh, old school World Series yeah, play in the background yeah. has been awesome all series. Uh, seeing, you know, some of the hands, some of the young people, recognizing people in the crowd who became somebody later on, seeing young Galfon, seeing a young me. It's uh, it's so nostalgic to see some of those episodes. Such great product, and I just think, you know, every year the main event's on, more and more stories are made, and more and more people are going to meet over the next decade or two are going to become more notable. Yeah, it's always funny to me when I rewatch main events from recent years <laughs> and how often anyone who makes final two tables becomes a big name in the future. Well, yeah, it's like it takes skill to get deep in a 10,000 person slow structure tournament. And also they have the bankroll now to play more events. I'm sorry? No, I haven't mentioned the outpost. I actually haven't mentioned my company at all. He's going out of business next week. Yeah, whenever, whenever they're like, drugs <laughs> Angela, yeah, exactly. like I really do have to ask you guys next time I'm talking. Getting a call from Rosen in the big line. Like, we're important. <laughs> it's a good talking point. Yeah. Rosen flopping. Yeah. The dummy end of the opening is straight draw here. We're pretty well known. Maybe so. that should be your tagline. Like Danny Lagrani is big. I should put that. Daniel, take on the crown here and doors. Thank you. You got it. Look at Daniel going to sign a bunch of stuff for the fans, take some photos. Got if you're Rosen here, pretty unplayable straight draw. Yeah, we yeah. talked about you know the low end straight draws, and even you could be drawing dead. He could have ace queen, you know queen nine. Yeah, There's just not many good things. There's a heart on the board. Maybe in America they do, in with Japan the backdoor flush draws. So much better. So respectful like this. You know, I bow. See, he knows. But this shaking hands, we got to eliminate that. It's, we got to make that not cool. It's just such a silly thing. Like, it's, it's, or just bow, like Japanese. <laughs> What's more respectful than that? Lower my head to you. Negrano making this rounds in between hands. 
Nothing. He's got walking chips now. He's up yeah. to over half starting. It's like peak for him. He must he must feel extra confident. I'm okay, thank you. After but, having won a few small pots. I mean, this is definitely a table well, where you're short. It's been so passive, it's not so bad. Come on, Bracket. If you're going to raise Daniel on the ground, I'm going to limp. you got to put a little mustard on it. Yeah, 1,200 is not going to get it done. Ooh, oh, wow. That's definitely not get done versus the Kings. Tavalara is all of a sudden perks oh, up, okay, finds the Kings sense. on the button. Yeah, we already got it. We got one of the best dealers, Dominic, in the box. Dealer of the year last year, I believe. Always a perennial candidate for that. Unfortunately, I didn't see him much this year because I didn't make enough final tables. 4,500 is Limping is pimping, y'all. Limping is pimping. You too? You folded? What the hell was that? I had a better hand than you. For sure. No, you didn't, Daniel. You raised? If you just lived, we would have... Well, he would have screwed his crop either way. Yeah, but less, and then we could have seen the flop and greedy. <laughs> Daniel, you don't want to see the flop with King Queen off versus Kings. Very few flops you're happy with. You were screwed. He saved I you. I was actually completing out of turn, to be honest. I didn't, I didn't realize he had cards. <laughs> I would have no, smashed you. Let's try that again. There we go. But Greece got in the way. George the Greek got in the way from the button. Tikani Scala. Malakakis Menos. <laughs> Rigolo finding ace nine suited. Action Bolson Negrano in the big line is going to lay it, lay it down. And let me just say once more, thanks all so much for tuning in. It's been an awesome stream. We've got so many people watching, 26,000 people watching on YouTube, several thousand as well on Bogro. Much love to everyone. Please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel while you're at it. You go out and you're like, yeah, when I was dating, I'm engaged. Whatever, you could do the whole Wolf of Wall Street thing, you know? Stay out of trouble. I can see you being that guy. Gotta stay, gotta stay out of trouble. You were probably really bad. I was that guy. I'm staying, I'm staying out of trouble. Now. You just have that vibe. My, my, my 20s were. You were bad. A bad, bad man. My 20s were not. A bad boy. Most, bad man. The most honest guy. Then you became an honest drug guy. dealer. <laughs> an honest drug dealer. <laughs> I call you Pablo. My friend Pablo. He's a drug dealer. Yeah, you said you have, to say, you have to say Outpost now. You have to say my company. What's your name? last name? Shorman. Cartel. Going with the caffeine, Sean. I like it. Yeah, I had it's called the Medellin Outpost Cartel. Medellin Outpost Cartel. I love this. I mean, we have a board report at the end of this month. It's, it's 200 board. milligrams of caffeine. I'll be like, well, right. new marketing strategy. I don't really have caffeine that often. We're going to embrace narcotics. I usually avoid the caffeine. Well, I don't avoid it. I just don't have much of it, but I vape. So, you know, nicotines, caffeine have a lot of similar effects on the body. So you might be up all night. Is that 25 or Whatever. 35? I have tomorrow off. I have to just wake up for the turbo at 3.30. Try to, you know, get some more online cash just to battle with Ian and uh, Brewer and the other, you know, POI contenders. What's that? In the Mincash Championships. Oh. Hey, now. It isn't 2017 all over again. There's no Chris Ferguson cashing the Giant for 17 times. Respect the formula. You'd rather they be waiting like this. Right, right, right now, right now, you're three times. Kelby Wilson with a three bet. Eight four suited. Rose at the back over the top. 10,500. Put that behind you. Know, you picked the well, good spot to three bet. Guy after playing a lot of pots. And unfortunately, someone woke up and just let it go, Shelby. No one's picking on you. They have good hands. Sometimes they get killed. Yeah, she seems very distrusting. People are giving me their business plan. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, some women in poker think that men are out to get them, but it's the main event. They don't see her as a weak spot. She's been playing really well, really active, getting some value bets in, playing a lot of pops. set up a private game, and then another one was like, I have this new deck of cards, and another one is a business in Europe. I can't listen to that now. I need a break. It's some of the solver streets. The suited ace wheel cards, those are the hands to mess with. Do not jam. Oh, what are you doing? Calling. Negotiate a uh, bodyguard from Caesars. Shelby makes the call, ace four suited. Just, just trying to see the flop here. Jack nine eight, one club. It's definitely a flop she can win versus ace king when he checks back. But also ace and kings would also check back this board. Something worse than me. Obviously. 
Yeah, someone told you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they did. Yeah. I almost mean, flatted. Yeah. That would have trapped you. If I flatted, you uh, might have to three bet there. Probably. Yeah. When I three bet you, I had king. I wanted to call when you had ace queen and he did. Well, well up to 140, 40k roughly yeah, earlier today. I can't I believe he's choosing to see that this vortex on his hand. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, it's damn, gonna right. work, but man, that's a risky, risky bet. No. How are you not gonna three bet? Shelby Wells not happy with herself. I'm saying I would have trapped you at least for something. Maybe, maybe it comes queen high. If Wells I'm now game. back down to 85k. Hey, I just keep. Keep the, still second keep at this table. On, you know? 85k is a good day in the main. No reason to feel yeah. like you know Plain you're up stuck in there. Why do the dump. pushing when no the donkey idea. will do the pulling? You know, you get it? Like why do the pushing yeah, of the cart when the donkey will do the pulling? Let him pull. Let him pull. Why do the pushing when the donkey sure. will do the pulling? Today's from tomorrow this year to 1200. Racket gonna call with the nines. Not that one, no. The previous one you and I played with the king. Stop. I do try. I don't know why I can't. You're not the first person I think that's slow down. I tell you when I do, I can't turn my mic on. I tell you when I do this. All right, Dean. Hits his three out of preparing the ace. Not much for bracket. Yeah, you don't love really Ace wouldn't. 10X with a flush draw. You have no back door. In a couple of years, I'll probably get like bought out of everything and just try to you know, just relax for the first time of my life. Yeah, it's 1700. Have no responsibility. Just relax. A little half pot action and gets a fold. I've been I've been super fortunate. Honestly, yeah, I've been, worked my ass off. I've been super. You're probably older than you. Can you give me the purple. Got all your hair. Uh, I'm 36. You know, if you're playing the main event, you're at a table like this. Everyone's kind of calling flops to make the nuts, which seems kind of crazy because no one's really paying the off the big bets. So when you start getting called in these spots, you should be very afraid with one pair of hands because they're trying to make you know trips or flushes or straights. So it's been very, very passive, very nitty. Not really people besides um, you know Angelo really going for the spots and saying, okay, these people are capped range. They're playing snug here. They're gonna fold a huge part of their hands, all the draws missed, and I'm just gonna stab because 13. I have enough good hands that they're just gonna fold. 12 did not work last time. Uh, started the hand with 37. You can do anything here with a set off, three bet or flat. Three Daniel's eight. noticing his table, three decides seven. to go for the three bet. Bracket snap folds the king queen. Starting to feel picked on, bro. Fairly open. Now, Shortman oh, notices that Dane went a little bit smaller here than he did with Kings. A little, more. I a little action. Yeah, fair enough. What was it, 36? Yep. You get 14 back. You get change and everything. Yeah, I get more, more chips back than I put in. Put in one chip, got back five. Check. I came back at the right time, I see. Daniel got a little frisky with a three bet. He's got a little bit of equity here with the ace 10 with the 10 of spades. Daniel's content to show down his ace high. He may even call a river bet now that the board's double paired. 2800. 2800? 2800 is the bet. Daniel hands pretty face up here. Usually I'm a little happier if they bet bigger in this spot than smaller. But based on how Schwarman's have play, I'm not gonna expect too many like 7x or 9x hands. Reason. And Schwarman's like, oh, I got the exact same value hand, but slightly better, two tens. One better than two eights. Daniel's reads are spot on. Hand and then pay it off? Probably. 
Old oh, school Daniel coming back. Oh, a little better. Huh? Tens. Tens or eights? Yeah. No, I was thinking either. Sixes is the other one that I counterfeit, right? That you can. Well, yeah, that you will. Negrano once again trending in the wrong direction. If you're just tuning in, this is day 1C of the World Series Poker Main Events. My name is Rem Parinkama. Sean Deeb alongside me. We're both enjoying some caffeinated beverages. Let us know in the chat where you're watching from. It's been a long day. It's been a long night. Earlier, we called the action on the 5K No Limit Hold'em final table. Dominating performance by Sam Soverell. If you missed that, you can find it on demand as well. If you're catching us live right now on YouTube, please you know, engage with us, chat with us, like the video, subscribe to the channel. We're trying to spread the word on the most amazing tournament of the year. And we, we just established there's 13 more days of this, which is kind of insane. Yeah. <laughs> it's also insane that the World Series Poker has been going on for 35 days Oh, so my far. God, yes. Yeah, I mean, what a crazy grind for all of us. You I know? mean, for, for you especially, with all the years you've been playing, you know, you've, you've played, you've, you've spent over a year of your life in World Series poker tournaments, basically. More than, probably two. <laughs> <laughs> two at this point. Yeah. It, it's probably been about a year and a half. I mean, there were so many 14 and 16 hour days, and including some of the online sessions. You right. Know, oh, yeah. Definitely probably two years of my life. Yeah, while in a World Series poker. That's so insane. Like at the table, not even including like the 12 hours while sleeping. <laughs> That's, you know, another two years of my life. Uh, Shelby Wells going back to the aggression here. Three betting from the big blind with ace queen suited. Negranu, seven eight suited. I think he's going to peel versus less than 3x here. Hand plays good post flop. Shelby's been on the downtrend. She's definitely three bets, some weaker hands. And yep, Daniel's going to see a flop. Interesting flop. She flops a gut shot. Daniel flops a straight draw and a backdoor flush draw. He's going to take his equity. If a jack comes, it's going to be bad news. Ooh, the king of diamonds. What a beautiful card for Daniel. Only bad thing about that card is it's tough to really reps because Queens or Jacks are now a lot more excited when the King pairs because they have a straight draw and it's less lucky as a King. But he's definitely going to take this small of a price and try to hit one of his draws. Oh. You know, he's If he saw the cards, he'd be rooting for the Jack of Diamonds on the river. That's definitely the, i probably get a full double up card. River is the eight of spades. Negrano gets the check mark here with the pair of eights. But it's still tough to call. I mean, you have right. fourth pair in a three-bet pot versus the big blind. Who's going to check the... Oh, sweet. Daniel's going to get the free showdown here. Check. And he's going to be so happy that he got there. Pair of eights. Big draw on the turn. <laughs> this is massive for Negrano. Yeah. Didn't want to hit that jack, though. Jack would have been bad. And his crowd goes wild. Mild. <laughs> Still waiting for like a big the offer. crowd goes very mild. <laughs> We're just talking about how yeah, much that's for the final for table. That's not here. How much you get offered like to wear a patch? No, nothing. Literally nothing. I do remember there was a time when all the companies were just like, "Oh, you're on the future table, fifty trading money." Out. Yeah. The players are referencing the old school patch deals. If you ever got a featured table, you could get ten to $20,000 a day for wearing a patch from Full Tilt or Poker Stars. I unfortunately never got a dollar of those. There was a, uh, a Dutch player who was a qualifier who was right, offered. I thought of Dave Minoski here, mainly because of the hat, but you're looking sharp. Why the, why the red get up? Well, uh, I was in a league in, uh, in uh, St. Pete. Derby Lane poker, and uh, uh, one guy was named Dave, and he, well, two guys was named Dave, okay. and I had the red hat. So they split us up, red hat Dave and the other Dave. So now I got to stay with the red hat for now on. And this is the elite? And it's my fra favorite color. Too. Okay, that works. It's yeah. the elite Tampa Bay Poker That's League. Right. How many of y'all are out here for the main? Uh, I think 14, maybe? 14 12? of you? Yeah, 14. How big is the league? Well, it's two seasons. Okay. 20 week in the fall, 20 week in uh, in the spring and summer. 
and uh, good good poker players. Uh, 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 very competitive league, and uh, 20 weeks after 20 weeks, the top eight seats, eight, eight players with the most points. Okay. Well, we're happy to have you here. I'm going to send you back just so you don't miss a hand thank right now. But thank, thank you very much, thanks, Dave. Thanks, appreciate thanks. that. Thanks. Hurry, hurry, just Listen. so you don't miss it. Did you make it back in time? We, we got it. All right, perfect. Guys, back to you. Jeff Cloud, man of the people. Redhead Dave, not missing any hands here. But, but that's a pretty good competitive league at eight seats. That's Eighty thousand dollars a season. Was up, right? Yeah, we were already having good at math. Then. Ben wouldn't have figured <laughs> yeah, that out. We were, you know, we're gonna do the math for you guys. That's one hundred and sixty k a year. Yeah, that's a big lead. <laughs> wow. I you absolutely fail love the fourteen players energy. from the home game in yeah. the main events. Everyone says one of my favorite things is a lot of those uh, home game leagues. What they do is the person who wins the seat gets half of the buy-in, and the other 50% are split up between other players. I think that's one of the greatest things you could do. Everyone has a piece, you get a little bit of equity back, and you set your best horse forward. It is so yeah, cool it, to it. hear about all the local leagues in the U.S. across the country. It's in small towns and big cities. It's just incredible how many of those there are. That's you! And especially in places where poker isn't legal, you can still do that, yeah. which is cool. You're welcome. Play for the points, send one guy to the main event. What's that? All got a few pieces. What's your Angelos podcast? with a great hand to bluff what? here. Queen high, gut shot, flush draw, and gets the third pair. Yeah. He's playing so well today. I think he's going to be real happy with his decisions, applying some pressure. Why am I not? Gotta get yeah. Getting yeah. <laughs> You can take a picture. I'm not even in it. Who cares? I'll play this hand, and I'll come there. I promise. Scout's yeah, honor. play so tight here, because no one wants to look like an asshole. In case you're just tuning in, Negrano has been getting up in between almost every hand to take photos. It's crazy. I think he's done more photos than one hands today. Yeah, definitely. What is he up to? Uh, 13, 13 hands one. He's definitely taking more than 13 photos. Oh, yeah. At the, at the uh, horseshoe. Okay. Feature Coming table. right at you. <laughs> what do we need, my dear? No, oh, you're sweet. Here, let me do it because I'm a pro. I'm <laughs> Good luck. I mean, I'm Friday. Judge Smales on PokerGo Chat says, Angelov recognized early how to treat this type of table. Bang, bang, bang. They'll fold unless it's nutted. For sure. And he's played really well and abused some of their ranges and had some great spots. And, you know, he almost won a massive pot with Aces versus Jacks. And Shelby got a little more sticky. I just, the first time wearing, they're trade of rest. I love that company. Not that bad, but you can go north to Maine and south to Rhode Island. It's fucking so dirty. Davey just pointing out that WSB themselves tweeted to re register tonight if you're playing tomorrow. They're trying to avoid massive lines. I think they're anticipating a big one tomorrow. Yeah, as they should. Beer level's uh, next level, right? You know, it's going to be 10-handed tomorrow. Every dealer's going to be here that they can get. There's going to be so many tables. It's going to be a bad house, and it's the way it should be. Because i got a day off tomorrow anyway. Daniel, you don't have a day off tomorrow. There's a... Four, or what is it, a $400 turbo yeah, I over, bracelet event at 3.30. No days there. off, I except I took one today off. off. I decided to join come Remco because at this point Donnie's big fault. time down <laughs> yeah, now. I haven't figured, it out. Of this I haven't figured it out at this now point, it's my fault. Yeah. Yeah. First first couple of rounds, you know. Yeah. Must be nice to just play the main event. Have you ever played at Remco? No, I've always said that. Once I play it once, I want to play it every year. So I, I kind of am putting it off. I think I could I could sell action. And I mean, you know, Josh there. Aria poker stake. <laughs> he would love a little right, Dutch action. Down money, but I've done. I think I think I think it probably. I just haven't will done play at some point. So like Here's uh, Keegan dropping off some bio sheets because we've got a bit of news for the people volume. watching right now. Let me get it, like, get to that. I have the table bombed down a little bit. I think yeah, we got a little spoiler already. I slipped up. Forgot how much of a delay we had. <laughs> I got a text and I was like, "Oh, it's gonna be 30 minutes." So yeah. yeah. I have an idea of what I'm gonna play, but it all depends on how I'm doing. So if I'm still in something. I'm like I was gonna play two small pairs below, battling here. This do. time, Rigolot has the hand that Angelov usually has. How have you been doing? Uh, I play only two or two on the floor. So not good. <laughs> well, hey, well, we don't know what happened in the first one. Without the mess. When he starts with the qualifier. Hey, listen, it's only two turns. Okay. okay. <laughs> Relax. I did 
Duke and the uh, Millennium yeah. Maker. You did? Good for you. I really hope Rigalock shows the fives like I had you to the river. <laughs> and Angel's like, I know you still had me on the river. It's one of my favorite bluffs to show is when both pairs get negated and you win with the smaller one. Kareem is asking, what are the payouts? Well, tomorrow we're going to be add determined. A, we're going to add about 5,000 players to the tournament, so the payouts are going to be announced late on day two. It's going to be yeah, 10 million or over 10 million for first. Any, yeah. It'll be the biggest first. I think. I, I do. I think, we, we're, I think they're going to try this to make it bigger, bigger, bigger than 12. Well, I was like, I'm going to practice five. yesterday. I think. I think. Fifteen. I think it might get. Who knows, man? They're paying 50 percent. It's a little bit harder. Not as often. Right. It's 10,000 people gave me time to play. Like the rooms aren't, you know, built to hold that normally, right? And I just want to state that's not said enough how much nicer like Horseshoe players. and uh, Paris is. Cool. Yes, the rooms are a little further apart, yeah. but the food yeah. option, the rooms, 20, you know, 23, so much more space. All we have left seconds. from the Rio is nostalgia. You know, the, the nostalgia of the Amazon room, it's kind of a cool name. You know, there, there's something about spending more than a whole year of your life in that building, but we all have to admit that this is a much better venue. I mean, I, I do miss the, the, the secret back halls that we all knew. Yes, I had 40 bits. and uh, <laughs> the, 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 the parking spots and the in and out were pretty yeah. easy. The RVs good. were beautiful for yep. those who had them. So we got a little interesting hand. Bracket decided to limp the King Jack off. Edgelove loves to raise, loves pocket pairs. He keeps winning without them, without a set. Is Rosen gonna get a little frisky? He decided, great spot to three bed, Rosen. Well done. <laughs> Got to be a little careful there, uh, throwing the chips in there. Could be oh, oh, a good call. Be serious. Oh, I I played through the chips in actually before he folded. People. You got to be really careful in tournaments about what you do with your chip things. I actually had a hand of day one versus a uh, really good high stakes player who misclicked, raised in a spot where I knew he meant to call, but because it's a tournament, you have to enforce the rules equally. Not a fan of this defend with deuces. Does not flop well enough. I know he's running people over, but it's just too shallow a stacks to be flatting. Deuces, calling it 10% of stacks. Ace eight six on this flop. Rosen flops top pair. Well, I hope nobody pitches you. you know, sometimes break. you have your, I hope you have your enjoyable foot break. Put on the pedal of the table. You gotta lay off. Like, okay, this guy who hasn't played back played back. I know I have a pocket pair. I know I can flop a set and win another sixty thousand. But I'm just going to miss it too often. <laughs> Angelov knows that he can't continue here. And uh, yeah, a little update about our table for the final level. We have to switch tables. It's, it's a little bit of technicality here, but I'll let you guys look in on a little bit of a background here. We wanted to keep the Grounders table. We were told that he is close to being in the breaking order, meaning that we would have to end the stream when the table breaks. We didn't want to end the stream, so we're going to switch tables. And uh, we're going to get a fun table. So I'm excited because I thought by me announcing we're switching the table that people were like, oh, Daniel's going to bust, because that's what I thought after I announced it. So I'm so happy. It's because of the breaking order. We are high in tension. main event players in the earth. Start the river, complete the current hand. You're on a 20 minute break. 20 minute break in the main event. 20 minute break. So high integrity people don't change the breaking bar just for the feature table. Oh, it's good. unfair to those players. Are we breaking the table or we're just moving the whole table back? Okay, we're right I came here and I'm like, I don't want a good throw like this. Yeah, so we're moving this table back into the field. We would have kept it otherwise, but it is uh, coming up soon in the breaking yeah. order. We got a little, we might have a little oh, wow. action. Yeah, yeah action. Wow. A little aces or Shelby who loves to call three bets. She's got nine, ten of diamonds. I'm good with that. We're going to see him flop as long as he doesn't make it too big. He definitely didn't make it too big with only a few yellows in there. It's like about 30 Once again, we players, we are on a 20 minute break. We do ask you to exit the tournament area during this break so we can do some maintenance. 20 minute break for the main event. We'll come back and play one more level. And once again, a friendly courtesy reminder there is no vaping in the room. <laughs> They have to announce that like every five minutes about the vaping. Yeah, I, I won't say if I am bad at following that rule, but I'm sure Daniel hates when I'm in the room. That's all I'll say. I think one of my favorite stories about Daniel with smoking is uh, last year at Kings, we're at a final table, and you know Daniel gets very 
uh, you know, bad allergies or whatever, reaction to smoke. And he knows that someone's smoking a cigarette near him, and he, he stands up at the table, looks around, and sees Paul Poit puffing on a cigarette. So he sits back down and doesn't say anything. <laughs> you know, Daniel knows the hierarchy of the poker world. Hey, wait. Guess who we found? I mean, look at this flop, by the way, in this hand. Oh, wow. Shelby Wells getting involved here. 10-9 of diamonds on 10-8-6 with two diamonds. This is getting really juicy. She's a favorite here mathematically versus aces with the ace of diamonds. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Rosen can't really three-bet and get it in. You've been playing popular. Just call, see some clean turns. Don't want to go broke with one pair, but you're definitely going to call because there's a lot of draws on this board, and she doesn't raise just sets, obviously. But, wow. you know, the X's are drastically going to change on the turn. The problem with him, having the ace of diamonds blocks her from having the nut flush draw, but if she does turn a flush, he's probably calling a bet with the nut flush redraw. Already 19K in the middle. 83? 83. If you're, if you're Rosen, how do you continue here? Uh, well, this is why when you three-bet pre so small, Checking back this flop is perfectly reasonable. She has way more nutted hands than he does, so you actually want to control the pot, uh, the pot size. But if you do see bet like he did small, you're definitely calling a check raise. Turn card is the jack of hearts. More equity for uh, Shelby here. She turns now an open-ended straight draw. Shelby has 43% equity versus aces with a pair of tens. And I like this sizing. If bets small, it allows her to price herself in to get there. If she bets really big, he might just jam with his queens, kings, ace, or he might turn a set of jacks. So by betting this amount, she guarantees herself to see a river versus a lot of his better hands. And even if he has ace, king, or ace, queen, or king, queen of diamonds, he's not necessarily going to raise with the draw. He might be like, oh, look at this price I'm getting inside the call. Now, what if the river is a blank after Rosen calls? What does Shelby do there? Because given the fact that she got three bet before the flop, you know, she can take credit for a lot of coordinated hands here. Could she turn her hand into a bluff? I personally don't like it. Um, it's in a normal term, and I think I would, but I, I look at Rosen, and I just think this is not the guy who's willing to fold, uh, you know, an overpair versus uh, Shelby, who's been the second by far active player at the table behind Angelo. Cool. Call is made. Massive river card upcoming here. Shelby Wells with a ton of outs. And she bricks on the river as the five of club hits. If you bet, you got to bet big, Shelby. Oh. That is not enough. The question I have is, what, what does she think she's accomplishing with this bet? That's. I mean, it definitely looks valuable. Like, Rosen is not excited. 12K is like, please call me, please call me. Wow. Wish she would have bet more. Yep. Exactly what I was thinking. That That, that is, is genius. King Jack of Diamonds, Queen Jack of Diamonds. He's, he's going to say it. He's going to say 10-9 of Diamonds. I don't think he thinks that 10-9 of Diamonds would bet that small. Jack 10 of Diamonds would be sick. This sounds like a man who's never folding. One of those crying calls you don't want to make. Oh. Yep. Sure, go ahead and head to your new seat, please. Ace is shown, and Shelby Wells started off so strong, ending here at the feature table, down to 47,000. Still, no, you know, no bust out for her, but it's going to feel the table breaks very, my very fans bad. Out. All my fans All right. just showed up. These players are going to go on a break. We're going to cut this break out. Tough hand. You guys stay tuned. We are not taking a break. So give us just a minute or so, and we'll continue the action for I'm the gonna last need a couple level racks of the night.
All right, welcome back to the action. We have a table switch for the final level of the night. As I mentioned before, we could not keep Negreanu's table because it was next up in the breaking order. I think it was three tables away. Uh, Sean, for the people that are going to be mad in the chat right now, please explain what's going on here with us changing tables. Well, yeah, they're gonna, they are gonna—they were in the breaking order, so we keep the integrity of the tournament. And so instead of losing the stream halfway through the last level, we decided to show you the beautiful Jeremy Osmus and the very chiseled Mike Dentali table. Yeah, so what it means is that there's a, a table order uh, or a table breaking order that they have to adhere to. They're not going to change that because Negrano's at the table because he's on our stream. Right, and if the table were to break, we would not be able to bring a table back onto the stream because we can't just pause the tournament to facilitate the live stream. So there you go. Uh, Jeremy Osmus, Mike Dentali at the table. Sean, you told me earlier Mike Dentali had a few glasses of wine during dinner. Yes. And actually, uh, he told us about a hand Mike, watch his that uh, Matthew in the RF poker. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, uh, I, I should actually let me text to get the name of appreciate that company it, it. because uh, one of my best friends and her friend to Mincy, Dan Wyman, works for RF What's your poker. first name again? Oh, God. David. David, we're going to give you the 3-9. That's your hand. Uh, they had sent about 12 yeah, players. Three, nine, they are David, a new poker great. company with RFID what tables. And the they're based out of Atlanta, <laughs> startup, and uh, the owner just yeah, won a satellite. Yeah. He was actually at dinner with us very briefly at the you end. Time, right? And his father plays the main event, Previous first time ever. Right? Yeah. I yeah. met him, Manesh, great guys. Um, and uh, I think it's a great poker company for the future. Uh, they have some really cool ideas. Wow. Love to see some innovation as six-time bracelet winner Jeremy Osmond is there in the one seat. Fellow six-time bracelet <laughs> winner. <laughs> Fellow. He has just Did anybody many. ever won as many that in that quick a time? I guess back in the day when the fields were smaller. No one ever did that, Mincy. That's that's fast, six bracelets? Yeah. I mean, most people won three in a year, but I don't think anyone ever won three and two the year before or year right. after. Right. I mean, it, he's, he's been on. Well, to be fair, there were three World Series in those 21 months. But no, obviously, he's a great player, good mixed game player, amazing Nolan and PLO player. His 50K PLO final table was one of the most entertaining final tables, being three-handed with the one and only Daniel Legrano and the world's greatest, Phil Hummel. That was one of my favorite streams to ever watch. And the best thing about that stream was at the end when uh, Phil busted, who, was it Daniel busted third, right? Yeah. The uh, the 50K PLO yeah. high roller? Yeah, Negrano busted third. Daniel busted third, called me up and said, Sean, wait do you see how bad Phil played. I owned him every hand. When Phil busted heads up, he called me an hour later and said, Sean, wait do you watch this stream and see how bad I played. I'll play Daniel. And I watched it back, and they both uh, had some questionable PLO heads. But they're obviously <laughs> great tournament players. And, uh, yeah, it was just hilarious that I was the first person they both called, I think, to talk about, you know, knowing my PLO tournament results. They thought I was the uh, person. Then, Tali, what are you doing with the ace-three off, buddy? You say how bad you run. Fold your gut shots. We got two hours left here on the day. They want to see the main events. Massive turnout. We've been told it's over 3,000 players in today's flight alone. Both day 1A and day 1B were over 1,000. And then tomorrow, as Sean said, usually day 1D is A, B, and C combined. So. And then the day two buy-ins too. And yeah. the day two buy-ins is a very good point. And I feel like the Saturday, like I said, the Saturday day two is a sneaky spot for a bunch of people to hop in. But, you know. Well, I think a lot of people are going to come tomorrow, see the lines, and say, "I'll just buy in on day two. I don't want to wait that long." So we're suggesting everyone that the cage is open 24 hours here. You can buy in online through a credit card with TABIC set up. And we already have a little more action than uh, we had at our previous table. Yeah, pots are getting bigger here. Average stack oh, is 68,000, yeah. meaning we had at least one elimination here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, by the way, Sean, we got some questions coming in on Poco Chad relating to POY. Uh, people wondering if you're still going to try and take it down. Is it still your top priority? Main event. Yes. Is this for you? Really? I, I always try to say most years I try, oh. try to have be within one bracelet 20. and winning a bracelet having my start I did I knew I was going to be in the hunt oh, the whole way and that's why I put on I the uh, poker, you know, I think I played that many workouts games. on hold uh, right see why so yeah Sean going strong here. for POY yeah it's bright yeah, lots I, of work like to be it, done as Ian like Mataka is seemingly game. cashing every event I'll he plays nice it's, it's insane man and not just cashing like final two tables of everything getting 200 POY points winning an online bracelet but 
he knows I'm coming huh? for him. <laughs> he is just I'm as scared as I am. Oh, yeah, like I was saying, <laughs> you know, I, just, to him? I, like I met him like uh, yeah, during so the 5K 6 max like I came up when they were eight handed, and I introduced yeah, myself in the chat a little bit. Yeah, and then we were at the same table in the 50k PLO for a bit. Did you give him a handshake that was a little bit too strong? Did no, no. Um, one of my good friends, DJ McKinnon, actually thought it was incorrect what I did. I, being a member of Poker Go Media, because of my show with Ben Mintz that barely exists, um, was there with my media pass in the rail, and he thought it was a little uh, uncouth to be sweating his action that closely. And I high-fived the guy when he free bet him, so he thought I was influencing <laughs> the action a little bit. Oh, man. You, you, Such a professional, Sean. Yeah, we already got I'm a little you didn't pay somebody slow roller. Well, someone asked if it was a bounty on him, and uh, it was a little too early in the summer to do that. I wait for like the last week of events to start putting some bounty dollars to bust some. How, how far back are you in him currently? Like four or 500 points. It's doable. Yeah. Meanwhile, multi-way action here. I have a feeling that this table is a lot more loose than the other one. Yeah, there's going to be some action. You know, we, we interviewed Jeremy. Jeff had a chat with him. He said the table banter was going on, so we're going to try to talk a little bit less. I think this is a little more friendly table, but it's also the last level of the night, so the pots are getting a little bit bigger. People are itching to bag. Get on the day two, take your day off, and move on in the main event. Jeremy Osmus sitting on practically starting stack. So curious to see or to find out you know, what his dynamics are with some of these players. These players have been playing against each other for the last eight hours. Well, it looks like, not to insult them, when a lot of recreational players, and especially the recreational pro Mike Vitale. So Jeremy's probably pretty happy with his table draw. 15, 16 years. 15 to 17 times, I guess. Matthews here betting 6,000 with Queen Jack. Yeah. Ariang with Jack 9 has quite a tough spot here. Yeah, I got fifth. Oh, yeah. yeah. You got bubbled like seven, three out of seven times. But. <laughs> the max punishment. Yeah, that's day three, yeah, right? I think the only time I cashed, I got cool with on the feature tables, like settled or set. And I wound up cashing, and the guy that cool with me with all the chips, he, he didn't care. I floated him <laughs> with deuces and That's... ripped the set of deuces on the turn. He already flopped the set of jacks. But he was like a recreational player. He played like really weird, didn't make sense. Yeah. No, I, I had a good, good hand. I would have called him. When you uh, when you like you're going over the top of them, maybe you caught a piece. I thought uh, the fans might want to know. We get a bio sheet when people yeah, join you the can look at table. It later. Yes, Jeremy Austin's is five pages. Yeah, Everyone else's is <laughs> one and a half. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. It's literally half the packet is Jeremy Austin. They brought me a book for Negronis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeremy Austin, by the way, the best looking 43 year old man in the entire universe. Yeah, Hall of Fame uh, finalist this year. I think Rass is getting in. But Osmus definitely next year is going to be bucket. probably the fan no, favorite after the last no, few years. No more, man. Grass, this definitely. place is done. It was, it was the shit a lot back of people in the day, but no more. I mean, it's only one a year. I mean, one a year. That's, yeah. It's really problematic. Like, like the, the, half, the Hall of Fame now with all the quote unquote now, young yeah, kids driving. starting to turn yeah. 40. Now it's going to be really, really cool. You got Dirt, Jungle Man, Doug Polk, myself, Scott Seaver, Jason Mercier, Brian Hastings. I mean, there is. That was only one a year. Wow. Wow. It was worth it for an hour. Yeah, ben, why don't you become the spokesperson for changing the... Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just feel like one, one seems little. Good, yeah, I was, I wasn't right. to they could do five a year, and it'd be it'd be totally respectable. Yeah. Yeah. Now yeah. that the whole generation that came up, you know... Sort the moneymaker era. Money maker yeah. era uh, is starting to turn 40. A little c large seabed here. I like that with a hand with no equity. Tough for Jeremy to call with bottom pair here. He does have the power of plus draw. But I think he's probably going to let it go. Oh, he knows his opponent. Osmus ready to tangle here. Oh, there could be a bad river card if Matthews checks back. Osmus with just a pair of threes has the check mark here. He's got 263 total live tournament results, originally from Lamar, Colorado. Five thousand. These bios are so extensive. 
<laughs> I've never filled out one of these bios in my life. I don't know how they have this much on all these players. Well done to the team. They deserve whoever's in charge of this did a great job. Shout out to Keegan and Sean on bio duty. Oh, fake Sean. <laughs> Really tough for Jeremy to find the call here. There's yeah, not he, too many hands. I'm not sure it matters on this, but I, like I always feel like people bet quick on the river when they're bluffing. Sometimes you snap, snap bet. Yeah, I mean, timing in the main event is off. You're on the feature table. They're not used to this stuff, and you know he's thinking Ace Jack or Ace King are the two bluff candidates. The open late position, but I mean the fact that Austin is even thinking about this, I mean that is already so impressive. You can you can see in his eyes that he is feeling very strongly about wanting to make this call here. Well, he's probably thinking that maybe King Jack or Jack Eight would bet the turn. So he's like, "What are you sizing up on this river that you didn't like the Deuce of Spades, where it was the biggest brick ever? You deny all this equity versus draws. So maybe ten nine suit he's afraid of pocket nines. I don't know why I want to call so bad. Because you're a good poker player, Jeremy. All right, all right. Two in the room? No, he has two pair. Two pair? Two <laughs> Mikey with Nobody another terrible read. On TV. I don't know. We both have bluff. My hand was really bad. <laughs> you guys know I don't bluff. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, Jeremy like, knows you made a bad thing. Where was this, where was this <laughs> nine or before? King Jack or, or nothing? Yeah. You get two pair in my hand. Ten nine, yeah. That's, that, I think that's very possible, yeah. That or uh, King, felt like King Jack or... Maybe queen nine suited. No, ten nine makes sense. Maybe just ace, ace king. God, Jeremy, all you had to do was make the call. We put the clip on social media, and you look super cool. Yeah, he looks so uncool right now. You look so uncool. With six prices. Like you, you, you can say that you almost called, but you didn't. He so. did. Um, no, he did almost call. He just didn't call. <laughs> His instincts were spot on. And that's all about playing poker in the main event. Is trust your gut. You have fourth pair on a queen ten nine three deuce mm. board, and you're thinking about calling because your opponent looks like he has nothing. Versus the guy who usually you think has it when they bet the river. Jeremy Osmus, of course, former main event finalist. Let's, let's not forget that with all his recent success. Wasn't that one of the Ben, year, ben Lam years? I uh, believe it was 2012. Oh, it was the year after Ben. Okay. But I'm going to verify that. Where? I have a bio sheet. I yeah, I was going to say. Look at, look at, look at the bio sheet. 17 of the bio sheet. <laughs> <laughs> it was 2012. There okay. we go. There we go. What points Nailed did he get? Uh, fifth place, $2.1 million. Small score. You got to save money somewhere, right? Maybe he started using <laughs> anti-aging stuff with that uh, 2.1 million. I don't know. <laughs> to look this man. good. How is that probably. cheaper, though? You know, a flight is over $300 one way. Oh. I already see a lot more action pre flop. A lot know. looser starting hands being called by some of these players than previous table. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's another day. Pokoko Chad is asking, Sean, who's the second crusher at this table in reference to Mike Dentali? There isn't a second crusher. <laughs> no, I mean, Jeremy's one of the elite, best overall poker players in the world. Great family man, super, like, friendly at the table. Very polite, win or lose. You never can tell if you just want a bracelet or just, you know, bricked 100K. His demeanor is something to desire. A question came in earlier about registration on day two. Pokego Chat was wondering, how do you feel about the fact they allowed that? And, and when did that start? I think it started the first COVID year, um, 2020 or 2021, I think. Okay. And I think that's perfectly I fine. Agree, like, so we allow day two of so many other 10 kids. <laughs> Why not do the main? And for people with real jobs and businesses or just want to rest up, like, let them come. Why are we going to turn down people want to give $10,000 to the greatest tournament of the year? It's not to worry. I mean, what do you, you sign? If you sign up at the beginning of day two, four, eight hundred, sixty thousand. Man, How many really, blinds is that? You, really, WPT. Seven, you, got tremendous, job. Um, you were ready for that one. They just ran into the ground. How many blinds do you have for day two? Just bad, man. Yeah. Three. Or 42 and a half. Well, another place has popped up, right? Parks. And <laughs> yeah, that's part yeah, of it. They that's open, definitely part they of it. They open a few places right now. <laughs> yeah. so uh, like, you don't want to drive. 122. Yeah, Twin River. Everywhere. Twin River Park. Oh, like your situation. Because of the player or the stack size? Both. 
Dentali here raising it up with King Jack <laughs> offsuit. Humphrey, Queen 9 suited, giving it some thought. Does decide to kick it in. He's a little too short to peel that hand. Dentali pretty loose. And I know he's an AC guy, right? Have, do you see what that guy looks like? Let's use your live reads, Mincy. Do you think Dentali is a tight guy or an action junkie? I mean, he looks like an action junkie after drinking wine. He used to get tremendous turnouts. But, <laughs> but I don't really, you know, I don't know. I haven't done won that, but I won a couple times. So. <laughs> but you got a free room. Right? Yeah, I got a free room. Exactly. I forgot. I, I took care of me. They knew what they had. They, they knew. They knew I was going to get max. Um, I had a so like royal a flush there, Brigada, and uh, they're like, oh, we're all out of the t shirt because they give you a t shirt. So they give me a little card. I said, I'd rather have the card anyway. And, uh, You're right. Uh, yeah. I owe you a t-shirt. That's, that's hilarious. Perfect. Yeah, that's good. Thank you, buddy. You got it. Am I bigger? No, you're bigger. I'm um, bigger. On Tilt says, what makes this event so great specifically is the fact that you cannot rebuy. I, I do think that's one of the greatest strengths of this tournament, the fact that you can put someone under pressure for their entire stack. More and more tournaments, even at the World Series of Poker, even the limit tournaments are going to re-entry. Sean, how do you feel, you feel about that? Um, obviously, it's great for me. Um, makes it harder because there's so many more events and bolts to play. But I think, uh, you know, the, te the championship events, they've restricted them of being freeze-outs except for the 10K No Limit Deuce, which everyone loves that event, wants another bullet. Um, so yeah, I think it, World Series does a great job at so many things. I like it for the main a lot, just because, you know, I feel like it gets, I mean, I wouldn't say everybody's on a level playing field, but, you know, it's a lot, a lot of people get to play this once a year. When, you know, There's a lot of people on your level, Mincy. Well, when they're you and help you have six buy-ins. Right, and one, also, the tournament, I mean? the tournament would literally never end if they allow for re-entries, because there'd be so many chips in play. It would like take it would three add another more days. day or two. Oh yeah, another well, day I mean, or two. We've already got that's, it. that's a lot. Once you're at 15, 13 or fifteen, whatever it is now, what's 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 another one? <laughs> two weeks for fucking twenty million dollars? I'll sign up for that any day of the year. Okay, I'll, 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 if the main event allowed for two re-entries, how big would it be? How many people are actually going to re-enter? <laughs> <laughs> About half the field. Wow, that's. I don't, I don't even want to think about that. Let's, let's see, a little shallow flat here for Mumphrey. And he doesn't connect enough with the board to continue, but RJ also completely missed with the ace four clubs. And four. The beauty of the lead, 1,400 into 8,300. Well, I mean, it's queen seven, three rainbow. Yeah. Either he yeah. flopped the queen or a set of sevens are really kind of missed. So sizing isn't as relevant, especially that guy's stack size is so short. 1,400 is 10% of his stack. That's, you know, it gets scary every time you call a little bit of your chips. Top side of kings. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't talk crazy. crazy. Okay. Okay. Round one. It seemed like that was like a day ago. Yeah, it does. It does. It was a long time ago. I mean, it's pretty unlucky for him. Level but, uh, two. He, he played it like a million. Level one. two. Yeah, yeah. Level one. Yeah. And then he came back, and he was still steep. Oh, no, no. That was level one with the Kings. I raised up. I raised. Yeah, yeah. So he came back in two. Yeah, and then. He was just dying to get him in, and he raised like four. He was mad at you. He was madder than Tentali. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's hard to be, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> For the contest, he won. I clipped him with the Jack 10 too, with the Ace so I clipped yeah, him. Yeah, I didn't like he, that. He, he was super tough. Like right Is that the hand before break? Yeah. I didn't see it. Yeah. That hand was going off for a while. I saw it. I floated him with the Jack 10. I knew he had shit. Then I ripped the 10, and he's plowing. I did the hard. It was a funny hand. You turned a pair, and then river yeah. flush. Right? Flush, yeah. yeah. What's about 15? Got some interesting nicknames here at this feature table. Normally I feel there, but we were on TV. Evanier, <laughs> his nickname is Limp Call. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Oh. Wait, his name, nickname is Sid Limp, Limp, Limp Call? Limp Call is his nickname. And David Humphrey, his nickname is Snowman. I wonder what his favorite poker hand is. Yeah. You got <laughs> a fan club and everything. Whatever happened to Snowman, speaking of Brown Hawkins. 
Uh, I don't know. Red hair, he was, a, he was a beast back in the day. I hadn't seen him in a long time. You also called yourself a beast back in the day, so your requirement for that, the bar I is very low. never said I was a beast. Oh. I said I was good. You said you were a top 200 online player. I was ranked top 200 online <laughs> For what, a week and a half? Yeah, but it was the end. Right we waited another time. Oh, when everyone was giving <laughs> up? <laughs> multi Multi entries. That, that, yeah, last, smack, that, that last month before Black Friday was out of control. So I, I at that time, won one of the F-Tops 1K or whatever, multi-entries for like 300K. I had a huge percentage of my net worth on full tilt. And because I had a tournament score, a couple backing groups hit me up for money online. So right before the series, I got so much of my bankroll offline. I sent them money online. Black Friday happened a week later, and they owed me money, and they had it locked up in the account. So I got very lucky. My whole career would have definitely been different if uh, wow. you know, I didn't have that big score at the end and yep. then get the money offline. For those who weren't around during that era, the full tilt poker multi. And there were so many already countries that were locked down, whether it was Australia, Spain, France. The segregation was happening 15 years ago. And I think that, you know, I expected poker to grow because we realized how great poker is. And now 10K ain't what it used to be in 2006. Oh, well, we got a set versus an overpair here. Oh, and Dentali's in there with the 8-7 off on the button. <laughs> I mean, Dentali, get your game up, buddy. It's the main event. Bring your A game. Terry Wynn here with Pocket Kings in a whole lot of trouble versus this set of Humphrey. Humphrey, however, on the short stack. Very interesting uh, check there by Wynn with uh, the Kings. Seems like a pretty good board for them. Three ways. I don't like giving free cards when there's a lot of straightening cards on the turn. Old Dentali. You have zero percent next to your name. If you hit an 8 or 7, you're not going to win, and you're going to talk about how bad you run. <laughs> he just doesn't like folding. No. TV table to maybe get into him. Jack on the river, giving Humphrey a full house. 11K in front of him, 12K in the middle. This looks extremely strong. I mean, it could be a queen even. I mean, I guess queen checks probably right, because jack 10, jack 9. But he should just go all in. He's got pot back. Wynn's not going to fold his over pair that he's under repped and slow playing. Wynn seems more concerned with what Mike has. And Mike's thinking about, mm, where am I getting my next glass of wine? <laughs> Old Mike, you still have 0% next to your name. Right. Does lay it down. Humphrey announces full house, shows his fives, and win in a way. Oh, Save 5,000. Save 5,000, right? <laughs> no, I, I figured, but. That guy, the bandit. You like the bandit, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I, I don't know if you heard, but I used to drive truck. Trucks. So. Okay, no, I didn't hear that part. Yeah, yeah. So, Snowman is uh, the character from Smoking the Bandit. Jerry Reed. Yeah, Jerry right, 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 right. Hey, buddy. Uh, oh, good. How you doing, brother? All right, we were wrong. So not not a fan of pocket <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> We're not bumping. Yeah, I thought yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't. You have a fan. It's great. Yeah, we have more. I thought it's a big with pocket eights. Oh well, all right. I, I have a tendency to play those as well. Fair enough. <laughs> We've made don't we all? For those asking, Daniel Grano not eliminated, but he was getting his table was getting very close to being split up. All the players sent to different tables. There's a breaking order that we have to adhere to. And if that were to happen on the stream, it means the end of the stream. Because we cannot move a table to the stream while they're playing. Because, of course, that would be a horrible disadvantage for all those players. Because it takes a good 10 minutes to get that set up, get everyone mic'd up, move all the chips, 
etc etc so that is why we had to give you guys the uh, jeremy osmus table for the final level of the night tomorrow however if in case you're only interested in watching you know the uh, famous superstars play mr phil helmuth is going to be on our stream to kick things off at 7 p.m pacific time 10 p.m eastern so it should be, it should be another crazy night of action tomorrow here on Day 1D of the main event. Yeah, I'm sure flops the not flush draw, yeah, checks back. He could have put a bet in. Osmus would have called with his gut shot. Should we just have this table again tomorrow? Yeah. I've had fun all day, man. Well, I mean, we get a good chip stack, you know? Yeah, later on, right? Some of us. Jeremy has the one of the worst hands he gets to the river with. Vitali is very sticky, but you know if he has an eight or pocket sevens, it's pretty tough to call when the king comes. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a lot of fluky, uh, fluky stuff that happens in these things. Yeah. And it's such a good. You have so many chips. You know, it's a great structure. So you just. 17k is enough. 6,500 is the bet here from Osmus. Really hard for me. Yeah, I've been working. Gotcha. Let's see if Mike wants to be a hero on stream. Oh, he wants to. <laughs> it's a tough hand to call. You have two diamonds. Really tough to give him too many hands. Gotta get the confidence on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, and it was really weird. Like the last five players. Dentali does let go of his ace high. Oh, wow. And we're getting closer and closer to getting another update from Mr. Jeff Platt. Apparently, he's out in the field trying to find Mr. Justin Young, who I think has been playing the main event since 2004. So hopefully, we get some more context about his first time playing the main events. Jeff, what do you got? All right, the 2023 main event is the 20th World Series of Poker main event for this man right here, Justin Young. Justin, can you stand up for me, please, just for a quick sec? Jeff, of course. Thank you very much. And so that means that your first main event would have been when? Oh. It looks like 2004. Take a look at this. So you needed this credential just to get inside the room? Yeah, th this was at uh, the old Binion's, and you had, in order to get into the poker room, you had to have one of these around your neck. It was it was fantastic. And real quick, I don't want you to miss him, but what else is in here? Uh, my day two uh, chip stack. Okay. Hold on, oh my gosh, this is, well, back in the day, you started with 10,000 in chips, yeah. so when I bagged 13,975, we sold quarters back in the day. And that's about more than you've had all summer. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Best of luck rest of the way. Bye-bye. Yeah, <laughs> Justin Young, one of my favorite players, always entertaining both in the cash games and in the tournament. 20th straight World Series Poker main event, going back to 04. That is so cool. I love Justin. We play together down at Champions Club in Houston, had a blast on stream, off stream. We always have a great time to see each other. But that reminds me, he still owes me a little bit of money. So now that I know he's oh. out there, look at that one. He's one of the good guys right. to collect money yeah, from. Don't look, man. I'm not Just worried about it. With him. <laughs> <laughs> Just forget that one ever happened, Mike. <laughs> oh, wow. I uh, was reminded by Russell, one of our moderators, it is bad joke hour <laughs> every night oh. at, at, at 11.30 p.m. Are you ready for this, Mincy? We're doing bad jokes. I'll read them, you guys laugh. Okay. No, let, let Mincy read them. Let me, you got, whatever. I'll, I'll okay. read them. If you guys don't laugh, then I, I guess I'm disqualified. So, chat, send me your worst. We've had so many funny, stupid ones the last couple of nights. So, send them in. I'm and if you can incorporate chat. someone at the table, I would really appreciate that. <laughs> in particular, Mike Dentali. I might give a little, uh, you know, donation to whoever has the best Dentali needle during these bad jokes. That's also, that's also uh, <laughs> very much appreciated. Yeah. Davy Faith says, I wonder if I owe, D owe Deep any money. Sean, how many people owe you money right now? How long is the list? Like 25, 30 people. Oh, God. That's brutal. Are you actively chasing all the people for the money? How many How many have you given up on? A lot of them. Okay. Brutal stuff. 
So not a fan of raising Queen 4 off that small into Jeremy Ossipus' big blind. You need a little bit of equity, a little bit better hand, or raise a lot bigger to get him to fold some hands. The 7 8 suit is never going to fold from him. Turns a queen. Sure. Can you someone who's really lucky at chips? Well, I'm sorry. Someone who's really lucky at chips. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Osmus picking the right, the wrong time to bluff here. Right as Aryang hits a pair of queens. Marisa, meanwhile, saying, I think I might need my own beer round to get through the upcoming bad jokes. Maybe you do. Oh, mm. wow. Mm. That's how you win six bracelets. That's exactly what I was about to say. Osmus hitting the nine high straight on the river. Given the fact that Aryang called his bet on the turn, could Osmus be sizing up here, targeting a queen? Uh, he's going to size up because he has the nuts in the main event <laughs> versus an uh, opponent who raised queen four off in the small blind 2.4x. So, no, I, I think he's going to make sure he gets called and bet about 8,500. I don't think overbets work too well in the main. A spot where your opponent probably doesn't have two pair or anything. Like 80% pot seems like a great value bet size. 14. Now he goes over bet. Osmus really turning the screws on his opponent. Aryan, of course, doesn't want to get bluffed. The look on his face is like, man, I'm facing this pro in the main event, final level of the night, and now I got to deal with this? He's probably also thinking how comfortable his hoodie looks like, and he's ready to go to sleep. Oh, oh wow, it off. call is made. Maximum oh, value for Jeremy Osmus. Great bet, now. Wow. Osmus waited. <laughs> the entire day to get up, put onto the feature table to start chipping up. Great, great bet though, knowing that you can get paid off for 1.4x pot. Um, is that gonna help you? Yeah. Okay, I wouldn't bet, yeah. Zen Dudorino says, what's the difference between a poker player praying in <laughs> church and praying at the <laughs> table? He means it at the poker table. Nice. Mm. nice Not bad. Not bad. All right. First, first try. I think that's just true. I don't even think that's a joke. <laughs> Not even a bad joke. I think this one. I think that's, that's my first one. True story. What was it like Bean a pot says, why didn't the melon have kids? He can't elope. Or you had the... Right, yeah, you did. Well, I, mean no, I thought that would have been more of a marriage uh, joke. No, no, no. Yeah. 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 I had the straight already, so you got lucky. Well, so. That turned, was me. I had the... You I, turned top set. He turned top set. And he turned the straight. I turned the straight. And then we both turned the straight. He had like something like 14, 9, 4 or something. I think it was Jack It wasn't Jack 4. It was Jack 4. It was for sure Jack 4. And I turned... I had no pair. I'm pretty sure it was off. Mike, Mike, we haven't heard a bad B story in a couple hours. Yeah. Wanna, like, get us going a little bit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mike, you got, you got some I was going to say, a lot of hand history talk at this table. Uh, Incantation says, did you hear about the first restaurant to open on the moon? It had, Out of this world? It had great food, but no atmosphere. <laughs> okay, I got a laugh out of Mincy. I'll take it. I'll take it. 
feature table run good. Nope. Yep. Everybody Been waiting all day for nice the feature try. table run good. Nice try. Trying to get that one. Nice, we'll nice, see nice try. Lindsay, I noticed on your phone you got a little shark scope back. Yeah, I'm wanting to <laughs> prove you that I was good at a full tilt. Look at this. 57%. I'm afraid of the bright lights. Pretty good. Yeah. I hate it. <laughs> no. I think I, I had 100% like ROI back then. Uh, yeah, no, you're really no, good. It doesn't bother my eyes. <laughs> Even when I go to the dentist, <laughs> I gotta wear like dark sunglasses. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You only won 160,000. Yeah, and Just it didn't have rebuys yeah, accounted correctly on Sharks Go Back. Yeah, yeah. So you won less if you played the 30 and 100 and $10 rebuys. I, I put the 30s, so I didn't put the 100. It wakes you up, too. You're more alert. Yeah. U.S. Down Under says, well, I lost, lost my joke. It says, I want to talk about dried grapes. It's called raising awareness. God, you guys are a tough crowd. I, I do like these dad jokes all the time with my kids. They love these books. So, like, it's got to be a little sharper. Because some of those ones are really good in those books. <laughs> There's some that I can't read. That's yeah, that, I'm, like, terrified of that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm still. You're, you're still, still traumatized? Real? I'm still scarred. Awesome as flops, top pair, limping, blind versus blind. We're gonna try a little min bet and no pair, no call. Brandon Lamora says, why does Dentali never ISO three bet? Because he can't win heads up, just ask Kate Hall. Wow, come with the fire. I hadn't heard that name in a while. You know Brandon Lamora? No, I'm talking about Kate Hall. Oh, Kate Hall <laughs> just got married. I was saying, Brandon's one of my uh, friends from Albany. Yeah. Yeah. I just remember. I was going to be really surprised you knew. There you go. Kate Hall just apparently closed her business down. So she's, her startup, they decided to close. So maybe she'll end up back in the poker streets. Huh. This table's cleaner, too. The, the other tables has the big WSOP chips get lost in that thing, yeah. like, all the time. I wish they'd take that away. Like, we, kn we know we're at the yeah, WSOP. The what? <laughs> Jeremy, yeah. don't sure, bite the hand that feeds you, buddy. You should be happy with what you're <laughs> Yeah, this is like a nice, clean, this is the way they all should be, honestly. Or maybe less writing, obviously. <laughs> okay, the, the ones that I can't read are the ones that you guys would have laughed at. <clears throat> uh, why can't you read them? What are you afraid of? This is getting demonetized on YouTube, maybe? Oh, okay. That's fair. All right. I, I'm not, I don't get those checks, so I don't worry about those checks. I don't even get paid for this shit. At least Mincy at least gets paid, and he leaves the booth for two hours at a time. Two yeah. hours. I almost started a GoFundMe for a little Where's Mincy, the little bounty could find a photo of you. You were missing in action here for a, for a while. Nah, but did, did you hit the pits for a bit? No, or? I didn't hit the pits. I, went and saw, I would saw an old friend that just got in town. I hadn't seen it in like a year. Were they not going to be here in two hours? He was just popping by to buy for like 20 Speaking of the of the pits, are you, are you a bit of a gambler, Mitzi? I I'll bet on I bet some football and I just play poker and that's it. That's it. Yeah, I don't I don't mess with pits. When I was with you, you were betting in a little college baseball. Yeah, don't act like you do, I know, I don't bet some college baseball. College baseball. I fire college baseball. Is, is, is sports betting like almost like the same as betting in the pits? I mean, it ain't much better, but you know, I'm I'm not gonna sit here and act like I'm some high roller. I bet my 50 to 100 bucks and enjoy my entertainment for sure for, for my same. games, and you know, that's what it is. Oh, I know more football than most. I'm pretty good at college baseball, but I mean, by saying I know more than most, I mean I, that doesn't mean I can like beat it for a living. My fiance got a 50 dollars free credit on uh, one of the uh, local sports betting apps here in Las Vegas, and for Fourth of July, she hit like four random bets into a parlay on baseball, turned four, 50 bucks into 400. There we go. Tur about to turn pro. Pro sports better. But Sean, the pits never, never. Uh... I've been known to. Uh, some of the times my bankroll oh. struggled online. There was some. Uh, some party poker blackjack. Uh, party <laughs> poker blackjack was in there. Absolute craps was in there one oh time. Oh my god. Yeah, online craps is. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> very bad. I used to like throwing dice yeah. in the casino. So it's fun. It's I, the I, only odds that are 50-50 against the house are when you back up the pass line. And bet when you back up your combats, and so you know you, you got to like bet tiny on the pass line, and then back it up like 10x. But then you're 50/50 with the casino. Wow. Most places don't let you bet 10x. Too no, many they, spots quit, they yeah. quit. Yeah, they quit it. But that's that was always what I would try to do, just to like not give away the edge, you know. I would always say, don't teach me how to play this game, because <laughs> it's bad news. Craps is bad news. It's fun though. It's a good drinking game. It really for is. sure. Fun with friends. Let us know. Let us know in the in the chat. What's your what's your go to casino game? I'm curious. I'm curious to hear if we got any. Uh, I've never understood the slot thing, but I'm sure there's a lot of people 
that don't understand a lot of my stuff too, so I'm not not judging. Shout out Tana. Do you even understand your stuff, Mincy? I know I know what I enjoy. <laughs> pot here greg allen in the chat says i'm a dice dealer at palace station we got 10x baby okay i guess i guess uh you got to make a trip a little palace station huh five three six on this flop a pair for covesman Jerry Campbell says, how do you get a professional poker player off your doorstep? Oh, man, the paper pizza. Wow. Good job, Mincy. Very well done. Very I was, well I mean, done. I figured it was, I don't know. I did, one of the funniest things. That's, ever, that's really good. Y'all ever seen the old, like, poker bust-outs thing with, like, people go broke in poker and, like, what they're doing now when they, like, really burn out of the poker world? Did y'all ever see that back in the day? No. It was, it was really, really funny. It was just, like, withered, like, broke. Like what broke poker people were doing, like it was. <laughs> Did they feature you? They should have. I mean, I went, dude. I mean, it, it's a special, special fall from like 75th in the main to making making salads and pizza. It, it, it probably is not. Did you specific. eat more salads or pizza? I mean, probably, probably pizza. <laughs> but it was uh, like I went back to college. I was like 30, 31, and had like a college job. You know, eight or ten dollar an hour job and finished school for like a year. But it was, it was good for me. Yeah, and you sobered up, which was really important. That's one thing I won't shit on you for. I'm happy you're sober, Mincy. As since I'm sober for this year with you in solidarity, even though you're not there to support me at all. How are you? Dude, you're doing great, though. You're doing good on the diet, the diet thing. You're not, you're not cracking at all. You just made it your lifestyle. That's, that's very That is very impressive. It no, was very commendable. It's that. really easy when the meals are done for you. I had poker meals set up this summer. My uh, mm. massage therapist was picking up the meals every other day, sitting in my fridge right by the tournament room. It made it really easy to get them and just throw them in the microwave, heat them up, and it's easy. Like, I think that's, it's easier to have those meal prep meals waiting for you, so you don't have to think, I need to order food, I have to meet the delivery driver. Yeah. It was so stressful all the years for me. It's like failing to prepare, preparing to fail thing. That's a good one, Minty. Yeah, uh, no, it's, that was always the trouble to eat healthy for me. It's like oh, late yeah. night when you have nothing around, you're just like, but it's funny you say that it's easy, you know, for myself, having lost a lot of weight. For me, it's just the access to food. Whenever it's easy for me to have access to food, I just keep eating. Like right now, the last two weeks, I've been horrible. There's snacks everywhere. I can't stop myself. It's in my best interest to not eat snacks. I'm, I'm racing bikes later this year, and I've put probably 10 pounds on during WSOP. I, just, I can't. I have prepared meals. I, I, I have to do nothing to eat good food. But then when I see snacks, I just can't stop myself. So that when you say it's easy, it's actually not easy because you can still eat the snacks on top of your meals. Nah, they're just there and I don't bother. I'm very strong-willed. Hey, I got a question for you. How hard is it to speak in pounds instead of say stones or kilograms? Oh. Whatever you guys normally say. Are you I've totally converted to the uh, American system? It's funny you say that actually. I, I've i converted more and more because in conversation it's useless to bring up kilos and Celsius uh, and meters because people don't understand. So I've converted a bit. I think as far as outside temperature goes and body weight, I've made the switch completely just because I've been doing it for five years now every single day. But with distance, I still find miles like really hard to gauge okay. because yeah. it makes so little sense. So you do kilometers? The system is so dumb. But I mean, the system is dumb entirely. Even the Fahrenheit is dumb, but it's easier to get used to because you know you see the temperature numbers every single day. So you know that 70 degrees, you know, a little. Do you do kilometers on distance? Yeah, I do kilometers on distance. Um, but still, you know, I drive my car. It has, says miles an hour, so. It has kilometers in the lower. <laughs> yeah, you, you, could, you could look at that too. But, uh, yeah. It's been five years of living in the U.S., so you know, get used to it. Where do you live these days, if you don't mind doxing yourself? Hen I live in Henderson. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, it's actually great. Bought a house with my fiance oh. about two years ago. Do you bike to work? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could. I wish you I could. could. That's in your average mile. No, no, for sure. no. I, I could from that perspective, but the roads to get here specifically are pretty dangerous. Yeah. Try to get out to Red Rock usually, Boulder City. Whatever. Much more quiet roads. Uh, back to the action here. Kobesman yeah. raising it up, and Cody finding pocket tens on the button. 
Yeah, we're seeing a lot wider ranges from everyone at this table than the previous table. That's why we see the chip stacks being a little bit bigger. Everyone's a little bit splashier. They're getting in there. They're trying to win pots. What is going on here? Are y'all actually on a camera? Yeah. You I hear Frank now. Casella's voice, you another story, member of dinner. Got a story out there. <laughs> he, him and Mike were the ones sharing the bottle of wine. Yeah. Uh, one of Frank's children, it's Matt, on, this Casella, one's on is playing YouTube, the main event. Oh, wow. He always has a couple of his kids in the YouTube. main event. It's, it's on both. It's on both. Yeah, it's on both. I love okay. seeing I guess all the family episodes. How many kids does he have? You said he had nine kids. kids? He's up to nine kids. Wow. Yeah. That's right, a lot of kids. Well, only five are by. Sucking man. He's got four new stepkids on the way. Got it, got it. Wow, that's a monitor. Did you? Got a full baseball team. the credit card roulette, too? Oh, yeah, CBS Sports. He was bragging about it. Said he had two cards. Cards in, it's on there. I told you him, I can't CBS believe I skipped it twice. Like First time he hasn't right. lost one not, since not, the 80s. The later days. Yeah, no, right. I, yeah. The later days? Be CBS, <laughs> CBS yeah. and Poker Go. So stuck with that fucking bill in his arm. <laughs> Frank's complaining about a meal where uh, he had a dinner with Mark Gregorich and their significant others, and he sent the bill to my table with me, Ben Lamb, Dan, Dan Wyman, Steve McLaughlin, and he just was really drunk, and he said, I've lost enough to you guys in poker. you got to pay for my meal. It was not a cheap meal. He likes to buy expensive wine. Wow. Did you guys pay up? I, I covered the bill. Frank's always been good to me. He's very generous, picks up a lot of meals. I stay at his house when I come out here a lot. You know, my wife and kids stay at his house. So it's the least I can do is pick up a meal or two for him, no matter how much he spends on it. Yeah, definitely more hot. I'm, I feel fine, though, but. I think Ari Yang raising up with Ace Jack of Hearts. So normally, because it's, the, the equipment's really hot, you know. Wynn's going to make the call with 9-6 spades. I think Dintali's with 33,500 is going into the mode, like trying to make it to day two. Um, it's Mike. Anything can happen. Oh, interesting flop here. Ace, six, eight, two spades. Aryang with top pair and a jack kicker win with the pair and a flush draw. Very weird to see Win play the king so conservatively on queen, eight, five and then flat the 9-6 suited. You know, usually there's a disconnect in how they play their big hands and playing looser preflop. But, you know, he might have a read on Shang, and, you know, he flopped amazing equity here. He's a slight favorite, and we're going to see a check call, and he's, if he improves, I don't think Arjang is going to fold his hand. We saw him call down, um, you know, Osmus like, with, like, with the queen, with queen four. Yeah, I like, broke my rules, because I know so many people have always said, you're on a TV, you ever going to do yeah. This is the closest thing, bro. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Out of how many tables, hundreds of tables, we happen to be the one table in front of Yeah, yeah it's all the tables in here and all the tables in the other room. Yeah. So so I, I thought, I thought a check back was coming there. Like yeah, he's got showdown value with the six, has good no, equity. His opponent check called, he usually has one pair. Yeah, and very rarely is a preflop raiser, check call, yeah, check fold, the deuce, the brings it back to our flush draw. A lot of draws out there. For entrance, that might have been including day one A and day one B. Oh no, that's just day I mean, so 3,600 people divided by nine? Well, there's not 3,600 people today. Yeah, it's at least 400 tables. There might have, people might have registered. No. Mm -hmm. 35. A lot of people. The record's broken. Nice little half pot here. He's really hoping his opponent had king queen, king jack, king ten of spades, or worse ace that decided to check back to pot control to call the river bet. For the first two levels of day two. Right. Yeah. This is the days where they give us a little patch and they pay us like 10 grand for being on TV. Sounds as though we are going back to Jeff Platt. He found another victim to stand up, get some exercise in here during the main event. We all know it's a long day of sitting at the table. Good thing we have Jeff to keep everyone happy and active. We're wondering who he found this time around. Jeff, what do you got? Even if he lost the main, that's how like. All right, last level of the day at the main. Let's check in with Slay. Slay, stand up for me, please. Mr. Yeah, Luke Rabel, how's day one of the main treating you? Oh, it's been a blast over here. Got a yeah. bunch of lovely men at the table. We had a woman, love women, but she was unfortunately eliminated. But I'm having a blast. Talkative guys, 
good times. Good times all around. What's the game plan? Only only 68 minutes left to play. Yeah, I mean, beer level's already been running for an hour. I mean, can, we need to talk about beer level. Like, it's a two-hour beer level. Yeah. I know guys that could drink 20 beers in, in, a, in, a, in one beer level. You can't have beer level in the main event. Like, come on. What do you got? What are we, alcoholics here? Like, you got to start beer level in the last 30 minutes. Oh, it's beer level. <laughs> anyway, hold on. All right. Is that sorry. when it'll start sorry. for you? No, I mean, I'm not a big drinker, but yeah. if I was, I wouldn't say, oh, it's beer level. I mean, you got you to gotta close the day strong. I mean, eyes on the prize. You know? How's Zen right now? I'm like 9.5 out of 10. Oh, that's pretty strong. Yeah, I've had okay. a, I was down to 60. I got it up around 85 now. Playing yeah. well, running well. Yeah. Appreciate great. the time. Go crush it. Oh, man, I, I was going to do another bit. All right, Jeffrey. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll save yeah, it for later. We'll okay, okay. Thanks, Sly. Is he looking like the guy from Something About Mary, the Wigowski <laughs> guy? Do you see it? <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. I do. Who breaks out, the skin breaks. Yeah, I can yeah, see yeah, him just yeah. itching his face. Yeah. Yeah, Slay shitting on our commentary the last couple of days. So, yeah, thanks, Jeff, for uh, bringing him into the show. Maybe he should just get barred from Caesars again. If he wants to talk shit about our commentary. At least he's not listening today. I mean, he'll, he knows that I don't like him, so... Uh, what, what's y'all's beef? Uh, I'm not going to say it on air. I'll say it for the spaces, but... Uh, no, he's just one of those people in poker that I don't like. I don't like his bit. I don't like his begging. I don't like his, you know, scamming in the past. And, yeah. And, uh, you know, some of his friend circle are also scammers. So, yeah. Okay, I don't like I'm scammers, Ben. All right, ben, I, I, ben, I need ben, to stay away from ben this. did you pick up on this? Yeah. Sean Deep said, I'm not going to say why I don't like him, and then he went on to say why he doesn't like him. I don't know. All right, know. moving on to some yeah, more positive Ooh, news. we got aces up versus a turn set. This is the pot. And when he raises, I don't see how Evanier can find a fold after the flop checks around. Ooh. <laughs> Maybe he can find a fold when it goes bet, raise, cold three bet. Yeah, RJ can get him a favor here with this, this raise. Oh, this is actually a limp pot, everyone. I'm just noticing on the preflop chart. That's why the pot size was so small. So, but I would think they expect Nguyen to raise aces, nines, or eights, but it's, he could put him definitely on. Aces up here, aces, nines, aces, and eights. You're never putting your opponent on a set of threes when you have two threes in your hand. I mean, two th a three on the board, three in your hand, only one combo less of threes. Really tough spot, but you know the old adage, don't go broke in a limp pot. Yeah, he looks like he's going to fold. He got, if he does get away from this, uh, Arjang did him a huge favor. For raising, sure. Raising the bottom pair here. I mean, that, otherwise this would have been very tough to get away The only way you continue is you literally put your opponent on like 9-10 of clubs, king-9 of clubs. Yep, he folds. What I was going to talk about here prior to noticing this Potential massive pot developing. Tomorrow, Gene Collin is playing in the main event. 100 years old. Oh, wow. That is just awesome. And it just made me think back of uh, your grandma playing in the main event back in the day, Sean. Yeah, she still has the world record. This woman ever played at 92 and 93 years old. Um, I love telling that story. It shows why I love poker. She's who taught me card games at a young age. I brought her into the main event. A bunch of sicko online players all gave me 100 bucks, had 1% of her. Poker Tracker back in the day staked, uh, sponsored her for 2000 of the money. And after she busted day one, one of my favorite stories to ever tell. I love trolling, oh, and I yeah. slow roll my grandmother. I troll her. I went to my box here. I gave her 10K, <laughs> and I said, this is for your rebuy. You she played the whole main event day one with the 10K uh, strap behind her chips. Like it was a cash game you see on high-stakes poker. Really when she get knocked out on day one, she takes the 10K, she's in her wheelchair, throws it to the dealer in the dealer tray and says, rebuy. The dealer pushes it back and says, ma'am, this is a freeze out. She goes, no, I want a rebuy. I want to stay here. She's like, no, you got to leave. So the players had to inform her, and she was so pissed at me. She's like, you fuck, you little asshole, like, you piece of little shit. Like, you know, this is my grandmother saying, you're always messing with me. And I was like, yeah, I was like, joke. She's like, I thought you were joking with me about it not being for a rebuy. 
But, uh, you know, when I saw her back in New York a couple weeks later, she, we were driving home. Uh, I took her, you know, somewhere, and she says, you know, that was the best day of my life. At Aww. 92 years old, that was the best day of her life, and she got to do a shuffle up and deal. Nolan Dalla wrote her the greatest fucking line in World Series history. She's doing shuffle up a deal. She gets the mic and says, you're all playing for second, and just drops ah! the mic. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Amazing. Yeah. You know, another great thing when she passed, uh, not a great, like a great part of that, when she passed uh, a few years ago, at the wake, you know, they always do a video. And so I reached out to Maury for whatever footage they had because they came to our house, met her home game, put a bunch of these old ladies on TV, and uh, almost half the footage at her uh, wake was footage of her from the World Series main event. So great moment for my family. There was like 10 to 15 of us flown out here, and one of the greatest weeks of my life, both years that she played. Yeah, that was amazing. That's such incredible. a That's incredible. such a moving story. Uh, really cool to hear. And you know, the only thing is, like, I was I was thinking she could rebound. Did you, did you make her pun on day one? With that? <laughs> <laughs> well, the worst thing head. is, like, the guy who like had a set for her was like telling her, "Please fold," and she leveled herself and thought the guy was trying to pull her around. Like, no one wanted to bust her. So, like, she was so, so sweet. She was so friendly. Everyone's getting TV time. She's was one of the greatest people to ever play at a poker table. She was a fan favorite everywhere she played, whether it was a home game or Turning Stone or, you know, the Mirage. She was a staple of every 4-8 limit holding game around the country. That's that's amazing. My favorite story of the day. That's, that's awesome. I'm hoping that Gene's family tomorrow will have a similar experience. 100 years old, playing in the main event. He has his daughter out here. Absolutely love to love to see that. And that's what poker's all about, man. You could play and compete at any age, you know. And it's a lifelong game. Yeah. And I, I think when we talk about great slow rolls, we got to talk about um, the guy with when he had sevens full. Do you remember this? It was just a guy named Reno Doc. He had seven six hard to call a small three bet. Flop comes seven six six. Someone in the chat tell me this guy's uh, yeah, name. I got you behind. Maybe it was Jack Uri. Yeah, I, I don't. I oh, oh, the the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Jack Uri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah he I was that. like yeah. late nineties guy who played. And he's small three bet. This Reno Doc, and Reno Doc's a friend of mine from two plus two. He said this guy never played a hand. He comes seven six six. He check raises. The guy shoves, and he goes, "You're in trouble." And the guy goes, "No, you are." And then shows sevens full, and just absolutely mangled him by three betting sevens out of the blue. Ninety six year old Jack Yuri. Back in the main event, twenty eleven. Yeah, that was one of the best slow rolls by far. All right, let's go, Mikey Dentali. Got to win some chips, buddy. You don't want to bag left to the Mincy. I'm going to give you a hard time about that. Mm, nice flop here for Jeremy. Oh, wow. What? Oh, wow. <laughs> if he turns the nine of diamonds, it's a nice flop. Wow, yeah, I didn't see the flop yet. Got dynamite analysis. It's just quad sevens for Matthews. Quad sevens for Matthews I, I, I on the flop, leaving me speechless as we're looking for the nine of diamonds on the river for a potential all-timer here, if that were to come in. Yeah, then we're gonna, everyone's going to say, this is how Awesomeness wins. I root for Awesomeness's uh, publicity to not hit the nine of diamonds because, man, the shit he's going to get from everyone for pulling off this one out or after hitting the gut shot earlier. I mean, Awesomeness just... Uh, Dentali. <laughs> <laughs> every gut shot, every gut shot. He loves his gut shots. I mean, at least we're getting a chance at the Nine of Diamonds. Let's see the river card. Oh! oh! So close. I thought it was there. I thought it was there, too. Oh, my God. I thought it was there. But instead, trouble brewing <laughs> for both Dentali and Austin. They both oh my the Nine of Diamonds. I, if you notice, I thought it was it. Yeah. On, on the turn, Dentali kind of gave a side eye when Matthews overcalled. I think his spider sense says something's up when this guy, you know, Great. Like just checks back, calls turn instantly. Oh, <laughs> Is Jeremy about to check here? You think? It's reasonable to. It's really tough to get called by worse, but he might go small go and small, fold yeah. to a raise. Wow! I swear I thought it was the nine of diamonds. We all did. Austin's betting twenty five hundred here. This is going to be funny. He's going to call. He's going to raise. He's going to just get so tilted. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, it's pretty obvious when it goes back call on a four straight paired board. Your opponent raised the river. It's not Jack-10. There's a lot of middle pocket pairs. He's got a full house. Find a fold, guys. I know Osmus will. I just really hope Dentali does. Grab, don't grab a green, buddy. <laughs> what sizing would you like to see from Matthews here, Sean? <laughs> On this board, I think going like 9 to 10K is the max you can get. If Osmus had a full house, he'd bet bigger. There you go, small. Yeah, I mean, but that's so scary and so strong. <laughs> Oh, you're going to feel real good about that one when you see it. Come on, Jeremy. You know you're no good here, buddy. Got a good table. Fold. Move on. Maybe, yeah. I mean, you had an ace. I feel like Jeremy's going to fold and Mike's going to call. I, I think Mike's going to find the fold. He, look at him right now. His demeanor. He knows he's in a bad spot. And he's calling just praying for a chop. And this guy doesn't raise a, just a straight on the river. He'll just overcall. And, you know, adding to the situation here, these guys have been playing together for almost 10 hours. So, Osmus probably has seen Matthews play <laughs> well, different Matthews spots. is the same guy he tanked the threes versus. Right, 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 right. But, like, you know, just 3xing a bet and a call in the river is so different than betting flop, checking back and betting. I kind of like to know what he Who we about to? I mean, he could even be afraid of Jack Tennis Spades, which I still don't think raises the river, but, you know, there's not. He's just calling 5,000, praying for a chop, and I don't think it happens enough. Finds a good fold. Um, Dentali. It won't matter. Oh, wow. Yep. Pretty good one thing, right? Mike Dentali quickly calls it off here. I give the, uh, Mincy credit. He, he put his mindset as Dentali and said he's not going to fold it straight, even though. His instincts say the guy has a full house. Yeah. But I, he was, I was wrong. His instincts, he did not have a full house. He had all the sevens. Thank you. Then Tali called for the gut shot, hit it, and it cost him a whole bunch of chips. Had straight flush out. He's now down to 21K. What's that? Had straight flush out. Just one. Yeah, I was worried about the straight flush coming in. I'm hey, like, this is, not, this is going to be the He's bad beat of the line. I only have ever had quads in my life. Mike says I had quads. I've never had quads. I had Where about the straight flush coming in? I had a 10. Yeah. You behind me. God bless, man. Yeah, I mean, I was gonna call. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that'll be a good story to tell the grandkids. Yeah. That's why I just flooded. Yeah. Yeah. Right on TV. Immortalized forever. Right on TV. In the main event. Okay. You had a streak. I had a ten. Ten. I had ten eight of diamonds. I, I Top the, pair on the I turn, the upgrade, straight flush draw. Let me flip my three spades. I got the ace, ten of bucks. Oh. Stuck it in me good. And they just find the nine, man. They just hold on. He's got claps. Here's the nine, right? <laughs> 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 Mike, you could also just fold the turn with ace high and a gut shot. Also reasonable. I mean, there's two spades, two diamonds, you have ace ten of clubs. You know, you only make the straight on two cards that don't complete a flush, and the board's still paired. <laughs> By the way, Matthews reminds me a little bit of Gale from Breaking Bad. That's a lot of beers. Yeah, that's kind of like the beer level thing. It's main event. You got to do it. Is there, is there a trash over here? Yellow? I, uh, yeah, gum. I, I hear. Can I just run over there? Yeah. Thank you, Red Matrix, for the gifted no one, grab one gum book go YouTube community <laughs> sub. Much appreciated. Uh, thank you all, by the way. It's been a fun day in the main event. 1D oh, coming at you tomorrow. And I can only imagine 
Yeah. I don't Tomorrow care. we're going to have news about yeah. the record-breaking main events. I, no way. I'm getting some insider texts about how close we already are the to the record. You did it no, kind of crazy. Really? Already, Reg? No, we're not. We're not there yet, but we're getting uh, oh close. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's That's a funny. line we right now. For registration. So that number's going. I, down. I hope they like do That's something hilarious. for the person who gets us that number. That'd be cool. Nothing yeah, I, you know, I know it's short notice, but Caesar should definitely give something to whoever that person who buys in right after. And, and breaks the record breaking number. I hope oh, at least wow. filming it, that'd be Let's awesome. Say, I knew he wasn't born, Do we have any Donny Peters updates? Oh my like god. Or Don Barstool Nate? What, what about yeah, the fan favorites? Yeah, I know Nate, uh, Nate, Nate, I got a text from Nate that he had 46K and it felt like he, because he was having a rough day. So text him, see, we got to get a last minute update yeah, from him. Yeah, what are you going to give us to it? I guess we'll be behind. If I'm not behind you, you call. Yeah, one of you guys called. Yeah, one of you's looking me up, but you just I, weren't fortunate I mean, to be behind. I thought I was calling, and then I just decided, you know, talk myself out of it. Because, like, how, I'm just going to chop sometimes, too. Ooh, I figure he's got to maybe just attend sometimes, too. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Just yeah, it's like I bet so small, I thought maybe some chance. That's the problem with betting small. You don't know. Yeah, yeah it's like, true. Do you see it is 6,500? Yep, true story. Big healthy bet here with the nuts. I like it. Nate tweet from earlier. Ace King all in versus Ace Queen. And he, uh oh. Nate might be bust up. Oh no. I just texted him too, so I don't know if he's needling. Yeah, look at that. I don't know if he's Oh no. Remember when he, remember when he got all in on the turn Ace King to Ace Queen? I was true. I was. Sorry, Nate. Didn't know, buddy. I'm always happy. Damn. You picked up on that. That is. Yeah. I, I wish I could take credit that I sent you up to that, <laughs> Mincy, but I apologize to you. I mean, I feel bad for that. Yeah. So a broken, out here with a broken foot. A broken foot and busting the main. That's like. And take ace king versus ace queen on the turn. Yeah, yeah. an ace three seven three board. You know, got to fade yeah. the three or ace for chop. Three outs to chop and three leaves. And he calls off, which I think is fine. We've seen Humphrey a little more active than most. You just made a straight. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, Tiktok, you should have got shot too, buddy. In the last yeah. hand, you made a straight. Be careful what you wish for. Be careful what you wish for. You just made a straight. Listen, that was a straight. That was the best possible hand on board. I don't mind making straights like that. You didn't say that before. You said you wanted a straight. You don't like making them on the paired boards with... The four oh, got, yeah, plenty of tips for them all. Coach Scott's answer what you asked for. Friday. Friday, yeah. Yeah, we have a day off. Nice. Yeah, given the recent updates that I'm receiving, I I think we're a lock to break the record by a ton. And that's not even counting the dates. We'll get more dates in. No, it's actually no, it's actually current registrants. So if you register, your stack's in play. So that means that it doesn't account for anyone registering tomorrow. You can't even buy in on day two yet. They're waiting no. for their seats. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, mom, it's your time to shine, bro. I, know. I really, I really think ten thousand is in play. Don't waste it. I, I'm telling you, eleven, like eleven, eleven. If we're already there and it's twelve hours till the start of tomorrow, all day people coming in, people are gonna see these numbers fly in. People gave up You're on poker like Mincy. Back they're back. No, they're back. Don't it, baby. Wow. Are you texting like old horses, Sean? I, I had is, one. Is Randall Flowers coming out? Oh man, I love Randall. Oh Randall, yeah. Yeah. Um, I love Randall too. I hope he. I hope. I hope he's, I do is, have he doesn't play anymore, good. right? No, uh, he nice moved guy. back to North Carolina. Um, guy, hope he comes like out though in a couple of days. Uh, Thayer Rasmussen's family's coming out. Oh, cool. uh, Jeff actually played the main today. He was one of my horses, and unfortunately he busted. I had a piece of yeah. him. But uh, his mom and dad are coming out with some of his brothers. They're gonna have a little get together oh, um, a couple days from now, and uh, happy to see them. It's sad this is the reason we are, but you know, in poker 20 years, you're gonna lose a lot of close friends. Yeah, it gives me chills thinking of all the people that we lost along the way. Yeah, it's crazy as we're reflecting on how long you and I have known each other. Like, not not too long from now, 
we go back 20 years, which is a crazy thing to say because that's when gonna be we, half our life. By because time. when we met, we were basically we just turned 20. Yeah, it's kind of nuts. A little top pair, top pair action. Win has seemed to have played really good so far and had the best of it. Or when he didn't, he lost very small. The Kings and the 6-9 of spades. Because you want to tell a story about it. Right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> you know, you want people to realize how bad I really get stuff for me. Oh, wow. Humphrey getting a advantageous turn after his advantageous river where he just got paid off. <laughs> He's uh, going to be bagging, you know, close to peak since uh, he was real short a little while ago. Nice, big, healthy pot size bet here. I think a little too big on the turn jack when the flush draw doesn't come. See if Wynn sniffs it out and lays it down. Mike, all 40,000 people are saying how great your arms look. And then, like, day two, day three, I'll be more focused, you know, I guess there. It's like, I don't want to be, especially if he said it's even hotter and brighter on the other one. It's not good for me. Looks like Wynn is, uh... less comfortable, too. It's like really? the rails bigger and, yeah, this, this these ones I like are, this table, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, this one's just like a normal table, you know. Yeah. Some, uh, some like premium normal. world problems being discussed here. Jeremy Osmus complaining about the comfort level of the main feature table. Yeah, yeah, the high rails. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Maybe this wasn't as bad as some of the older ones. You're Humphrey, what kind of, like, he just called the pot size better than the time. What size are you going for here, Sean? <laughs> I don't want to go too big. Um, 12? I think, you know, he seemed pretty genuinely wanted to fold the turn. So I think I might even go, like, 8K here, less than half pot. Make sure you get paid down. Oh, we got a Donnie Peters update. 62,000 chips right now. He's been tripping up again. Love to hear that. He went off the fold here. Wynn does decide to lay it down, and Humphrey will rake this one oh, in. Man. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. <laughs> Tired and losing, the worst combination. I have a ham sandwich. They, in reality, it has like 33 bags, but. Not a lot of shit. I'm waiting. That idea. My card. Whoever wants to switch, I'll switch with them. No switching. <laughs> Switchy change. No combining. No. Overall. All right, guys. The live Ooh, stream's oh over. Baby, let's go. Is it? 
No. Uh, no, it's your, your <laughs> off. <laughs> News to me, Mike. <laughs> All right, Mike, I, I can go home and go to sleep. Is that is that how it works? He's the boss. I keep thinking this yes, is the boss. I keep looking yeah. over at this yeah. thing and keep thinking it's the boss. So I've, I've been doing the exact same thing, and it's right in my face. It's in yours, too, so it's not the worst. Yeah. Austin's awesome. raising it up with a seven suited, making it at fifteen hundred. We haven't seen a hand played by Cody really yet. I wonder how he's going to play Ace King out of the big. I like a three bet, they nice little four K. I mean, sorry, four X, like six K. Going a little over that, good. Out of position, I like that too. This, this is a pretty easy snap fold for Jeremy, I think. He's, you know, I'm a street guy. He might peel it through today's some percentage of the time. All right. He knows he can outplay the guy in position a lot. This could be a flop for that. I don't think Cody's going to just check fold the 10 8 5 with two hearts. Watching Ospis, I somehow always feel as though he'll figure it out. Like he's he's been so spot on the entire time we've watched him. I asked if massages were free up here because you know they gotta do something, right? <laughs> Had to ask. Nice little bet here to nice some equity, get a fold. Less than an hour left here on the broadcast of day 1C. Really? Players, of course, happy to just make day two, get a day off, get some rest. I feel as though we might see a player like Osmus turn up the aggression a little bit here for the closing stages of this day. Yeah, you kind of figure out who uh, really wants to bag and kind of attack them a little bit and know that they're probably not going to run a big bluff at the end of the bar. I was so active at the other table and now I just can't play anything. Yeah, exactly. 15. Jeremy, yeah. coming out here with the suited queen, oh, feeling that oh, vibe for sure. I like the other shuffling. I will pull that block. <laughs> Very well. Mike needs a queen. Needs a queen. Could use a queen off flop here. Not a terrible flop. Over cards, gut shot, backdoor flush draw. I don't know if I understood the $1,000 bet. Hmm? Never fold the one? Is that what you said? I don't understand the $1,000 bet. Oh! Then Tali finally getting his favorite draw, the gut shot. <laughs> <laughs> well, he hit one earlier, too. It just the guy at quads. 35. Now I understand the thousand dollar bet. Now maybe. Now maybe. Ah. Question for you, Sean. Is Tali Stack is shoving 21 bad here? Yes. Okay. It's because he could be. He's only getting called if he's drawing dead. So. Yeah, he only calls the flush. Where you Where you watching? I kind of like a shove here from Osmus. <laughs> 
Very few boat combos. A lot of pair and straight draws, a lot of missed flush draws. He has a really bad hand to get to the river with. Oh, wow. And then a nobody. <laughs> Are you also saying that because you like seeing Mike Dentelli? Yeah, hey, gave it up. Game. Good, 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 good. Same, Mike. Back up for that three. If it's not for the three, you blast three, away then, right? I don't know. <laughs> there are some times I'm going to blast again. Get a straight. Get a straight. <laughs> That's straight you were talking about. Yeah. First one since the 90s, right? Made a hand, boys and girls. Woo! Yeah, I'll take another one. Amazing. Made a, no, no, no. Made a straight and one. And one. Yeah. And one. Yeah. Can I, can I, uh, Sure. As long as it's not against me. I'm, I'm, all, I'm all for that. Triple up. Triple up. Oh, that's pretty great. Okay, you want the triple. That's well, that's harder. Yeah, it's harder, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, if you're gonna ask for something, you might as well go big. There you go. I, you know, I respect that. Go big and go home, right? Absolutely. I'm not here to main cash. Right, right, right. I just said triple. That's that's actually oh. doable. That's like, doable. Exactly. Quadruple is like it happens. But. Some bad news from the outer tables. Uh, Shelby Wells eliminated. No oh, man. That's really too bad. She had 140, 145k. That's, you know, easy to lose pots in the main event. Everyone's really Way deep. In the party. <laughs> she was really getting the streets playing really well, and you know, sometimes they just get matched up. Interesting to see what Matthews does here out of the big with tens. I like three betting, but this calling isn't that bad. That's a little small. That is really small. Cody's going to peel this. You don't love it, but you've probably got three outs one way or another, and you have position. You're getting, you know, three and a half to one from the bot. Actually, four to one. No. Peel, Cody. Don't fold equity. Cody lets it go. And here's a look at our Dream Seed promotion. I referenced it earlier. We're sending three annual subscribers to play in our million dollar free roll. It's the BGD Championship. Join PokerGo right now. Use promo code DREAM30 to save $30 on your annual subscription. All annual subscribers are eligible for the raffle. We're sending three of you to play in that event with a 500K first prize. Absolutely awesome promotion. And uh, you get to play against the top 40 on the PGD standings, like so uh, you might be able to battle it out with someone like Jeremy Osmus, who is here at our feature table. Kozman here finds pocket jacks, raising it up to 1,500. Wow, look at all these pairs. There's a lot of flops that are going to be coolers with this <laughs> Yeah, four pocket pairs. Cody's got a sneaky 9-8 of diamonds in there, too. About as bad of an action flop as you can find with this, uh, these hands, I guess. Yeah, I should see the flop check around. Somebody could turn the odds if somebody hit turn a set or still. You think they turn a set? Very unlikely they pay some off. Really? Betting the jacks into five people? That hard, too. Ambitious, but it's going to work.
One for the good guys. Mm. Nice block. Mm. Got it. Looks as though we're getting uh, closer and closer to Jeff Platt being back in action. So I heard he is looking for calls. Hoodie Allen. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> see if we can get some updates on how his main event is I know for a fact <laughs> you can win. he's at the table with Nick Shulman <laughs> and uh, Vivian Saliba all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully he's able to chip up a little bit. You can blame me for that. That kind of started the train. Probably had the best time Big fan of Hoodie Allen. I've been chatting with him a few times so during the Twitter spaces. You know, great uh, artist and uh, awesome when, you know, big celebrities outside of poker get involved in poker more. Yeah, he loves poker too. Yeah, he's grinding ACR all the time. No, he loves, yeah, he really, really loves it. We see him a half hour. Yeah, I will. I'm going to go back and watch it tonight for sure. All right, Jeff, what do you got? Let us know. What's going on there out of the yeah, field? I'm trying to get a read. Yeah. <laughs> All right, he is a rapper, a singer, a songwriter, and of course, a bit of a poker player as well. Hoodie Allen. I told you. She didn't, she didn't believe me that I was a rapper. You didn't believe <laughs> she said, no. I'm dying laughing right now. Do you want me to stand? Yeah, yeah, if you could stand up, that'd be great. It's a pleasure. Uh, a little bit of disrespect from Tarsha. I got showered. <laughs> <laughs> Why play the World Series of Poker main event? Why come out here for it? Uh, this is my fourth time. And at some point, it's going to be embarrassing if I don't cash. So it has to, it has to be this time now. You got to get on the board. What do you think in day one, early day one, you sit down and you see Nick Shulman at the same table? Yeah, and, and it was just, it was, he wasn't the only good player. It was yeah. very, it was definitely a, a very competent table. But you know, you got to get through everyone at some point. So, what have you taken away from your previous three main event appearances? Um, try to be better at poker. Try to be better at poker. Pretty yeah. sound advice, folks. If you're or, at home, yeah. Or maybe just stick to the music yeah. and leave the poker coach in the showman's Shannon Shores of the world. Yeah. yeah. All right, thanks, Hoodie. Good My luck. Pleasure. Thank you. All right, Hoodie Allen in the mix in the main event. Love to see it. And I think he's got some chips in front of him, too. Yeah, he did over 100K for sure. Not doing too bad. Do you think he purposely put the hoodie over his shoulder so people knew who he was? <laughs> I mean, it's funny that the woman at the table showered him, not believing he was a rapper. Doesn't look, look like a quintessential rapper. Oh, Matthew's here with trips, good. That's pretty good. bets, and takes it down. Yeah, that's pretty good. Still would have called, though. What? Still would have called. Me? <laughs> I would have cracked him. Oh, no, I'm saying you would have still called him. It's really sick. Heard a rumor that uh, Argentinian know. soccer know. legend Sergio Aguero is also <laughs> playing in the main event. Yeah. I, I, uh, Hope to get footage of him at some point, perhaps yeah, get that confirmed. The main event always brings out celebrities. You don't even know they're there. All of a sudden, you spot one. And you're like, whoa, this guy's here. NFL players, NBA players over the years. We've seen so many. I remember a couple of years ago, Jesse Pinkman was floating around. Um, mm -hmm. And I was just like starstruck. And I wanted to go up to him. But it's like, you know, it's always weird being in <laughs> poker and going up to like real celebrities, not knowing how to interact with them. I remember I met Robert Aller, old AJ Soprano at the so, I'd pick with him in the same team like you'll see a few times. Yeah, Robert used to live in the same in Panorama when I lived out here. So we hung out a few times. Uh, he loved I won't say it on camera. No, but he was an awesome guy. Love um, poker. Yeah. Yeah, also I mean of course Paul Pierce playing in the main event many, many times, Richard Seymour. Is he still playing? He's, he, he don't forget Jason Alexander, Ray Romano went deep uh, yeah. a few yeah. years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brett Garrett always plays. I really think tomorrow we're going to see we a lot a of celebrities. Here. Wow. All of a sudden, Humphrey limps the button, and then this blind battle ensues where Evanier makes it 3,000, and then Aryang with aces. I'm tired. Aryang did, yeah, I'm ready for did ask for the uh, double up, and he's got a shot here. Uh, Evanier is. <coughs> 133k is never folding queens here for 40 bonds effective. Yeah. I mean, this wouldn't be. I know it looks so strong, but I mean, I think just shove here. Yeah. No, you don't shove. It's just too much of a bet. You gotta make it like 8,000 here, maybe even 75. And say 15. Like Monday? Pop bet. Yeah. I think it's Monday, day 1A. It's uh, three starting days. God, it looks so strong, though. Still other queens. Arying only 16k behind. God, that bet looks so strong, but it's just bonkers. I mean, yeah, you can be raising the button limb pretty wide here versus you know <coughs> a player you think is not trapping enough. You have a 45 minute drive where? I live out in He's definitely a three bet. You know, oh, or yeah. out Did you live here? 
Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you too, right? Yeah, yeah. Wow, well, here we go. Aces here. versus queens I, I all in. Ar Yang yeah. hoping for a late night double up. Trying to get closer and closer to starting stack. I'm real At least for Avenia, he has plenty of chips to cover this. Yeah. Uh -huh. You ever hike out that way? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, Not a go, ton, but I go we'll find out. seven days a week. Oh, really? All right, it goes the flop. Let's see if there's a Very queen nice. out there. Hey, the dog up. Do you know the brown stuff? King trail? seven four, two uh, diamonds. Uh, it's in between. Diamonds for Aryang as well. So only has to fade. Two uh, outs here. You know where Calico Basin is? Yeah, it's pretty close. The turn. Okay. okay. It is the king of spades. Yeah, it's doesn't want to see that paint sweat. Nobody's ever up there. Yeah, I don't know. What's the name of it? River card. The brownstone trail. Brownstone it is the deuce of diamonds, and Aryang is going to find a double up here in the closing minutes of day one. I was like, oh my. <laughs> yeah, there's like paint, paint. Yeah, I, got, I play so many tournaments. I have a room here just for breaks. Right. And then, like, because I have so many points, I get free basically. It's, exactly. It costs very little. <laughs> I did it last year, and it's so worth it because I'm here so much. Just for dinner, breaks, I go to the bathroom, like, get, I have snack, food, what, refrigerator up there. And then, then if I play late, I just stay here. It's just smart. Instead of like, well, you know, yeah, it's great. Instead of driving all the way. Yeah, it's fine, but whatever. Yeah. If it was. On a highway, it wouldn't bother me, but that stop and go, stop and go. There's no good way to get there, really. But There's really not, yeah. You take Sahara, or how do you get home? I, I take, um, just, I take uh, 95 to Summerlin Parkway. You go, you go to, yeah. 95 to 250, yeah, Summerlin Parkway to 215, yeah. Yeah, you, we live pretty close then. Maybe I'll see you around there. Yeah. What was your name again? John. John. Matthews. Okay, Jeremy. Nice Jeremy, to meet you. Nice to meet you. Everyone knows who you are, Jeremy. Apparently, I was supposed to know who you are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He didn't. He said, apparently, that's funny. Uh, yeah. uh, this guy me. told me, uh, you, don't, uh, okay. uh, you don't know who that guy is? I'm like, I don't care. I don't, yeah. I don't know. That's, <laughs> that's hilarious. Perfect timing. I just Aces saw the photographer. So wow. Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. Well, now with some good hands here on the broadcast. Aces for Cody, raising it up to 1,300. Of course. He's got to find someone willing to commit some chips as well. Oh, wow. Aryang, fresh off of a double up, perhaps eager to get involved some more with those new chips. Nope, nope just calling. He's going to be real happy because it's a little tougher for him to flop ahead to continue. Jeremy, we'll call here versus almost the min raise. Yeah. Yeah, short too. Yeah. Everyone hates this swap. It's one of those, yes. Good check by Cody. Just no reason to bet aces there. So many hands have so much equity. Take the free card. But Jeremy's gonna bet the turn out. Uh, yeah, I think he'll bet it real small. Oh, Arjang's gonna beat him to the punch. Interesting bet size for this particular hand. I think it's gonna go call call. Osmus indeed comes along here, called the King Seven. All right, three way action on the river here. The Queen of Clubs could potentially cost Aryang some more chips. Yeah, that's yeah, he thinks he has the best hand here. I think he's going to value bet a couple thousand, go fold, and then call. Afraid, you know, there's a lot of hands that beat him. Two. Eights, flushes, straights. Two people out there are still in hand too. Now, Cody has a pretty easy value bet when they check to him. And Arjang will call and Osmus will muck.
3,000 is the bet. Arjang is going to make the call, and this should be enough for Osmus to let go of his King 7. Osmus does lay it down, and Cody is going to show down his aces and break in a nice pot. That's all. Sean, you have another day off tomorrow? Bes uh, besides yeah, the online day. event? Yeah, I got a day off. Um, What's the online turbo tomorrow? 400, I think. Oh, win the bracelet, Mincy. That's a good chance. It's a turbo, so turbo. some gambling. How big do you think that field's going to get? <laughs> Thousands of players. Thousands, yeah. yeah. Everyone here for the main event, people love to multi-table those online events while playing live, you know, like I did. And you got everyone at the day off. I think that's going to be by far the biggest online tournament of the, you know, series. It's so crazy. At least entrant-wise. I'm assuming unlimited re-entry? No, they always have, like, I'm guessing three re-entry, so four total bullets. Wow. But one thing with WSP.com, make sure you have the money in your account because you can't come back in. So make sure you deposit your 1600 whatever it is, for the total of four bullets. Oh, you can't re-deposit after? No. you got to have the money in your account. Win raising it up here with the King 10 suited. Matthews calling with Ace 10. Action on Humphrey with Ace Jack offsuit. He's going to come in with a three bet. I love this squeeze. I did too. I would have went a little bit bigger, but it's still fine. I think he's going to. I feel like I make, fold. I make a mistake sometimes, like over calling a hand like that. Yeah, Ace Jack off is just not a great multi way hand. The big blind's yeah. going to come in. So, you know, you block a lot of the good hands, and you get a lot better with shallow stack the pot. And you get the lead position. Yeah. yeah. Action folds around to Matthews. Ace 10 off. Flop with those nines, huh? <laughs> he lays it down, and Humphrey with some nice non showdown Good bet. winnings here. I would have beat him after the flop, I'm sure. <laughs> Maybe. Nah, nah. Yeah, if you, if you hit your nine. What time does that turbo start? I'm tempted to play that. 3.30. Oh, that's good. Aren't you going to be busy doing commentary? Well, I could win a bracelet while doing commentary. That would be strong. It would be really cool. Play on my phone. I don't know. I'm waiting to hear. Play on my laptop, actually. Right? I'm waiting to hear. The guy just really made a good flow. I'm going to ask. I asked. Yeah, I'll let you know. Just a few more. Hands left here to close out the night. If you're still with us, very much appreciate everyone for hanging out today. It's been a blast once again. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Did we get to 5,000 likes yet? 6,200. Great job, everybody. Yeah. Going to keep going up every day from now. So the money's going to matter. Yep. The big names are going to be the new feature table. I mean, it's going to be an amazing, amazing event to watch. Money likely to be reached somewhere on day four. You so think day four, not day, day three? Th it was into day three last year. I remember they played it to the end. I don't, I mean. Maybe with the extra players, it might be Maybe day one, four. one level into day four, perhaps? Yeah. It's kind of sad. That's why it sucks for POI, because uh, you know, you don't get, it's a lot of days of seven days worth of uh, poker until you get the money. Actually, eight. <laughs> Just multi-table. Uh, I, I did that one year. It was a little crazy. Like so updating on the coverage, obviously tomorrow, all day, go yeah. do, it, do it a big. Uh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, six hours of the main, hopefully yeah. with Helmuth on the feature table. That's going to start at 7 p.m. Pacific time, 10 p.m. Yeah, Eastern. Everyone, and then starting on day two, front to back coverage every single day. So starting hand number one until the last hand of the night every single day. We're going to start out on day two, I believe, with two yeah, levels on the horseshoe table, and then the coverage kicks off on the main set. That's going to be day two, ABC. 
yeah, day two D, yeah. and then on day my three man, we're gonna do one like level on that. the horseshoe table before sending it over to the main broadcast. So the main broadcast. Yeah. Is, the horseshoe table is on YouTube and the main broadcast on Poker Go. No, but we're gonna do it as lead-in coverage. So we're gonna start with this table, and then when we finish, the main table starts. Okay. But I had a three. That's why I didn't want to say it before. That is that. It's only a Poker Go. Only a Poker Go. They tape episodes for fall. Yeah, that's gonna be where they start filming for the CBS episode. So I was just like. I, I think I did the math. It's going to be at least 150, 150 hours of main event coverage. Wow. That's amazing. It's a lot of poker. That's great, though. I mean, the World Series, there's, I would argue, like I said this earlier, I said this, the World Series main brand name to poker might mean more than Super Bowl, yeah, right, the right, NFL, right. and Masters oh golf. It's like oh, that big. Right, it's that big. It's, it is. it's that big. That. I mean, it's just the World Series main is, it's crazy. Yeah, well, it's so sick. We just need so bad some superstars to make deep runs to add some extra flavor. Deep in there. runs, you said? Oh, oh yeah. I mean, I'm not sure. <laughs> going deep in the main. Sean, I would I would love for you to make a deep run. Yeah, I'll Mincy, be okay if I don't. <laughs> M Mincy, make a make a comeback on day two. Mincy, let's just worry about min cash. Let's lower your goals to attainable ones. I, I would I would like to cash. That that would be good. It's crazy how long the road is just to make the money. It's absurd. Yeah, most tournaments are done by day four. <laughs> <laughs> like 80% of the World Series events don't even get to day four, if not more. Um, just crazy. A little four-way action. Here. A lot of similar yeah. hands. Oh, oh someone flopped yeah, enough. Yeah, Quinta. Uh, probably. Cody. No one really flopped enough to right. like this board. I think I mean, it's going to check around, time. but Humphrey yeah. could take a stab with, you know, Jack-10, yeah. middle pair, gut shot, back yeah, to the flush draw. That pocket nine and he's going to. Right. For sure. Osmus will find a fold here. Okay. Someone's see banging that board into four people. Jack H just not good enough to continue. No hearts either. Cody's like, yep, I flopped the nuts. Want to make sure. <laughs> Like to see a call here. Oh, you're going to lose your customer. One of the big reasons, of course, for the main event being as big as it is, uh, something that incantations in the chat refers to says, the WSB has the allure of the average person thinking it's possible to compete. Other sports don't allow for that fantasy. And that's exactly right. That is why poker is such a beautiful game. I'm free field here. I was very surprised. Um, don't love it. Not too many good turns and rivers. And I hadn't seen anything out of Cody. To make, to yeah, make he had that ace king three bet. Like he's just he had the aces. He, he, yeah, like, he's not he, turning queen nine or nine ten to bluff or ace ten or ace queen. No, into the night too. Yeah. I can't. Um. Cody's just hoping that you know Humphrey has king nine, king jack, or set. He, he's not obviously not worried about anything. He has the nuts. Goes real big on the turn. gets away and he'll be real happy to see later <laughs> that he was drawing to a chop there's never a spot you want to be in Osmo's on exactly the starting stack Yellow? Sure. All yellow? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Sure. It's a lot of poker <laughs> to get to where you started. But at least he doesn't have half starting stack. It's all good points. I 
I wonder what percentage of the field actually busts on, on day one. It has to be something really small. Like, I think like 20%. It's a little more than you think because what they've done now is with the tourney start at 1-2, the 200 big blind, they need the pots in the early levels actually matter. Right. Because like back in the day when it was 25-50 or 50-100, you right. know, before the ante kicked in, those early levels were like totally whatever. But now, I mean, you know, depending on the table, you can table to play some pots early. That's actually a good point. And it's funny thinking back of the 25-50 level in the main event. Of course, it started with 10k chips, so a little bit different, but... But even some of the years it was 25-50 with 20k, 30k, you know, it, the stack kept going up and they didn't adjust the blinds for a while to get annies for a bit, you know, and I remember you know, it was 50k, 51, or 50k, 100, I remember the, the 11 main at 150k at dinner, 30 starting. Like, no, I don't think anybody else had 100. You're going on the blackjack table after that. crazy. crap. Four days, baby. Tally's going to get a bluff through here. Nice job, Mike. There you Mike. go, Mike. I always love it on day four when there's just certain players at certain tables that are just completely dominating, having like well over a million chips, just completely running over the table. That's when you see the biggest stacks of the year before they start coloring those down. And then when we, once we get down to the final few tables, everybody has those big million and five They've million chips. they doing that full color up. They realize you it's, need some chips on yeah, table. You gotta have chips. Got, you gotta have chips in front of you anyway from the table, bitch. You know? I think. I don't, I don't know. They, they don't do the color up nearly as aggressive as they did a few years ago. Yeah, I remember. Like uh, the year Dario right got this heads up with the song. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone had 20 million and 10 chips in front of them. It's just that's brutal. Yeah. It's just tough to make change, do everything. You want that feel of the big stacks. I mean, it was crazy. Back in the day, some of the pictures of Ben Lamb and some of the people with, you know, 10 racks of chips. You get moved tables. It takes you 15 minutes just to <laughs> But well, they've gotten a lot better with the gross up. There's no reason to have over a rack of any chip value. And for those who don't know, a rack is 100 denomination of chips. Because a rack fits five barrels of 20 chips. Yeah, now, back then with the Annie's, it was, it was different, the smaller chips the Annie's. But now with the Big Bond Annie, you don't have to get smaller chips. Big Bond Annie's been, who, whoever, who decided to invent that? How did? Uh, Gary Katz, I believe. Oh, really cool. yeah, Gary Katz first introduced to the High Rollers at the Pokego Studio. And, uh, Poke, oh, sorry, I should say ARIA events, because it was prior to the studio. <laughs> and uh, it quickly caught on in the high roller scene, and then it sort of spread around. It's been great for PLO turns. Now, now all I, I can take credit for the PLO turnies. I'm the one who brought that to Jack and Tyler because they were wondering how to fix the structure of PLO turns. The moment made a big slow, man. final tables were too shallow, and I said, let's try a big blind Annie light, and they tried to turn three on the turn. It was a massive hit, and it made them all so much better. Now all we need to do is do big blind Annie in the mixed game turns. Nine, you, you fold? <laughs> I would love that. I'd play oh, a lot of hands. Bet, raise, re -raise. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, w it, w it would be but way better for the game. Yeah, I, I think Luminol could use an Annie. Um, uh, uh, 08 could definitely use an Annie for 9 handed. But I think a lot of those tournaments could switch to 6 max, yeah, and they'll yeah, play a lot better. Bit, because you you, you got to have a little faster action. Yeah, same tip for sure. I mean, we saw this year with the increased fields and a lot of the mixed game events, they all went an extra day. The structures in the in the 10Ks are so slow. They're, they're going to, you know, myself, Daniel, ODB, a lot of people, Jack listens to. Uh, we sped up day one this year, but we didn't make it 10, 10 hours. It was eight hours where the first six levels were 40 minutes. But day two, 90 minutes is just a little excessive, I think. Do day two hour levels and day three, 90 minutes, and that should speed them up so you get to the next event a little faster. Arjang's got a little bit of nothing. All right, tournament dealers, if you start the shuffle, complete the hand you're on and deal three more hands. Three more hands. At the conclusion of your third hand, please ask for bags and pins. Players, very important. We're in three different rooms. There's about 2,500 of you guys. Please be patient. We will get to you as quickly as possible. Once you receive your redraw slips, you. we need they your name, <laughs> your hometown. I count it already. It's always four or five. White copy will go to your dealer. The yellow copy goes flat inside Two the pair. bag. And the pink copy is for you. On the bags, guys, I just need name, new table, new seat. Need you to print clearly. We cannot read your writing. It's very hard to post your results. I got lucky. The soothing voice of Dennis Jones, making sure this all goes right. Oh, it's like Dennis. Don't scream at the floor, guys. Your restart coming back Friday. 
from right. your neck of the woods? So yeah, he, he lives in Bossier City, Louisiana, where I did four years of sports radio <laughs> well, from 2015 to 2019. Yeah, come on Saturday. Don't so I see him playing poker in the Orange Series. That's one thing people don't realize, how much, of the, the the realize how much of the staff at the World Series are players outside of the year, whether they're dealers yeah, or right. floor, you know. We all love poker. We're all a part of it. I know everybody's tired and ready to get out of here. This is going to be a big bagging. Please be patient. We will get to you as quickly as possible. You oh, must print clearly your name, get it hometown, Come chip on. count. Seven, six suited, multi-way Guys, bob. make sure that you get leave players, your you bags of chips day. on the table. You cannot take those chips home with you. They have I to stay on the table. Name, hometown, chip, chip count. I didn't hear that. I think I heard stories of my Souvenirs. I know some people to like try to take them to the break. They don't know they can leave them on the table. That happens a couple times a year. Really we had the Scotty win the incident last year. Yep. We got Will Jaffe in the chat wishing Donnie would come back. I'm not sure if he's a slide of you guys, but uh, Will, I'm just going to take it as that. I know you're a little jealous of my spaces skills, you know. You're a high noon show. I know you don't, you know, you have to deal with Mincy just like I do. I feel like, Will, do I so feel like Will and I are doing all right. I don't know. I think so. Dentali with the gut shot. A drawing dead gut shot, Mike. Thank Players, God it wasn't. If you draw it, a table that is in purple, black, 4, yellow, or green, you're on the Paris side. If you draw a table that is silver, gold, blue, red, or orange, you're on the horseshoe side. Friday, 12 noon is the restart. All right, that's all I lets it go. Again, and it's time for us to go to Jeff Platt, my favorite green, segment of the night, the yellow, walk and talk. Purple, Hopefully Jeff Platt can uncover some gems, maybe get some chip gowns from some of the big players. Let's see what uh, Jeff has found out here as the players are getting closer and closer to bagging up for the night on day one seat. Well, they give us, seat, they give us papers and it has our next seat on it. We just write our name and chip gowns. All right, day one C coming to a close. Let's wrap it up little bit of a walk and talk show and Paul come with me the first thing I want to point out I mean how great is it Phil luck he's in the middle of a hand right now but to have Phil Locke back at the World Series of Poker main event the Unabomber is here this is amazing he's had a very good day one as well all right Paul right this way we'll kind of swing through here just a couple hands left in the night of a record-breaking day one C Bryce Yaki here also in the middle of a hand let's go this way Paul don't trip on any of these chairs there we go. You made it. You made it just fine. We'll keep walking this way, trying to see if we have any big stacks, any big pots going on at this point in the night. We've got Slay tweeting. Uh, what's going on? I heard uh, Sean Deeb called me a frickin' scammer. All right, that probably won't, probably won't make the CBS cut. Uh, so we continue to move this way. Hoodie Allen. Decent stack to end the day. Do you believe him yet that he is a rapper? Th things have gone so well. I got the Jeff Platt bump. Mm. Let it be a thing. Pass it on. Thank you very much. Okay, you heard it from Hoodie Allen. So it has to be a thing. Hashtag Platt bump. Hashtag Platt bump. Okay, we'll work on that. We'll, we'll workshop it. Right this way. <laughs> and we've got Nikki Limo. We caught up with her at the beginning of the day. Still in at the end of day one. Let's swing around this way. I'm going to take you to find one of our chip leaders. Oh, Manning's been right here the whole time. That's cool. Didn't see him there. Okay, Paul. One more step. One more table. He's in the middle of a hand right now. But look at that. Chip stack. A lot of chips. That's like pretty solid. I think that's Chris. But I'll ask him later. But he's got a lot of chips. And that's the end of our day one C walk and talk let me send it back to you guys sean sorry about that i didn't know that was that was coming thanks jeff it, I, I knew it was coming all right that's uh, one way to get out here on uh, on day one we've got to go crazy about the, uh, I'm sorry. All right, I'm yeah, yeah i just don't know why i just uh, that made me laugh really hard might need a new uh new heads up duel here brewing yeah, I don't think you can afford the stakes. You might have to pretend to be a woman again to get a buy-in. Oh, yeah, way more. I think I... 
Will Jaffe, new moderator in the chat. Will, use those rights carefully. That's a dangerous, dangerous amount of access. I would have made both you guys moderators, but not in the chat, so there you go. No, I got blown off when I was in the chat uh, a couple weeks ago. Oh, really? Chat with, yeah. I, when I remember I had, a te I had a text Donnie, he was talking shit about when I busted the stud, and I got second yeah, yeah. me online later <laughs> to the day. I was million dollar deep, and everyone was ignoring me, and I was like, kept donating, and then you guys just ignored every message. We, th we probably thought you were a fake. <laughs> yeah. Nice Where are you, you from? You. Nice to meet you. Uh, New York. New York. Cool. You're getting at the end of the night, Jeremy, where they're from? Come on, buddy. Hey, Jeremy, Get that info earlier. Use it to your advantage. something pretty cool about where we live, about what we were talking about earlier, okay. but I didn't want to say it on camera. Right? Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you why. Anyway. Okay. Uh, Dentali with... What's he got? Gut, gut, shot. Gut, gut shot. Gut shot. Gut shot. Gut shot. Has to be a gut shot. I mean, we got to call him Gutshot Mike at this point. Yeah. It's been like six times at this feature table in two hours. Can we talk about how bad the platinum bump sounds? Sounds a little too drug. Uh, yeah, the, the, very familiar for me. The, the bump is, is a little yeah. bit tough. Yeah, they're, they're I don't know if that should sober. be a good hashtag. Okay. Plat booster? I don't know. We got to work on it. We got right. Dentali's going to win the final pot of the night. Looks like he's back 27K. All right. He's got less than you, Mincy. All right. And I think, was it the final hand or we have one more? I think it's the final hand of the night. All right, thank you all so much for watching. That was quite yeah, the night everybody. of poker action. Lots yeah, of Daniel yeah, Medrano. Yeah. Closed it out with Jeremy Osmus. Yeah, I want to thank Sean Deeb and Ben Mintz for being well, with me in the booth. My name is Rep Brinkema. I'll be back tomorrow with Donnie Peters, who also yeah. bagged up for the night. A little bit over starting stack for Donnie, so we'll hear more from him tomorrow. Hopefully, Helmuth in the mix tomorrow, and hopefully some confirmation on whether or not this is going to hit 10,000 players in this year's main event. Thanks all so much for watching. Back for more tomorrow, 7 p.m. Pacific time, 10 p.m. Eastern. For now, have a good night. Peace out.